powered from the Perdomo Cigar Studios on the Red Stage in Indian Shell, North Carolina, and broadcasting from the Alec Bradley Longsworth Studios in Texas and the Tatawai Studios in Texas, welcome to Primetime Special Edition 104. Tonight, we finish up the Cigar Coop Coalition team post-game show recap of our walkthrough of the companies at the trade show. And as always, Primetime Special Edition is sponsored by Perdomo Cigars. Awarded Nicaraguan Cigar of the Year in 2014 by Cigar Journal. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary brand is consistently earning the highest scores in the industry and is a top seller in humidors around the world. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary blend requires tobaccos have been carefully hand-selected and well-aged for a minimum of eight years. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary is offered in three distinct wrappers, a smooth, creamy Ecuadorian Connecticut, a rich, earthy Cuban seed Nicaraguan Sun Grown, and a dark, oily Cuban seed Nicaraguan Maduro. Combining these beautifully bourbon ballet wrappers with thick, high priming binder and filler tobaccos gives each blend a balanced complexity with layers of rich flavors and smooth, elegant aromas. Perdomo Cigars is a family-owned and operated company headquartered in Miami, Florida, with manufacturing agricultural facilities in Esteli, Nicaragua. Perdomo's highly acclaimed cigar brands include the Perdomo State Selection Vintage, the Perdomo Double Age 12 Year Vintage, the Perdomo 20th Anniversary, the Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary, Perdomo Abano Bourbon Barrel Age, Perdomo Lot 23. Perdomo, Amenso 70, and many more. For great tasting notes and pairing information, check out the Perdomo website at www.perdomocigars.com. And by Aganorsa Leaf. Great leaf makes great cigars. Aganorsa Leaf stands out because of the distinctive flavor of a Corojo 99 and Criollo 98 seeds cultivated by Cuban agronomists on the best lands in Jalapa and Esteli, Nicaragua. When you smoke one of our JFR, JFR Lunatic, Guardian of Farm, or Casa Fernandez cigars, you'll experience a unique taste and aroma that makes Aganorsa Leaf special. Smoke one today and enjoy the signature flavor of Aganorsa Leaf. And by Drew Estate. This year marks the 25th anniversary of Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars movement. To celebrate this momentous occasion, the company is inviting you, consumers, retailers, and cigar media to its epic blow-up bash entitled DE25. DE25 will be held on September 25th at the South Park Ranch in Parker, Texas, part of the Dallas-Fort Worth metropolitan area. The DE25 celebration will include the unveiling of Drew Estate's newest brands with a first experience approach for consumers and trade partners together. Buy your tickets today at Drew Estate dot com forward slash de25 and remember all the live streaming for the uh for the primetime network of shows as well as for the california studios of the primetime show is sponsored exclusively by drew estate and also i'll mention jerry tobacco the authentic corojo leaf is one of the most robust and flavorful leaves out there during the golden age of cigars of cuba it was a leaf of choice to make some of the world's greatest cigars because it was one of the most challenging ones to cultivate it fell out of favor by the 1990s in the hamastron valley in Honduras, Julio Arroyo took on the challenge of growing Corojo from the original seeds. And in 2000, he successfully reintroduced authentic Corojo back to the market. With over 50 years experience in the tobacco business from growing and curing tobacco to cigar production, the Jerry Tobacco Farm has been able to continue to deliver products to market with authentic Corojo. Now with Jerry Tobacco, Julio and his son Justo bring their very own brand to market, each containing that authentic Corojo leaf. Aladino is available in a 100% authentic Corojo Puro, San Andreas Maduro, Ecuadorian Connecticut Shade, Cameroon or Abano wrapper representing the Golden Age Scars from 1947 to 1961. Now available at your local retailer, be sure to ask for JRE Tobacco, a legacy that is tasted in every drawer. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Primetime Special Edition 104. Today is Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021. This is Will Cooper. I am on the red stage here in the Perdomo Cigar Studios. And I'm joined uh, cross country by my friend and colleague, Mr. Bear Duplissy. Uh, good evening, Coop. Part de, part de on deck. I'm ready to go. Yeah, let's do, we, this. Let's do it. Yeah. So let's introduce our other two uh, colleagues and friends here um, from Cigar Coop and uh, the Smoking Syndicate, uh, the one and only, the Bull Shark, Mr. Ben Lee. Hello, everyone. Welcome back for another good show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ben's appearance on the show is bull shark approved. Yep. 100%. And, and, and we'll mention he bear is in the Alec Bradley studios and Ben is in the Tatawahe studios located in the Texas area. Um, and finally, last but not least, uh, coming out from the great state of Illinois, uh, the one and only member, full member of the cigar coop team, Mr. Aaron Nielsen. Greetings gentlemen, as always brought to you by my black 
sheet behind me. Black, the black sheet. <laughs> I have not been reached out to for any sponsorship, but I will take all calls. I am um, up for whatever. Well, I'll just let you know. Ben and Bear will tell you it's a pretty good deal the way I work the studios. So you, you could you could do you could do well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but no, it's great to have everyone. And first of all, I want to thank you guys for coming back. Um, I know we kind of went longer last time. I think we're going to try to move this one a little a little more quicker along tonight. But the good news is um, there won't be a part two. Uh, and this is this is it. <laughs> so we're going to get through this. And part what? Two. Uh, Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, we're yeah. Good. Well, as long as we're staying with the theme. Yeah. yeah. Aaron, um, Aaron, Aaron Nielsen's appearance is also the Bullshark approved. Right. Yes, it uh, is. All right. Thank so you. let's get the business out of the way. Um, I know we're going to, Bear will go to you last, but what is everyone smoking tonight? All right. I'll go. And so for those who tuned in last week, uh, this cigar came up as part of our conversation. So I am going with the Bloodshot, um, which was mentioned last time. So this will be the first one I'm going with right now. One of probably several different cigars I will be smoking tonight. That's the Providencia. It is. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. Ben, what do you got? So tonight, I'm smoking um, the new Liga Provada H99. Ooh, mm. I have not I have not lit one of those up except for the ones we got in 2018, which were the pre-release ones. I liked what I had. I let that one, the pre-releases sit and I liked it. Oh, it was fantastic. Yeah, this one is different. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Uh, but actually, I remember when we you know, when those leagues came out. Um, as far as which one I liked better, I, I thought I was going to like the Anniversario one better, and I was surprised it was the H99 I liked a lot better. So I, I, I have not lit mine up yet. Uh, it was just, I just yes. kind of put mine in the humidor. But uh, so it was the for- same with me. I, I didn't like I, I didn't like the Anivers- I didn't like the Anniversario pre-release. The H99 pre-release was good. Now I've had the Anniversario since it's been out, and it's fantastic. I mean, it's yeah. very good. Yeah, I agree. I had the Savage Beast, which is the uh, kind of the pig size. It's really good. I was really surprised by that. Yeah, I decided I would smoke. I got I got a four cigars lined up for the night. Go long. This is the first one, but um, our buddy and fellow colleague Seth Geist, I had he you know he put out some weird stuff about some flavors of this one. So he told me I need to try. So I told him I would smoke it tonight and let him know how it is. So. <laughs> we'll have to give him a report. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, by the way, it's his birthday today, right? Yep. Happy birthday, Seth. Happy birthday, Seth. Yeah, happy the birthday, tuna. Seth. Yep, the tuna, the tuna is one yep. year older. Yep, so I picked, I have three cigars. Um, the the first one I'm gonna smoke is Fiat Lux because I know you guys smoked it last week, Thanks. so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with it. Yep. Then I'm gonna go with my American Double Robusto. Wow, and then I actually managed to, to weasel one of these. From because uh, I already smoked mine, I got it to show, but I got another one from one of my retailer friends. It's the Chupacabra 10th anniversary. Uh, okay. So I, I managed to sneak, sneak. I asked, I, he had a couple extras and he gave me one. So, so uh, okay. But, but now we got to get to the real business. What is Bear going to smoke tonight? All right, guys. I've got I've got a nice lineup going here. Um, so I'm ready for you all to pick. So who picked last time? Who who did the honor? Was it Aaron? Or was I it think ben? they both they both did it. Oh. That was a tiebreak. Okay, yeah, okay. So we'll do the same thing. So I've got a uh, sober mesa, um, elegante encerados. Okay. And okay. Also, that was nice from cigar. our favorite. Nice cigar. I've got the Mother Church from Crowned Heads in really nice. with Luciano there at uh, Tabacular Pichardo. Great cigar. Go ahead, that one. Um, I've got a. Diamond Crown Maximus Double Robusto Number Six. I've never had this Vitola, by the way. Oh wow! I don't know if I have these yet. I haven't either. No, either. And um, I've got an Arturo Fuente Rare Pink Short Man. Story. Both shark approved. Oh, wow. the, first, approved. By the, way, the first review on the Smoking Syndicate. Yes. Now, yeah. bear, bear, my homage. Bear, am I correct? Did I give you the 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 Mother Church? Yes, this is the one you gave me. All right. Well, 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that one since I gave it to you. Yeah, that's a tough call, man. Because like I've never had the Mother Church, and it, and it sounds like it'll be a big time winner. I'm gonna go rare pink actually. Okay. I, don't, I know that you can follow most all the other stuff you said after the rare pink, but I'd go with the rare pink first, and then the other ones after that. I'd go rare pink. <laughs> And then Mother Church. That's, that's a fine. good. That's a very good point, Ben, about the the rare pink being first. Do you have a clean palette? That's a very yeah, good. Yeah, I'd agree with that one as well. All right, so we're doing rare pinks. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. So there yeah, you go. Forward. Yeah. Motion pass. Motion pass. You know, we actually got to get a sponsor for that. Like, I have an idea with that. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. right. All right. Hey, so guys, let's kind of start. We're going to get right back into the swing of things here uh, where we left off um, on our list of companies. And uh, we, we are actually up to the letter G, but the good news is we're like halfway down the alphabet, even though because the second half of the alphabet is not as, not as many companies as was the first half. Um, and the first company we have is a company called Global Premium Cigars. You may know them as 1502 Cigars. I had a lot of interesting thoughts on this company. You got? I, we had a lot of fun at their booth, though. Like we yeah. did the, uh, Edgar wanted to do the bit. Uh, uh, the interview was with oh. his wife. We don't have. A, don't give a spoiler. <laughs> so it, no, it was funny. It was fun. Like to take check out the video. It was just a fun time. Yeah, yeah. It was really cool. It was a really cool idea. So um, I remember. So at that booth, um, they did not have much product. In fact, we think we hit it on the was it the last day day three okay so late on day three we hit them yep and they did not have much product what i'll say is that um i'm a fan of the 1502s line um they did not have much product which is you know fine i mean again even though i'm there for the free samples it, would, it, would, it was fine to see that um uh that they had you know had you know probably had some booth traffic but when we were there wasn't real crowded they had a very small booth, but, you know, super nice, very generous. And, you know, we're, we're more than excited and willing to kind of work with us, uh, be part of what we were doing and we're, um, readily available to, for the interview. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. Um, oh, Barry, I'll let you go next. Well, I was going to say like, shout, first of all, shout out to, uh, Sean Miles, who was there uh, well, double shout out to Sean Miles. One, he was there working the working the booth with his wife, Heather, and uh, for Enrique. And he legitimately uh, he, work in the booth, by the way. They legitimately work. work in the booth. Yeah, and, I want to make uh, that clear. Yeah. Well, a triple shout out. Yeah. Work in the booth legitimately. Yeah. Getting getting Aaron and most importantly his free samples because he, <laughs> he hooked right, us up. Right, he right. hooked us up. Right. And uh, but also, uh, dude wearing a fucking hoodie in Vegas. Vegas. <laughs> in July, straight up man, right there. <laughs> Now, can I can I comment on that really quick? So with that sample, he he didn't get in trouble, but they were they that was the last sample they had, and they were looking for it, and they were in panic mode. And I kind of pointed the finger and said, "Sean gave it to these guys," and then they laughed and gave it back to you. So that was their very last sample to give to us. Yeah, I was it was I was really glad to see them at the trade show. Um, I've always liked the fifteen oh two line. Uh, even as, as recently as it seems like they've been a little quieter lately, but you know, a couple of years ago, they came with that blue Sapphire Lancero. Um, Sean hooked me up with that cigar. It ended up landing on my coupe list at the end of the year. Uh, it was like in the top 20. So Enrique's capable. He's, he's had a few top, top 20 cigars. And, uh, I think he's had three, um, over the course of time on coop. So, um, and he tends to, most of his releases, he tends to do a lot of line extensions. So. He doesn't debut a new line every year. Um, he kind of will slowly release some lines. So I think the if you're if you're following and you're a big fan of the brand, the Blue Sapphire Robusto was the big was the big release this year, um, as well as the return of the Exo Churchill. Um, he had some Robusto sizes in the Emerald and Black Gold. I think they've been floating around for a few years, but I think now he's officially making them available to retailers. So. Um, I, I was happy to see him. I, I think, uh, you know, it was cool to see him and his wife interacting. 
they're kind of, I, they kind of acute together. I'll just say kind of how they, how they play. Uh, you know, Enrique will say, go do your thing. But, you know, Enrique's always going to get his uh, relax and enjoy moment in there, kind of. So <laughs> um, I thought it was a, now you mentioned product, Aaron. Typically, that's the boost that Enrique's brought to the show over the years. Not a big, flashy boost, not a lot of product. It's, 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 his has been the minimalist boost over the years, but he's gotten the job done with it. I think they always do a really good job every year with that. Though. I, I, mean, I do too. I think he, because he, at least he has some products he can show you on, on the table. Right. Yeah, exactly. And it, his, he's got quality cigars. He I, does. I, I, actually, I, I like all the lights. All of them. They're really good. Yeah, um, you, I haven't had a lot, but I, I, I bought some of a mail order, you know, and I've had, you know, Brian Hewitt, my uh, former partner in crime, he had sent me a big bundle of them to try out way back a long time ago. And I thought they were fantastic cigars, you know, and I, I, I said this before, you know, especially with these smaller companies, I'm glad some of them, they don't feel pressured to have to put pump stuff out. Yeah. You know, every, you know, semi-annually or annually or whatever, you know, you got good stuff, you know, just continue on. Don't sacrifice your quality and what you got now, you know, by trying to put something out new. And they do a great job, you know. They, they really do. They, they nice really, yeah, I, I, I'm in agreement. And, and here's what I'll say, and this is kind of coming from me, so Bear's going to be kind of shocked to hear this. That Enrique, whatever he, the cigars he releases, he, he tends to be better in the under 50 ring gauge. I mean, I, I'll just be straight on that. His Coronas, his Lanceros, and his Churchills are, in my opinion, the ones I really like. Um, you know, he's, he's releasing the 50 ring gauges at the Robusto, so I think that's kind of a middle point. But I've, I've always enjoyed, like, his Coronas are fantastic in that line. Uh, they're some of the best Coronas out there. Uh, especially for the price. So I think there's good value with oh, his cigar. The Coronas are outstanding. Yeah, the Emerald Corona is one of my favorite cigars ever that he's done. I was always a fan of the Ruby line. Um, the Ruby line. The Ruby line, personally. But I was kind of excited to see the Blue Sapphire come out in the Robusto. I don't like, because I, I mean, I like Robustos a lot. And like you said, Enrique does a really good stuff in that sub, that sub 52 ring gauge. Uh, you know, the Blue Sapphire, when it came out, I was a little hit or miss with that when it came out in the Toro. It just wasn't doing it for me. And, and when Sean said, hey, I want you to try this in the Lancero, you know, and I was even skeptical when he said that, right? And I remember when I smoked it, I'm like, holy cow, this is that, – that blend in the Lancero is, is off the charts. So, you know, I, never dis- I always say just don't s- dismiss a cigar over one size and certainly don't judge a size, like, you know, and, you know, I ended up loving that Lancero. So um, I thought, yeah, so good job by Enrique there as we uh, kick things off tonight on the show. All right. The next company. Um, and by the way, I'm, I'm going to try to move us along. If you guys need to stop me, just feel free. Um, Grand Habano. Um, I thought this was a cool booth, even though it was a very, it was much smaller than, than George Rico's had a booth in, in years. I thought it was a cool booth. I'm going to see if I can pull a picture up of the booth while we're talking. No, I, I, I loved it. I thought the, the little, uh, he had this little kind of almost, I don't want to call it a rainbow, but this archway that you went over and went into and it made it, it made it seem very, you know, it was much different. It was a much different look than, than any other booth out there, you know, with like, like some notable noted exceptions, like the, the JC Newman booth, which we talked about last time and things like that. Like it was a very different looking vo- booth. It had that, it kind of had that Miami feel to it. Um, like 1980s Miami vice, a little kind of color scheme going. Um, not the Miami vice movie, but that was a little dark, but the, the TV show and everything, but I, I, I really liked it, man. It was upbeat, it was vibrant. George was, you know, uh, George was uh, welcoming as always, um, and uh, he had those uh, those sample packs yep. that uh, that he's really that he's doing, um, and then of course had some for us, so that made all of us happy because um, that's what that's what we're there for. But uh, he talked to us about some some really cool uh, really cool plans for the future, and and a really really pretty excited. Yeah, see, very Miami it, in the background. It it had a so for me, I, I echo everything that you guys have said. And I thought it had like a minus the background there obviously with the hotel kind of had like a, a drugstore feel or like a candy store kind of like that that put you in a good mood like brighter um it was different yeah than, it was different than you know anything there um 
I thought the presentation of what they were offering and the, the way they had the booth set up from the space, I thought they maximized that. So I thought, I thought they did a, a really nice job. And I think, um, yeah, I thought it was a really good booth. Yeah, George also, he said um, he's got projects planned. Like the big thing he's got planned is the 20th anniversary, which um, I'm not going to spoil some of the thunder in the interview on that. I'm just going to kind of let that one out there. I mean, George talked about that project with Aaron Loomis and I last year. It's been delayed because of, of COVID. Um, you know, I think in his case, he didn't try to rush a product out this year. So he put the sampler packs together. So he had something. But, uh, you know, I don't think he should have rushed anything out either. So, uh, you know, you know, I think the worst thing he could have did is rush that 20th anniversary project. Well, George has always been a, a student of vintage. Like that's that's his that's his M.O. Yeah. He's like is is delivering on vintage and tobaccos and 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 uh, really exploring how they how they change from year to year. And and uh, of course, he's got his staples, which work work incredibly well. And uh, um yeah, I, I, I love, I love it. I've, I've, I've always been a big fan of his cigars. I, I don't see a lot of online media cover this guy, and he's a great. He's been a great guest. He's super nice to the online media. He's got good product. I, I don't get it. I don't see the media cover these guys. Um, and you know, I know he's been every time we've called him. He's like, I'll be there. You know, when can you know, tell me when you need me? I mean, yeah. So, no, I, I, I think no, I think he's he's a fantastic he's a fantastic interview, yeah. and his, his knowledge is like is deep. Like, yeah, granted that that's saying something considering the the type of guests that we have and the interviews that I've you know that I've done personally. But like in specific to the interviews that I've done with him, like they like they just go into a, a deeper direction. Not just like yeah. we're not just talking about all things like tobacco nerd, like just but just like the like his his own family history and company history and then just the the tobacco itself like not just cigars like i i don't know if i'm really explaining that well he's just he's just very he has he has there's a lot of depth of knowledge to to, to george and i've always really appreciated our conversations yeah i i do too uh you know and not the plug but i'm gonna plug special edition 197 the interview he had with uh he did with klaus kellner on the same night um, it was one of those magical nights because you had two guys who didn't know each other and you could see they made a friendship and a connection on that show. I mean, it, it, I, I remember it was just pure magic yeah. uh, of a podcast. I'd never seen anything like that happen. Um, so, um, you know, good job by those guys. And he gave a lot of free samples, by the way. Just want to comment. We, he was, mm -hmm. I think he gave us eight packs each, an eight pack sampler. Yeah, that's, and, that's the thing too. He was always... Really good to us when, at Stoker Review. Um, he and his wife Natasha, I think it was her name. And I, I've always found him very personable, real nice guy, easy to talk to. You know, I thought the booth was nice. And I know he didn't really come out with nothing new. He just had the sampler packs. But somebody that's actually gone on three different trips in one month, I, I've now got a good appreciation for those packs. Oh, yeah. So, like, if I'm popping somewhere, like I was in New Mexico this weekend. And I brought some stuff, but I, you know, I was sitting there thinking, like, at one point we drove up to Santa Fe, New Mexico from Albuquerque, and I forgot my cigars. I think, oh, my God, I forgot everything. So if I get a chance, I'm going to swing by and see if I can grab at a cigar shop. It would be perfect if I could just go grab one of those samplers because I can't stay with my family. But just grab one of those. They're, they're in a, a nice pack. They're humidified. They're everything. They're ready to go. Just grab them and you go. It's perfect. I, yeah. I love those packs. Though. I yeah. do too. You who, know, who does them else? Like Perdomo does them. George does them. Uh, oh, the, the the Fratello Fratello did with the space fresh the the space fresh pack. Alec Bradley does it. Alec Bradley well. does it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Peaches did it. Peaches introduced some this year at the trade show. We'll That's get to right. him at Tatawai. So I agree, and I thought it was a good. Uh, you know, I kind of like how he sliced and diced the packs out. So uh, you know. Uh, a lot of companies like to slice and dice those sampler packs. And I know when I went to Perdomo, uh, Arthur gave me some. And for the same reason as Ben, when you're on the road, there's nothing better than having those. Um, and it gives you a little variety. And whether you want all Maduros or you want a cross section of the lines or something like this, different options you got with those. So I'm a big fan of sampler packs when you are on the road. I think they're, they're great. 
Yeah, and Brian in the chat just reminded me of another one, Southern Draw. Oh, yeah, they, drop, they, the drop packs, yeah. Yeah, they're, and they're really I, awesome. I, I, I knew really I was forgetting, forgetting Robert. Robert. Yeah, they're great. Um, he's had some really good ones. Um, I've always enjoyed those. Um, th th that's a very good point. Good job there. So, uh, yeah, that, that was, uh, you know, Grant Habano. I think we're going to see them. They'll probably be watching the next six to 12 months, I would say, for sure. Um, Gurkha. I got some right. – I got, look, so I Gurkha, we didn't interview him. But, I, Aaron, you got some photos, and I managed to get the information I needed to kind of do booth coverage with them. Um, well, let, me, so, let me preface that real quick to say it's not because we didn't want to. We just ran out of time. We were, our we, plans were right. to go get a hold we'll of We'll go back. We ran out of time, and when we were there, they weren't there. Now, right, the, only, so, the only caveat is they started packing the booth up early. That's the only thing I'll say. Okay, so yeah. – I know we're, we're, we want to be, um, how do I put this? I, I, I want to be as fair about both positive, negatives, and indifferent, if you will. Right. And I remember several times, Coop, you and I walk in the show looking over at the Google Gurkha booth and just saying, wow, it was empty. Um, now, we could have caught them on a bad time. We could have caught them at, a, at a, a, a down moment, but they had a very large booth, which, again, that's going to – had the perception that maybe it's not as crowded as others. So it's I got to be fair about that. However, um, that booth was not um, what I would consider crowded at any point that I saw them during the show. It was the largest booth at the church. It, the now. Yeah. And I know, you know, you've been to some previous shows. Oh, bear Ben, you've gone them. That was definitely the least crowded. I've seen the Gurkha booths ever. I don't think there's any doubt. Uh, even in 2019, the, the Gurkha booth had more traffic. That's fair. No, that's True, fair. but they got to do a lot of PR work. You know what I'm saying? They're not, they're not. They're not. They're not out of this Kaiser thing yet. I think it's very clear. They got a lot of work to do there. Well, it's 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 partially that. It's okay. It's a majority. That's their problem. But a lot of it is they just constantly dump stuff in catalogs. You know. They don't really, they, besides the cell reserve, they don't really protect the brick and mortars very, very well. So they got to kind of fix that problem too. I thought they've been better at that in recent years, though. Uh, but but well, a lot it's of like, it's like the, the Nicaraguan, um, probably because the deal with their, they struck with Aganorsa was probably hindered on it. And that's me assuming things. That that's not any inside knowledge. Yeah. But no, Ben's absolutely right. They don't, with the exception of the cellar reserve, uh, which, Still is my favorite Gurkha, the Solar Fifteen, uh, the original. But uh, they don't. They don't, you're right, Ben. They don't really. They don't really protect it. The, you, you know, know the, I was going to say I'm kind of. I kind of. I'm. I'm rooting for it. I, I am too. Point. I am too. You know, I I root for all the cigars. I want all the cigar companies but, to do, but I really root for them because when they first came out, I thought they put out some really good cigars. They kind of lost their way, and I. But I think they're trying to come back and. Be the old Gurkha and you know, put out quality product to the brick and mortars, not just catalogs. I just I think they're trying to write the ship, and I, they're going about it in the right way. It's just, it's just going to take a little bit of time. I think. But but don't you think though too, Ben? And I I don't disagree with anything everything that you guys have said to this point. But the best way to become what I'll say, you know, write their ship, become more more talked about, if you will, outside of something negative, is to put out better cigars. And I'm sorry, like I, maybe I won't get a Gurkha banner, but I have not been a fan of majority of the stuff that Gurkha has put out in the last, I don't know, three, four years. I mean, with the exception, I, I, I think I had um, the Nicaraguan, which I think was pretty decent. Um, yeah. But by and large, I don't like the Gurkha stuff, and I, I'm rooting for everybody to do well from top to bottom because when, when, from A to Z does well, that's the benefit to the cigar industry. They do a phenomenal job that they've got going for them is is marketing, right? So they've got an un, they've got a marketing machine in terms of they're known for their uh, their boxes and how they package their packaging, et cetera, is outstanding. They think outside the box, pun intended. But at the end of the day, they gotta get better cigars produced. Bottom line. Yeah, and I you know. I, I thought they made some good moves when they went to the Topsa, 
over to Gurkha Nicaragua and the San Miguel, which I think were good cigars. They're not quite, I think, what they need to be. I think they need to still be at another higher level. Um, I'm curious to try the new cigars, the Revenants that they have. Revenant? Was it the Revenant? I'm, I'm, I'm butchering the name. The ones they're doing with Ram Rodriguez at El Artista. Um, if you notice, though, this, this is a big observation I took away from the Gurkha booths this year. They have moved away from the Kaizad packaging. There was not a lot of, like the, like the new packaging over the last year, especially this year, they're the wrap, the Cuban style wrap boxes they're going to. They're not going to these crazy design things anymore. They're simple boxes. They look like cigar boxes. Um, you know, so they're not trying to create uh, like collectible swag or whatever you want. So I, I, and I've noticed that. And then I also noticed, and they said they were going to do this. They pulled Kaizad's name off a lot of stuff this year. So you don't even yeah. see Hans Sosa's name on it anymore. So yeah. that part they've made good on it, in my opinion, that they, that was something they committed to do and they're, they're doing it. So listen, I'm really not trying to stoke the fire because, you know, Jay brings up a good point in the chat. I know that Juan Lopez has worked really hard. He's and a great guy. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people curry favor with him. He's done yeah. a lot of work to, yeah. to kind of stabilize that brand. And even when Kaizad was there um, um, too. Okay. And again, I'm not trying to, be a jerk here okay so when you ben when you say the old stuff get back to the old gurkha when it was really good again i'm really not trying to be a jerk what cigars are you talking about <laughs> i think I, I know what he's talking about but i'll let I'm ben go about, i know i'm talking about the stuff like way back okay yeah so what they take me back you know, so yeah the, the original classic line the uh the boar which actually was a catalog exclusive was really good cigar. The Shaggies. Oh, the Regent. The Shaggies. the Shaggies were fucking good. Now that, yeah. now best that. Best cigar they ever did. Up. It's the best cigar uh, they ever did. <laughs> right. Uh, seller like seller Reserve 15. About. But, but no, the Shaggies. About good. Three or four years ago. I'm talking right. about. No, no, no. Six, seven, eight years ago. Okay. Okay. So, sorry. I just wanted to know how far back we were going. And maybe I met, maybe I missed a bunch of stuff. But. I um, forgot I'm old there. I know. No, no, I know. And I didn't like, I, did, I, wanted, I didn't want to insult you. And I didn't want to insult them. I was trying to be nice. That, you know, yeah. anyway. So, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so to me, the last thing that I enjoyed that they put out was the original Cellar Reserve. That year they came out with the Ghost, the Red Witch, and all that. That's yeah. when they went off the rails. So, no, 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 no. See, some of the East Indian Trading Company stuff was pretty good. The Rascal, that fucking shit was good. The, that was a good cigar. And that, ghost, aged, that cigar really aged really the, well, too. The Ghost sold, though. I mean, the Ghost is like, that was probably one of their best selling cigars. Of it the was, and then some, and then something happened, like yeah. with the, they couldn't get the right tobacco or something like that. Because if you smoke a ghost now, it it's like, it, it I mean, look, the, the ghost was always like a raw, yeah. hard, you know, punch you in the face type of type of palate. Now it, it's like it's not even that. It's just like. It's ba it's it's bad. There's I, look, I, like, I'm not gonna pull any punches anymore. It's bad. It just is. Like it's bad now. Hundred percent, Bear. I could not agree with you more. So I'm glad that Ben, who looks like Max Headroom right now, going <laughs> all. I know. I was wondering. That was just me seeing that or not. No. Um. But I, I I was wondering how far back we were going in the Gurkha lineage to start talking about something good. And I'm sorry. I I I'm maybe I'm in the minority and I, and people like their stuff i just don't all people do like they, they, they're incredibly pop they really are they're still very incredibly popular and they should be so um in in, in some aspects but like that's the thing like that when they find something good it's like the, it it doesn't stay around for a long time or they do something uh they 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 you know pimp it out online or whatever so you know um it's just it's frustrating but you know a lot of people have a lot of faith in Juan uh he seems to be he seems to be really listening to a lot of the things that we're talking about uh because a lot of the direction that they're going in and you know hopefully he can he can write the ship because yeah. like we said we want we want everything to survive man we don't <laughs> worst thing in the world is for a cigar company to go down especially you know you know especially because of the circumstances that they found themselves in i mean that's yeah. just that would be tragic yeah and i i gotta give again the credit you know like we didn't get to talk to them at the booths right uh we did get the pictures I was able to get the details, you know, contacting folks at Gurkha. Juan's always receptive to, uh, to he's always responsive. Uh, 
So I can't complain. You know, sometimes we just can't connect to the booths. I don't think there was anything more than we just couldn't get our right. aligned our schedules this year. I don't think it was any, you know, and hey, look, these guys are entitled to leave the booths once in a while. All right. So I, I don't get too upset about that. Like I said, uh, managed to get the information pretty quickly from them and certainly gave them coverage. Well, we, we, we just did get them on camera on the video. So uh, we'll do that. Ne- we'll do that next year. All right. Let's kind of continue down the line. All right. So this was a uh, HBC. Mm. Uh, by the way, he will be uh, Renee Lorenzo will be the guest on KMA on Saturday. Uh, so I'll plug that. Um, same booth as he's had every year, the jewelry counter booth he's gone with. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's had that booth every year, same size. Um, and, uh, we always kind of catch him there on like the same time late in the show. It seems like, well, that's what time he's usually not busy. Yeah. I mean, that's probably what happened. Um, again, um, I met you, I met him there through you at the first trade show you were at. So, Mm -hmm. um, it kind of built that relationship. Uh, I smoked less. Uh, he had the new hot cake 60 and the HVC 10th anniversary. I have not smoked. The, have I smoked the 10th anniversary? You, you smoked the 60 last show. I smoked the 60 last show. I did smoke the 10th anniversary. Yes. Uh, I think the 10th anniversary need a little time, but it's going to be really good. Uh, the 60, I liked it. I would say to everyone, I thought that was the second best size I had at a hot cake. Uh, and a couple of sides of hot cake I haven't been high on. Um, but uh, cool guy. I, I love going to his booth and, uh, Usually only has one or two releases at a show. He doesn't go crazy. Um, and, uh, you know, he can't, he can't complain. No complaints again about, about the visit to the booth. Yeah. So I, I, I think this, um, again, I'm, I'm calling everything as I see it from a you know, cigar smoker, I, I guess, for, let, for no other description. I think the HVC stuff is outstanding. Like, most... Look, I don't. I'm not a 660 smoker, so I'll take you at your word. Who maybe I will smoke at some point. It's but, not going to make you a six by sixty smoker, is what I'll tell you. Yeah. Right, okay, but I, I I came across them probably three years ago ish, um, and it was the limited edition, um, the 500 limited, I think it was, and I had I had talked up that company to a lot of my my friends and, and people that are, were looking for something new to smoke. And I said, try this HVC line and to a man really were impressed with what he puts out. I really, really like his stuff. I think uh, maybe a little bit under the radar from a brand still, I think. Um, but I think over time, I think it's going to catch on more and more because um, he just puts out quality stuff. Aaron, yeah. question for you: Is he is his stuff available in Chicago? Uh barely. I mean, that's a it, so we, yeah. I, I can't find it. So that's a great point. I, I can't. I actually, I can't think of a lounge that I've been to in recent memory that had a facing of HVC. I get all my all my HVC stuff online because I can't find it here. So to your point, it's not readily available like others. Yeah, I mean, Charlotte's only had it the last year and a half where it's really started to hit. I mean, you couldn't find – I mean, I remember when I went to Florida, that's where I was always buying HBC or buying them from some of the places online or getting them from people. Now they're now they're in the Charlotte market at several stores, but it took a long time. And he's 10 years – the company's 10 years old, so keep that in mind. It took a long time to get here. Did you guys see – speaking of that, I picked it up. Um, it wasn't at the show, but I got a HBC with AJ – they, he, I don't know if it was a, I got a cigar King. It's a blue. I can, I'll grab it at some point. It's an HVC with AJ. Uh, really? Cigar. Yeah. Okay. Let Are me, you sure it's not Casa Fernandez? It's no. AJ Fernandez. Let me, let me look. Hold on. I'm going to pull it up for you right now. I'll share my screen for those. I'm going to have to give, I'll give you permission here. I want to see that. Uh, I handed him out a an award for the uh, for the third year in a row. So, Rainier stuff has always performed well on the Ellis Fumar takes list. So that was kind of yeah. He's got a he's had he's made my list two years in a row as well. Uh, the 500 anniversary, I think, still the best thing he's done. Um, so uh, the hot cake there, I like certain sizes better than others, is what I'll say. I like the short. I just I saw 
Bo likes the Corona. I like the short Robusta. Did you like the Siri A? Because I love that cigar. I I I like it. I like other cigars in his portfolio better. I know you and Dojo are very high on that Siri A, but I like it. Um, you know, but I'd probably reach for uh, a 2015, a 500 years um, before that. Oh, the original Pan Caliente is all good. The uh, um, guys and then the original, the original Broadleaf, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're a big fan of. I was a, oh the broadleaf the yeah, the original broadleaf I thought the re-release of the broadleaf went down uh, you know another thing he mentioned at the trade show is the broadleaf is now remember he used to put the robustos in the toro in that big long box mm-hmm. um now it's now they're separated out so now you can order them separate I think that was a smart move by them yeah like the well the edición especial is really good the two thousand both the two thousand and fifteen and the two thousand and eighteen. Uh, really dig the 2018. The 2018, if I didn't have that criteria on my list about, you know, two cigars not being able to be on the top 10, like, you know, it, the 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 Edition, especially all uh, 2018 and the Broadleaf would have qualified in the same year. See, I didn't like the 18. I liked the 15 better. Well, the 15 is fantastic, too. Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of the 18. You were much higher. On the, I don't say that. You were higher on the 18 than I was. Coop, but can I fi- show you my screen? Yeah. Yep. It's... All right, so oh, Nick Ryan Heirloom Toro by AJ Fernandez, eight by HBC Cigars. I never knew that. Wow. So I picked it up, of course, because I'm. Yeah. Um, so uh, it was fine. Um, but yeah, so I saw this and I, I didn't know that they were collaborating or, or did anything along those lines. But, yeah. Uh, the agency... news, to us, news to us too. It was yeah. I wonder if he's just doing it for Cigar King because Cigar King does a lot of private labels. Could be. Yeah. But, but oh. it, interesting those guys working together in some form and maybe AJ's Tobacco could be, you know, HVC through Cigar King. I'm not sure. I yeah. don't know enough about it. Yeah. No, it's true. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, that's the first I've seen anything with him on that. I'm going to have to do a little investigating on that myself. But uh, that may be an older line. I mean, now I know he's pretty tied with Aganarsa uh, over the past few. I don't think he's doing anything, but you never know. Sometimes you, that's, you find things like that. That's a good yeah. find there. It says new. I don't know. <laughs> new, new from the yeah. 10 years ago. I don't right, know. Right, right. I don't know. That's a good good cat, good call there. All right. All right. The next couple of booze are interesting. So let's kind of go into Illusioni. Um. So we did not get an interview with Dion on camera, but Dion did talk to us, probably Aaron and I, uh, while you guys were doing the Amendola, well, Ben and Bear were doing the Amendola piece. And it was an interesting conversation, I'll say. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was kind of, Aaron, I'll give you, I'll let you kind of describe it. Yeah. So, well, so Dion and I talked about golf most of the time. He was showing me his golf swing for about five minutes. Um, really nice guy. I, here, here's the impression I got um, that he seemed disinterested. Um, he didn't have anything at the show. He didn't right. have any product. Um, he was kind of just going through the motions. He had a small little booth with a, a, a cloth backdrop. Uh, I was, you know, I was really looking forward to meeting Dion for a couple of reasons. Number one, I love the Luzioni stuff. Um, so I think from a blending standpoint, he, the, the way that he can work with tobacco is outstanding. Um, I, I was really interested to meet him too, because I've listened to other interviews with other manufacturers, blenders. They have the utmost respect for Dion. Um, they really like him. Really nice guy. I could see where, you know, if you catch him on the wrong, at the wrong day, wrong time, you know, probably have to come back or come back the next day. And so maybe we caught him at an off time, but he didn't really have any interest in talking about much. Um, right. He was wondering about the show, whose booths are crowded, who's doing well, et cetera. But it wasn't one of those where he was engaging. He was not engaged with our conversation. I'm going to say that's a hundred percent accurate because I was trying to assess because he did other interviews. Right. But I've noticed when it comes to the coop, and this is not, I'm not taking this as he's pissed at Coop. Some folks, Bear, you may have a different opinion, but, but this is what I've noticed. He's had several of these shows where he's gone in just like he did this year. 
Nothing. Doesn't bring product. Doesn't have anything to show. Doesn't have anything to talk about. And he's disinterested in talking to me. Right. And when he has stuff, man, come over, do an interview with me. I mean, bear. remember he, he, he hunted yeah. me down two years ago to do the interview. Right. That's right. But this year it was a total opposite. Right. So, and, and I remember I had a problem. I ended up, the audio didn't work on I didn't have the audio hunt on that interview, which was bad. Right. So, but, but, so I've noticed that. I don't know because maybe he views me as a news guy. He doesn't want to say too much because I'm a news guy and he thinks maybe I'm going to go off on certain things. Like, look, he's told us certain things. You know, the the luxury is coming out, right? He told us that there's, there's rumors of a couple of projects. I'm not going to touch those right now. I don't, wasn't I don't there think... a PCA exclusive? It wasn't on display. It wasn't. On, oh, I mean, yeah. that was, and that was, look, if there's one thing I'll beat Dion up on, if you're committing to a PCA exclusive, you need to have that product on display. There's no excuse for that. I mean, this is a PCA exclusive and, and you don't have anything to show on it there. It is bad. Yep. That's like the one I thing I'll, before, I'll really criticize him on. And I said, we, we mentioned this on the show last time, guys. So if, if this is going to be a little repeat for, and, and thank you for all the folks that are tuning in again, but it would not have been hard, even if he had a box and you couldn't open it up to look at the cigars, something as from a piece of advertisement about a PC exclusive. And then we talked about having, you know, a little sticker or a stand next to it and say, Hey, this is the PC exclusive because what that would have done for me, a, I would have, I would have made sure I highlighted it in, in, in photos wise, but it's also a great opportunity, you know, for you bear, if you would have been interviewing him or anybody to really talk about a PCA exclusive, because the more uh, awareness that we can build around a PCA exclusive and something that's PCA specific, the more it's going to benefit the manufacturer. It's going to benefit people that are there from a retail standpoint, post-show list interviews. It just, to me, those PCA exclusives got completely looked over no matter who you were outside of probably crown heads and maybe maybe Agronosa, I don't know. I mean, it, it, there was not, it was not uh, publicized nearly as much as it should have been. You know, he certainly had a crowded booth, you know, with, uh, with the, uh, you know, with the Amendola company there, uh, you know, Fred was there helping him out. Um, you know, he was next to, he was next to, even though they weren't, they were technically in separate booths, but he was next to, uh, uh, Cavalier of Geneva, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I'm, I mean, he got plenty of traffic and everything. So, I mean, I'm hoping it was a good show for him, um, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, well, look, yeah, if we're going to give Michael Hercott a pass for not having product with Ferry Otago on display, Dion should get the same respect. On well, like he, you're, you're yeah. right, though, Coop. He does this every other, he does this every, every other year. Other year. That, yeah. It's his MO. He, 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 doesn't, he doesn't launch to any, uh, anything new or yeah. very little. And, um, you know, and that could be it too, you know, uh, not having the strong, a strong relationship like some folks do with him, that might be his thing too. Maybe he, you know, you know, if he doesn't have product to talk about there, you know, he doesn't feel the need there. He doesn't feel that there's a need to do an interview. I, you, look, you know? I, I kind of get that. And, and it's kind of like, how many, you know, what do you get? How's the show going? Great. You know, right. Um, yeah. But Best I show ever, but he did have a product. <laughs> he did have a product. It was the PCA exclusive, the CG4 Candela. Um, and it should, in my opinion, if it wasn't, then if it wasn't PCA exclusive, then, you know, I, I can, I don't, I can be a little more sympathetic on it, but it was a PCA exclusive. And that was something I beat the PCA up on is you got to make sure that they, if people are committing, you got to at least give the, that, tell them, Hey, we expect the product to be there in, in all, in a good face. You know, I don't know if you could force them obviously contractually to do it, but you could kind of say in good face, you know, bring the product here. Bring a photo, bring a, bring a photo, dummy up a box or something. You know, there, I saw people smoking the Candela. We didn't get, we didn't get any samples at the, now Dion usually does give us samples, by the way. So mm. he didn't give us any samples this year. Darn it. I love this cigar. So I want yeah. to and he usually gives, Dion gives good, like Dion's given good samples out. So, but I've never like said, Hey Dion, you got some, some smoke. No, he, he, he usually on his own goes, Hey, you want something to smoke? And he's throwing me like singularities, right? PCJs. He throws good stuff at you at the trade show. So, you know, he didn't offer, maybe he just wasn't having a great day. Um, like bear said, we we've gone through this several ups and downs with this. Um, and I guarantee when he has product next year, we're going to, we're going to have time on him. I don't think that'll be a problem. 
Okay. Uh, let's go to the next uh, thing on the list here. Uh, J.C. Newman. Well, that was probably my uh, look. There was a lot of positives with that visit out, and we can kind of start hitting on that. But, but a uh, great interview with Drew. First up, yeah. Um, I, I listen. I think you know with you know, you know if if JC Newman doesn't show up, I think El Septimo wins the best booth. Uh, even though well, they we, won medium. They won medium, and JC won the large. Right, right. No, I'm just, but I'm talking about overall, right. Like JC Newman wins small, medium, large. It doesn't matter what size their booth was. They have the best booth, best looking booth at the trade show. They win hands down. Uh, uh I was still a Fuente fan, but you, no doubt you can make the argument for the JC Newman booth. Okay, yeah, like yeah. very yeah. close, very close second. But I right, mean, right. I mean, just dude, a a a mock up, a two scale cardboard mock up of El Rahul to the letter, like the bushes, the the, the window sills, like everything like that that is immaculate like um and i i mean it was i was you know like the cigar history nerd in me freaking geeking out the whole time like i thought that was fantastic um really fantastic great it was a great opportunity to to interview drew in person um you know had him on my show um you know a while back and uh but it was great to finally meet him in person and actually uh and actually sit there and talk with him so we had we had a great conversation you so, guys did a, yeah, you guys did a great job with that interview. Go ahead, Aaron. So, so, yeah, so I was going to say, uh, look, I know every company can't afford um, somebody specifically dedicated to marketing like, you know, JC Newman can. But, you know, Andrea, what a what a like a, a, a great individual yeah. great at her job. Um, you know, what I, what impressed me about Andrea, too, was, you know, she wants to she wanted to know about Coop, right? She not you specifically, but just. What are you guys doing? What do you have on, you know, plan for the rest of 2021? How can she help? How can she be part of what you're doing? How can she not only from, um, from, you know, a JC Newman perspective, but uh, really interested in the success of the show. Right. And yeah, you know, very knowledgeable, talked about events that they're having, you know, they've got a, a special event coming down, down there. I think Coop that she, she mentioned and just, you know, the way that, she from a brand ambassadors is too strong a word because I mean it you know she's not Drew Newman or you know somebody specifically like that but she comports herself well and it does a great job helping facilitate uh, people like us right so hats off to Andrea and I thought you know not only great booth biodegradable by the way so for all those people that think that they're gonna you know trash it biodegradable and uh, would just look really cool so. Hats off to them. It, you know, in terms of our team in action, it was like a very productive because Ben and Bear were doing that interview with Drew. And then we were sitting down with Adria to talk about the, uh, the coup plan, which I never had someone sit down and say to me, hey, tell me about what the rest of your year is going to look like. Right. I've never had that happen before. And here, I think I mentioned this on the last show a bit. Luckily, we had a really good story because of – Smoking Syndicate is the big project that's for the second half of this year. Uh, I know, Aaron, we're talking about you doing some work on Coop as well that we've talked about. Like, so we have some stuff that's clearly in the pipeline that, you know, I felt like, okay, we're still your media partner and, and here's the value we're bringing to you. So I was, that was very, very, that was important to me. Uh, so I, and I appreciated that. And she's been a breath of fresh air. Because J.C. Newman, about three or four years ago, had no connection with the online media. They were they were as distant from online media as anybody. I mean, Bear, I don't think we – last show, the 2019, was the first time we really ever covered them. Um, mm -hmm. So they were one of those – Adria came in with some fresh blood and I think opened up a lot of doors for not just us but a lot of other online media brands. Yeah, no, they were they – were, look, they were very hospitable, very, you know – welcoming gave us great great time and uh check out the interview with drew newman because uh sakar croup uh uh busted wide open a, an exclusive from the trade show so yeah there's a there's an exclusive on there um the angel cuesta uh you can hear about that um it's on the uh, interview and it's also on the big board if you go into jc newman uh we are the only media outlet to have that uh hats off to ben 
who uh, he said, hey, look, we got to get this interview. We got to get this one to the top of the queue because it was probably of all the interviews. That was the one big exclusive we had. So Ben actually made sure that that was the first interview to get out. And great, great work, Ben, as, as you've been doing for the past few weeks on these on rolling out these uh, the post the post editing of these interviews, man. Great job. Yeah, I didn't want that news breaking somewhere else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, so. We, yeah. so we worked on that real fast. Uh, we actually put a story out, and then, then we put the Boots report out first. So, yeah, it was absolutely – you guys were right on top of that, which was important. Uh, in fact, we tried to get it out even earlier, but uh, our Wi-Fi at the compound wouldn't cooperate. So, <laughs> but we – Yeah, so. long, long story. Long story. We won't go into that. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Long story. Buffering was a theme. Uh, okay, buffering. And here's the thing, guys. Vid- you think if you think video, if you think going to the trade shows e- hard, it, like you might not think it's hard. Video is like ten times harder. No amount of samples, okay, are, are going to be worth <laughs> the amount of, of work hey, that has to happen careful. on the back end with these videos. No, I'm serious. Careful, careful. I don't know if we get samples. <laughs> not with that attitude, Coop. No, right. Come on, we have positive thoughts about samples. Okay, well, we just there for the samples. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, so I'm going to move us along. Unless there's anything else to stop me. Um, okay. This was a booth we had to go to a few times, uh, but we got to them. Uh, the JRE booth. Uh, so this is the, I'd say this is, I, I, I've known Husto a long time. Uh, he's a long time sponsor on Coop, the disclaimer, but I've, I've known him uh, going back to the Stogie Geeks days. So, um, you know, he, I always say this about Husto. He has the worst booth locations mm. and always ha- and has always has traffic in these booths. I mean, most people, when they get those booths, it's like a death sentence to get a booth. He found he somehow makes makes it work. The, he kind of makes it work. Well, he's got a great product, which mm. will cure will cure a lot of uh, booth yeah, cool. locations. Yeah, we'll, yeah, I was going to say that will kill our samples were available. Cure. Samples, samples were, available. were available. So kudos. And so with whatever that, you uh, wanted to, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So let me let me a couple things out of out of that. I really enjoyed my time. I didn't get to spend a ton of time with Usto, but I got to spend time with his daughters. Very what, great. A, what a great job that he and his wife did raising those young ladies. Yeah. Um, they also I was talking to his his daughter. Um, they had a break in, right? So they yeah, they had yeah. a break in and they got um, they had a shipment on like a Friday and somebody they think potentially could have been somebody that knew where everything was because they came in through the roof and took you know several hundred thousand dollars worth of, of product out. So fortunately, no one got hurt and you know they can you know recoup what they lost in terms of financials. But you know it's a scary thing when you you've got your company like that not a lot of people work in there and somebody breaks in and uh you know takes everything they didn't take computers they didn't take anything they just took all the cigar inventory so um they they installed more cameras and and they've got that under wraps now but you know it was it was interesting to hear their perspective of you know from a da- their daughter's perspective about being in the industry and supporting their their family they have other jobs right now, but um, at least the younger the one I talked to did. But they could not have been more hospitable, offered up whatever we wanted from a sample standpoint, and uh, was a great, great time at the booth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I always, I always have a really good time at that booth, right? I mean, <clears throat> Uso is always super easy to talk to. He's a great conversationalist. Um, the, the whole family is just amazing, you know. It's, it's a very, like, I'm coming from the technical video standpoint, it's always a really easy booth to deal with, right? I mean, I've, I've never had to do any editing because, like, it, it, it always goes perfect every time, you know? But then it goes to the whole booth. Like, everything, it, it's just how they do business in the booth. It just has a great flow about it, you know, to our interviews so when they do business. It's just they have a great booth. They, they they do a great job every year. I always love going to that booth. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously I know who's still, I know the family. I've known them for a few years, but um to hear you guys saying that just is important too. Um and... well, something that oh go ahead, Cooper. Oh, go ahead, Bear. Go ahead. Yeah, fine. No, I was go gonna ahead. say something I'd like to mention and then ask for ask for the impression that these guys got because you know 
Ben and Aaron, this is the first time you've experienced Coop in the JRE booth. So um, listen, our, our our colleague here, William Cooper, is a very humble guy, but and he but he's all he's very beloved throughout this industry. I think that's evident. Uh, he has great relationships. Everybody has respect for him, and it's you know it's easy to see why. But um, every time I've gone into the JRE booth, I am I mean they they love him. I mean, I mean, like, not like, oh, I love that guy. No, they love Coop. And they, I mean, he's like an extended member of their family. And it is, it's, it's, it's fantastic to see the relationship that they've built over the years, because it is, it is one of like family almost. And, and, uh, and I, I've, I've been honored to kind of be kind of by proxy included in that. And it's, it's led to a, you know, a good relationship with Justo, who is a fantastic interview. Um, I think uh, I think he's uh, I think he's probably the toughest critic on himself out of anybody else in the industry. But he's oh I, I love I love talking to him and uh, the love that he has for his family, for his father and the respect that he has for the the legacy that they've that his family has built is just uh, is just incredible. And I I I, I really enjoyed our conversation um, again. They're just and they're just they're wonderful people. I loved it. He was one of the few guys that I actually, I don't want to say I've done, he, I haven't done this a lot, but I've done it. When they announced Jerry Tobacco, I got a press release uh, and I got phone numbers on that, right? And I actually picked the phone up, right? And I called and it wasn't, it was, their, they had another guy working for him at the time. Um, and the other guy, they were great. He was great. This other guy, uh, his name was Bernie, right? And Bernie says, hey, let me put you on the phone with Husto, right? Now, I was I didn't know what to make when that was going to happen because, uh, you know, I didn't know who so at all. Like and I was amazed how down to earth he was. And, and he was so appreciative that I made this phone call um, just because I said, hey, I want to I want to get to know you. You know, you're coming from this iconic family. Uh, no one knows you. And we started to just hit it off. So, I mean, I'm, you know, sometimes you, there are times you, you do have to, you know, you take these chances. Uh, and I always say you like to use your uh, time wisely. And I, and I think this was one case that worked. I, I never would have expected it worked out to the level it did uh, because they've been tremendous partners for this for this uh, brand. Uh, and you guys, could they've really, they've really supported us. And, and even if they dropped us tomorrow, I don't think it would change my relationship with Husso. Uh, so it shouldn't change it with any sponsor, but it wouldn't. I can tell you that. Yeah. Uh, we're, and then just kind of a last thing on that, um, one of the cigars that they came out with uh, was the JRE, uh, excuse me, the Aladino Crow Reserve of Figurado. Bear and I are going through a aging experimentation of that right now. So I think about, Bear, we did it probably a month ago. Right. We did it right before the show. It was the Leona Fuente show, so it's almost two months ago, where we smoked it, and then we're going to revisit it again six months from that first smoke. And a year from that first smoke, I'm really curious to see what that cigar is is doing. Um, a little thing is, it's evolving, is what I'll just tell you, because I have I've smoked a couple more of them. Well, so, I, I I I smoked that Figurado at the show. Or, that's tough. I think that was, was tough to smoke at the show. <laughs> okay, that's it was, just, it was strong. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and I like strong stuff. That thing was strong. Yep. You had you had a couple. You had a. In, you had a couple of uh, bangers there, Aaron, including yeah. the including from the booth we're about to discuss too. Yeah, yeah. First first thing in the morning. This, this <laughs> next booth is a okay. This next booth is a lot of good stuff to tell here. So, um, and let Aaron go first. I'm gonna let Aaron yeah, go first. A, but let me, there's let me good set stuff. The, let me set the stage, okay? And then we're gonna get into Aaron's piece. And and so the first booth, we we always wanted to decide what the first booth was to hit the show. Okay, that's always like a strategic plan. Bear, you came up and said we got to hit Kristoff first, right? Now, when you said that, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm like, they got nothing new. Why are we going to this booth, right? Um, I think it turned out strategically to be the right, right move, right? Um, yes, they had nothing new, but there's, there was a lot of great interaction at this booth. Obviously, well, you, we had rewards to give them, which was part of the reason why we wanted to do it early is to get those awards in their hands. So I understood that reason. But, but I'm going to turn it over to Aaron because, Aaron, your experience at that booth was very interesting with Glenn Case. 
It and was Garrett. Yeah, it was. So it was my first, it was our first booth. And I coming out of it after we're done, I'm like, wow, this is like, I, I I'm going to get a, you know, connection to somebody some way. So turns out that Glenn and I are neighbors. I mean, we, he lives about 20 minutes from my house. Um, we hit it off, talked about, you know, getting together for a cigar, this and that, um, could not have been more generous with his time. Great guy. Got to meet uh, a lot of the, the team members there at Christoph. We were very welcomed. And in the course of, of getting to kind of just, you know, talk about this, that, and the other, it, it obviously came up that what my father does for a living. And Jared is one of the Christoph reps. And he, he basically stopped dead and said, and went into the story about how his uncle is like the biggest cheap trick fan. Um, he is not feeling well health wise and it was his birthday. So it was his birthday on the first day of the trade show. And so he was telling me about how, the, how he's got all this cheap trick memorabilia in his basement and this, that, and the other. And so I said to Jared, I said, well, you know what, why don't we do this? Um, let me, let me text my dad and, uh, let's get him a, a birthday wish for your uncle. So Time, some time had passed. Uh, my dad was actually on the road. He, I don't know where he was playing. Can never keep track. But uh, he ended up doing a uh, a cameo. So my dad's on cameo. So you can, you know, have him say whatever you want. Happy birthday, happy anniversary, whatever the case may be. But uh, he gave, he recorded a, a happy birthday wish for his his uncle, and uh, I I sent it off to Jared. Jared was super appreciative. Of the guy um, obviously health wise is not doing well. Uh, passed along that brought a huge smile to his face and was happy to uh, to be able to to do that for him and uh, make somebody's day a little bit better so um, was a great experience at the Christoph booth yeah no it really was um that was a good job by that um you know the one thing I'll say again and Ben you've covered the show a while you guys have covered, I know you guys have covered Christoph. I still don't see this brand covered by as many media outlets as you would, you know, expect. Um, I know we've spent a lot of time at this booth over the years. Uh, and they've, o- again, they've always been accessible. Um, I mean, I know a couple of the guys we've been trying to get over one night to the house and they, they, they didn't get a ban for life because they, they literally didn't over commit to come. Right. But they were, they, but you know, in general, the support we've gotten from Christoph Bear over the years. Um, great brand to cover. I mean, the products are good. Um, they're accessible. Jared's an awesome podcast guest, uh, as is Glenn. So, I mean, um, it's one of those, like, I scratch my head. Why aren't, and, and by the way, they didn't, they didn't downscale their booth at all. That's the same booth they had as two years ago. Yeah. It was just organized differently, but it yeah. was the same booth. Yeah. No, um, no, I would, yeah, it was, the Christoph booth was great. It was a great idea to go to them first, except for some putts forgot to, you know, to bring his award along that he was going to give him. Who is that? Like, look, that would, that would be me. Look, look, that would I be forgot me. to give an award out too. I, the award thing was, I screwed up as much as you did with the awards. So don't, don't feel bad. Well, luckily I went back and I was able to hand it to Glenn. There's, and we well, there's one out. award we didn't give out. We're going to really get to that one soon. So yes. Yeah. Yes. But uh, yeah, no, but that was and, and Glenn is just like awesome. Uh, you know, he, uh, and here was the other thing I saw that was really, and I know this is sentimental, right? So Aaron's going to make fun of me, right? But Aaron Loomis, right? But that team was the first time that team really got together in two years as a team. Right. And you could see the chemistry going on in the booth that because we were there right at the beginning when it was going on. So real quick, Ben, were you going to make a comment? I've got something to say. Go ahead. About, about Christoph and how they've been interacting with everybody. Oh, I thought the past few years. Yeah, yeah. past few years. Yeah. Oh, I was just gonna. I was, what I was gonna say was, um, yeah, throughout the years they've always been really good with us too. When we, we did the same videos with Stugger Review, they they never told us no. Glenn was always available. And was yeah, all, they're always super nice, and I I really like their cigars. Yeah. The only problem is I I've been you know I don't I don't even seen them much. In many cigar shops, like in Florida, I, I was hard to find them, right, when I lived there. My home shop, the cigar shop in Biloxi, Mississippi, that was one of the first brands that we brought in. And it was, it did stellar. Yeah. It did so good. I, yeah. I smoked so many crystals, you know, it's it's unbelievable. But I, but even thinking about it now, we were talking about Coop was, 
I haven't had that many, you know, lately though. But uh, like when I was in the Panhandle of Florida, there's not a lot of shops that would carry them. So I, I didn't have, and I don't, like I said before, I don't order online too much. I try to support local brick and mortar as most I can. But when I would go back home, I would pick some up and to Biloxi. But other than that, I didn't see it much. Now so, they got a good selection in, in Texas. So I was in Houston, I was able to get them, but that's about it. They're in so, they're northeast. A lot of them are in the northeast. So can I make yeah. comments? So first, Coop, just in your honor, I'm gonna go with this Cohiba M and we'll see how this thing nice. holds up, holds up right. uh, quality yeah. wise. And then real uh, quick, go ahead, sorry. The eighty six uh, rated Co- no, yeah. 85 rated Kobe Bam. Yeah, so you know. yeah, yeah. So, but let me make a, and I want to, and I don't know if this is, if this is accurate. So I'd like to get your guys' opinion on what I'm going to mention about Kristoff. Do you think it hurts them that they don't brand their cigars and give them a name? I mean, they do, but they don't, right? So if you look at, I don't know, give your, you know, we got the Alec Bradley Prinzado. You've got the, the, the uh, my father, Le Bouget. Christoph was basically brands them the Corojo, the Maduro, the take your pick. They don't brand their cigars uh, in a unique way like a lot of manufacturers do. And I okay. don't know if that hurts them or not. Okay, so I'll tell you. Up. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in on this, Aaron. A great question. Uh, I Listen, to the cigar, um, to, to people in our audience and to people in our realm, I think you have a point. Because it's not sexy. Like there's not, there's not a, it's not flashy, right? Even though if you look at their packaging and you look at their marketing, they are, they have incredible, like they have incredible gift and incredible eye for looking good. And especially on the shelf, it's very, I call it rustic elegance. Uh, And Glenn said that that was probably the most apt description he had ever heard about his, his cigars um, before, but to, to the, to the everyday smoker, uh, it is, uh, Glenn and Jared will absolutely tell you it's perfect. It is a perfect strategy because if I don't know what I'm doing and I go into a humidor and I go over to the Kristoff corner, I'm like, oh, Connecticut, I know I like that. Oh, Maduro, I like that. You know, it's very, it's very easy to pick because it's like, oh, it's right there. It says it right there. It's Maduro. It's Connecticut. It's shade. It's sun grown. It's Sumatran. Like, it's very straightforward. There is no, like, like a lot of people know that the, uh, like, like, uh, like Pete stuff, for instance, which we'll get to like the Coho Nu, they know that that it, there's, there's a, there's a Sumatran and there is a broadleaf, but unless you know, you don't know by looking at Pete stuff, right? There's not, I mean, it's on the box somewhere, but it's not, it's not as like evident as it is with like Kristoff. So to like the average everyday smoker, it is absolutely, it absolutely helps them. Um, but I will say that it probably it probably is less appealing to uh, to I guess our crowd so to speak because it's just not as it's just not as flashy. There isn't you know there it, you know it's yeah it's just not as flashy. But I I mean no I, I I think it's great. I've always liked their packaging. I've always loved their cigars. Um, I've always been a big been a big fan of their stuff. Um, but no that's a great that's a great that's a great observation I think. Let me let me actually throw a little monkey wrench into that though. So there is a very unique scenario that Christoph has, though. So, you know, you have like a line called, let's say, let's say Christoph Cameron as an example, right? You have Christoph's the company name, Cameron's the line name, and then you have Robusto, let's say, right? So you have Christoph Cameron for Robusto, right? Which is kind of the way you normally would say a cigar name, you know, brand, line, Vitola. Right. Now you have this pissed off Christoph line, right? And it goes the opposite, right? So they have a cigar called the Extremely Pissed Off Christoph. So it's the opposite where the Vitola names first. Extremely is, is the line. I think it's like a, I want to say it's a double Corona or something that they have, or Presidente yeah. size. Then Pissed Off is the, the, the line name. And then Christoph's the brand name. So they kind of go opposite. I don't know another company that's ever done that. And I think right. I've told Glenn that. So they do, there's a couple of cases, but in general, I agree with the, with the scenario you guys talked about. Um, he, you know, I, I don't know. There's two ways to look at it. It's very easy to tell what you're smoking, right? But it's not flashy. You know, hey, camera, it's on the wrapper. I'm smoking a camera. You know, I'm smoking oh. a San Andreas. So I, I get that, right? Well, but I think flashy a, works for some and it doesn't work for others, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right. I don't know. I, I, it, it is kind of odd. Like, I don't, 
I don't understand why they're not as popular as as they should be. I, I think they should be a lot more popular and more out there than they yeah. are. I, it is something that I was kind of wondering about. I do know that, like, when I, so when I was in Texas the first time in Houston, you know, they were at the Texas Cigar Festival. You know, for, Glenn was there, you know. But other than that, like, we had, we've had them in, in Biloxi at the cigar shop for a long time, but there's, there's never been a, a – anybody reached out to do an event there or anything like that. So I thought maybe that was part of the problem. Like, maybe they're not doing – enough events or stuff with the consumer i guess too that was that was kind of what i was thinking as well yeah. but that's the, i never that's thought the about thing. the way they're, they're super engaging <laughs> if you think they, about they, like all their reps like bill their Fozzie, reps are engaged they, 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 they yeah even when robin uh got the red Sox lost again god damn it um <laughs> uh you know even robin. When robin parsons used to work for him like they they uh i mean right. they've robin was helpful they're, they're always helpful to you the reps yeah Mm-hmm. They, they really they're dedicated to the brand and they, they like with media, they, they work with media. They're great. I think they have a great, I mean, I think the problem with their sales team is they have too much ground to cover is the problem. I don't think they have a big enough sales. Yeah. Team. I think that's, I don't think that it's could, they have a bad sales team. Yeah. That could be it yeah, because I, I don't know. I don't remember who was the rep actually for the time because they covered New Orleans, and the Mississippi Gulf coast. If I remember right. But it's kind of a no man's land to be honest, because there's not much once you get off that area. There's not there's like a big gap between North Mississippi, North Louisiana, and also in Alabama, the Gulf Coast, and all the way up go up north for the, the major cigar shops. So the, there's like there, it is it's a huge area to cover. I get it, you know. I don't know. I I I don't know what the issue is, but I never thought about what Aaron had just mentioned. That that's a very valid and good point. I never thought about too. Um, I just want to give a scoring update here on something too. Can I? The Mets have lost, right? And the Phillies have won. The Phillies are a game and a half out of first place. Oh, uh, uh, wait! You forgot the most important one. The Braves are up six to nothing over the Cardinals. Well, it hasn't it hasn't been final yet, but yes, they are up six to nothing, and and you're going to gain some ground as well. Yeah. Well, it's at the it's the top of the night, so. Okay, so you're you're it ain't a Philly. You see, I'm used to Phillies games. We have six nothing leads in the bot in the top of the ninth and lose game. So, so I'm, I'm you know forgive me on that one. But like we are a game. The Philadelphia Phillies are a game and a half behind the New York Metropolitans. What a, what a what a I season! Can't, I can't believe I'm, it. I'm loving that too. Yeah, it, 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 we're, not, we're probably not going to win the division. I know that, but but uh, and I picked the Braves to win the World Series this year. So, but I know it's a little that's a mistake. Weird. Yeah. Uh, well, and it, it, here's the thing. All I know is my star reliever on my fantasy baseball team was traded from the Rangers to the Phillies. And since he's been with the Phillies, he's been terrible. Who, uh, terrible. Uh, Kennedy? Ian Kennedy. Yes, Kennedy. He's terrible. Look, we had to take him because we had to get rid of Spencer Howard. There was no other. We, we had to take something off their hands, right? We're, we're saddling hey. him with Spencer Howard. I, I get it. He's terrible. Yeah. No, he was, he was great with the, he was doing great with the Rangers. He got to the. It's like he can't, he's kind of like the the reliever version of Gabe Kapler, I guess. He goes to the Phillies, he sucks. But when he wasn't with the Phillies, he's doing great. <laughs> I almost just spit this coffee right out. Was so that was the best line of the year? <laughs> Shots fired. Oh god, savage. All right, all right, all right. Let's get to the next booth here. Um, I'm gonna set the table with this one because this is a very interesting booth. It's the Law Roar Miami booth. Uh, now, they had product this year, despite all the problems like La Roar, there, re, there are some La Roar releases. There were three limiteds that are coming out. The Horde Age, the Fernando Leon uh, Edition Limitada, and the, the Pearl Vintage 2008. Uh, there's a new Don Lino Dominican that they're, they're doing with LRT, Star, which we'll, we'll, I know we'll get to. Here's, here's another one of these that I just go back into the history with. So when I started in Cigar Media, which is 11, about 11 years ago, the number one company with social media was La Roar. Would you agree that, Ben? That was like the number one company oh. to deal with. Yeah, by far. There wasn't even, I mean, the closest person besides, they would probably be Drew Estate, but they were a distant second. Yeah, you know, Miami State, General Cigar Company. Yeah, Miami, yeah, yeah, but, number one. Number yeah, one. Yeah, La Roar. Well, also, you got to remember, too, like, uh, you know, the owner, Guillermo Leon, was active on social media, too. He was active I mean, with us, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, he, but now he's just in my, I haven't heard from him in years. And we I spoke, I saw time. him, at, I spoke, I interviewed him at Pro Cigar, but unfortunately, we weren't able to complete that interview for a lot of reasons. Um, but that's, that's a side point because it didn't really turn out to be an interview. He actually interviewed me. It's what happened. Um, <laughs> but here's the deal. The only two people I know who covered this booth, and if someone else covered it, give me, let me know and I'll correct it. We're half wheel on ourselves. And I'm like, what the heck has yeah. happened in the last 10 years that, you know, because again, this was a company I didn't go, I was just starting out. So I didn't go on those trips to the DR with you guys, but I got in early enough where they were. I mean, I met everyone from Aurora too. So, I mean, I got to meet Jason and Jose, when Jose was there. Uh, so I was just baffled and we go into the booth and Jason, you know, gives us the time as always. And uh, he's always been great to us in the booth. So, um, I, I don't know. It was just one of those puzzling things. Yeah, I thought it was kind of confusing, but I mean, you know, Jason's still there. I mean, he still gives us everything we need. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he's always there for when we, I, if I, I, I could text him right now and he'll answer me immediately. Yeah. yeah. He's always good, but they're just not as active as they used to be with media or on social media like, like they did in the past, a decade ago, right? Yeah. And, and I know, I mean, like the, they've had changes over with their sales force, how they do things. And, you know, when they had Nate McIntyre there, it was like it got ramped up again. It was doing it was great. Nate was so, great. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Nate was Nate was one of the best tires they've made in a very, very long time. Yeah. So it, and but they got rid of him and they've kind of backslidden again. Now they're kind of gone into the shadows again. So yeah. I'm kind of hoping they can fix that that as well, but because they because Miami Cigar Company and Laura put out some really fine stuff for me for my palate, I love their stuff. Me too. You know, so I I I kind of I kind of feel bad. Like I, I mean, I want to see them more. I want to see it more out there, you know. But it's like you have they, like these more these limited editions come and go, and most people don't even know about them. Have you heard about it? You know, I feel bad for them because they're no. outstanding cigars. No, I mean, uh, we have the video going up, by the way, for Christoph and La Aurora. It should be up in the next 24 hours, right? So you'll see the interviews and see the products. Um, there's some stuff already out there. But you're right. The products are good. I mean, he and Jason gives good samples us. We, 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 they, he dropped Pearl Vintage 2008s on us, right? Um, he always drops good samples when I'm at the show. So, well, I mean, they got a lot of hype when with uh, Carl Malone, right? I mean, when they were blending his cigar, I mean, he was everywhere talking about La Aurora. Yeah. Um, but that kind of, you know, that fizzled out. I will say, total. They were taking topic. orders for Carl Malone, just so you know. They were taking the orders there. They were, okay. But they definitely had the most attractive booth help at the show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Nestor, Nestor's a good-looking guy. Yeah, <laughs> no. I wasn't looking at Nestor. No. Well, that's how that's how ne that's how Nestor got. That's into how Nestor rolls, man. He got so, into cigars. All right, we got to tell you the story. So you guys don't probably didn't hear the show. We bear you tell this story. You tell the story, right? When we well, had Nestor on the show, because this so is like, this is what this will explain, answer your question, Aaron. Yeah. So we, you know, one of one of Coop's things on, you know, whenever he has a guest for the first time on it on on a show. Typically, this is done on primetime, but even on primetime special edition, he'll ask him like, oh, how did you get into cigars? Like, what was your first cigar experience? So Nestor tells this really great story. And what it boils down to, the punchline, is he started smoking cigars for the chicks. Like He, yeah. wanted, he wanted to impress the chicks. Yeah. yeah he wanted to impress <laughs> the chicks. Yeah. yeah. Some, are, some are here for the free samples. Some are here for the chicks. You know, yeah. whatever it is. Hey, I will say this. I will say this. Nestor is one suave dude. He is. Yeah, he is. He's cool. Nestor is cool. He, yeah. Dude, yeah. Dude, yeah. straight out straight out of the, the Stuart Scott like book of cool, man. He is cool as the other side of the pillow, man. <laughs> like just straight coolness. Um and uh no, I love that interview with him. And then uh, but like you said, Jason always very accommodating. I I I uh I I, uh, you know, I don't know Jason as well as, 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 as you Coop and you, uh, Ben, but I, you know, we were talking a little bit offline today and I said, man, I said, one, uh, one thing about Jason though, man, that guy's a tough read. That guy is a tough read, but he is, he is, he's, he's a great interview. I enjoyed our conversation. Like you said, he was so, so accommodating and stuff, but man, that, that guy's a tough read. I'll, I'll just say that, <laughs> you know, 
I respect Jason a lot. He kind oh, yeah, of, he's done great things there. Listen, he he spent many years in the field before moving into that role, and he's really the, the guy. I mean, he, obviously, Nestor's in charge of the company, but in terms of, like, if Nestor's – Nestor, I look at Nestor, he's, like, chairman of the board, and Jason's, like, the CEO. I mean, that's kind of how right. I look at that relationship. Um, and, like I said, Jason – I mean, I remember when I was, again, getting into this, Jason was a field rep for a while. Um, so he was he was kind of learning and pe- learning the ropes for a long time there. Well, yeah, I will I will say this too about about Jason. I've I've known him. I consider us pretty good friends. We we've, we've gone back, you know, back with the first Laura trips and even before that, right? So a cup was it a two years ago now when they got rid of their sales force? I gave him a lot of hell on both. <laughs> I know. I bet you I, did. You know, privately, I bet you did. Pri- yeah, privately and also on social media, I kind of, I went hard at him, you know, because I there was some of my friends too, and we just kind of out. And they didn't tell me nothing because it, I'll get to that in a minute. They didn't say nothing, so all of a sudden I just see this. They're all basically the sales force has been like laid off or whatever. Man, that set me off so bad. And he's like, man, he takes me so man, what's wrong? What 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 did I do? I'm like. <laughs> What do you mean? What did you do? You know, can I, I, I told him, I'm like, that's messed up. I, I use more colorful language than that. <laughs> but um, basically, I was like, dude, what the hell? And, it, and nobody, people don't really know this. And I, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this. But like, when they did that, when they decided to do that change, and it not, not only did he tell me this, but the my on the other side of the coin, my friends told me about this, the reps and, and all them. They said that they went, way beyond what they needed to do to take care of all those people to make sure that they were taken care of by Miami Cigar Company as well as getting them placed with some uh, another company and make sure that they were good to go before everything was basically cut off so and that didn't really nobody really knows that nobody said anything about that you know so I kind of want to I kind of want to bring that out because this this conversation reminded me of that, but that is a really stand up company, right? I mean, they there's a lot of companies in, in you know in Corporation USA, you know that they don't care. They just cut people. They don't care. They went way above and beyond the call when they when decided to do the switch to make sure that their people were treated like the family that they see them as anyway. So I had to give them kudos for that. They did a great job with that, dude. That was all Jason Wood. Yeah, they did. Um, and it is a good job. Um, you know, um, and I know your three top, your top three rants band of all time. And I'm not gonna put them in order. I'll just say them is Royal Agio, General Destroying Royal Agio, Altria Cutting that Chairman Loose, and then the uh, Miami Cigar <laughs> playoff. Uh, uh, you, you did a good yeah. job on all three of those. Um, yeah, but, that's, you made, that's but you maintain, but you maintain relationships with all of them really well too. So just keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, that's what, that's kind of like I don't know if it's a drawback or uh, carries the wall, but I'm intensely loyal, and I, sometimes I don't have a filter. I can be very professional and diplomatic, but sometimes I'm just the bull in the china closet. Yeah. So, <laughs> so and when somebody does something <laughs> that I don't care for, you never have to know where you stand. That's for sure. Yeah. I know when I know when the uh, Ferry Ortego announcement came, I I messaged two people first, and it was first it was Bear because I I had told him there was an announcement coming the next day, <laughs> and then I yeah. messaged you. I said, "Looks like uh, I told that that chairman's not dead." Is what I said to Ben. <laughs> oh, so. thanks, take thanks, Cooper. You know, you, I know. I, I I I yeah. I I, I I I I okay. I, that's fine. I that's fine. All right, Coop. Yeah, you were. Yeah. Loomis, you're, you're was, Loomis sure. was left out too. If that makes you feel any better. No, not really. No, was, <laughs> no it doesn't really. It doesn't really. I'll, I'll make sure tried. I get. I'll make sure I get you next time. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. for all the for all the manufacturers and everybody listening to the show, either now or later, uh, you have to understand the uh, the the seriousness that Coop takes when he says uh, he keeps something. Uh, uh, off the record or exclusive or or anything he he holds to it man because like we literally got done with the show the night before and he's like hey pay attention to coop at 11 o'clock he's like i can't tell you i'm like are you fucking kidding me we thought we were off air it's off the record man i'm not gonna say anything no, dude i can't i can't this that, was less than 12 hours and he still wouldn't tell me yeah <laughs> it was uh there's certain cases where 
I could get an like basically have an agreement or non disclosure for the coupe brand. And then there's one where it's like one on mono to mono. This one, because there was a lot of things with Altria, I, I just couldn't, unfortunately. And I believe me, I wanted to share it. Um, but the minute, the second it happened, I did. So <laughs> it's okay. I respect that. I mean, my real job is kind of to keep secrets. Yeah. So I understand. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all good. I don't want to yeah. be the one. It, Ben's it in the CIA. We get it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I want to do two more and then we'll do our one must go here. Um, this one was one of the, the great booth experiences I had. Um, and this was just a good work on our team to get to these folks. La Galera, uh, the Ho Chi Blanco booth. Mm. Um, so I had a little bit of a problem with La Galera this year. All my contacts were gone. Uh, Elvis, Batista, Oscar Butler, they were my contacts over the years. I had no contact going into this booth. And I think what happened in this case, you guys got a couple of you guys got to the La Galera booth before I did. Um, and you guys made some things happen there. And they had two fantastic releases, uh, the 85th anniversary and the Imperial Jade, which is the Cameron release. So uh, I'll let you guys kind of pick up the story about how we got into that booth and got the access there. Aaron, you go because you pretty much spearheaded that. Yeah. So I was, right. Yeah. So I think his name was. Is, I hope I'm right. Is Alex? Alex. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Alex. yep. So yeah. Alex, um, he works at a lounge up in Milwaukee, and actually, <laughs> as ridiculous as it sounds, I think he kind of recognized me from the show. Um, and he, he, he watches did. the show. Yeah, he yeah, watches yeah. the show. Yeah. So hi, Alex. Um, and so he, he had. He, he had worked for Lakeside, right? Yeah, yeah. He works for. Yeah. He works with yep. Tyler Jeffrey. Yep. So or, he Tyler Jeffrey Lake side cigars. Yep. And so Lake, Lake Country, I, right? Lake Country. Never mind. Sorry, I, I'm um, derailing the conversation. So, so he was at the front of the booth, and we just started talking. Um, we started talking about just you know what we were doing in the media, what his role was, and I'll tell you, he's um, while he was there working for La Glera, very knowledgeable about their product, um, about you know what was going in, what was new at the company, etc. So we started talking just about what we we're looking for, what we we're looking to do. And then he helped facilitate uh, the interview, right, with, with Hochi and his son. And I think what, what was the, and you guys probably can add some more context to this, but what was really cool was that, you know, Hochi's son was, um, you know, agreed to do the interview. But then I think he kind of spurred on his dad to join him, right? So it was kind of one of those things where he's like, hey, come on, Dad, yeah. we're going to do this. And, yeah. and I think his son is knowledgeable enough to know that you look this, you've got to be more in, in, in the media a little bit because kind of a shy guy, at least from what I, I could gather. Yeah. And so yeah. his son kind of set it up. We did it around the booth. And I remember during the interview that you guys were doing, uh, Coop and I were standing kind of back behind the camera. And I said to Coop, I said, look, I said, talk about a proud dad moment. Yeah, like we, he was I just remember sitting that. watching he was sitting there. Hochi was watching his son give the interview, but he could, like, he couldn't almost like contain his excitement slash just watching his son comport himself in a very professional manner, very knowledgeable, kind of passing the baton or the torch on to the next generation. It was a very cool moment that um, I, I tried to. I don't know if I captured that on the the, the on the, the phone or not. Ben, I think Ben got a shot. Ben got yeah. a pick, and it yeah. was um, it was just a really cool moment to see him look at his son in a way of, of admiration and just like, you know, this is a really cool moment between a father, son, and you guys did a great job, you know, on the interview. Yeah. yeah I, we, we, we first went by there. They were actually in the middle of lunch. Yeah. yeah. So, and they, and uh, what was his name? Alex? Alex, was Alex, his name? Yeah, Alex. 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 Let me tell you something. That was a great pickup for them to have at that booth. He was great. He, yeah. he, like, like Aaron said, he knew his stuff. He, he was able to help us out with this interview. Cause remember we were, when we first went by there, we're having lunch and he said, Jose is not here right now. Can you come back in a little bit, in a minute when he can, he'll, he'll be back that way, you know, you can interview, do the interview with him. And I thought, okay, that's, that'd be great. You know? So we ended up doing that. And that's when he brought his father in. And I don't know about y'all, but to me, that is one of if if it's not my favorite interview that we did, it's it's 
a close second. Oh, yeah, you're I, great. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I enjoyed that interview immensely. They there was a great chemistry. Obviously, their father and son, great chemistry. Baird did a great job talking to both of them and have have the both chime in, and it was outstanding. Best part was come to find out, Jose is also a big Manchester United fan. Oh yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. It, yeah, and and yeah, we started talking sports. We were talking a little baseball, soccer. Um, it was it. it I was going to mention that part, Ben, because after the interview, there was definitely we 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 really were connecting with these guys. And Hochi, um, his father, you know, they were busy at that. It was a small booth. They had a very small booth. Um, they were busy, and um, uh, you know, it was like I said. I agree. I missed a little part of the interview because Jose Blanco came over <laughs> in the middle. Right. And, and he wanted to gossip a bit. No, no, it was, you know, it was, it wasn't that long. And, uh, you know, I suppose I could have went to Jose Blanco and, and made something happen, but Jose was busy with, with, with Fuente. So, you know, I, you know, it's, that's why I don't normally, I, I normally like to try to see if we can go, we go direct. Um, and hopefully our name that we have and our reputation is good enough for that. And this was, this was just a great example of the teamwork. I think that we had at the show here and Aaron, like I said, you just know it. That's Aaron knows the people in the industry here. Um, and, and it helped us enormously. And it created, like I said, it was one of my favorite. It was one of my favorite visits to the trade show. Um, and again, this is a brand that a lot of online media hasn't covered. I could say, I'll say this. They don't make it easy for online media to cover. I'm hoping now with uh, Jose, his son, you know, that will that will change. Well, yeah. In the- I think, I think, yeah, to that point, I think Jose recognizes the importance of media. I mean, just right. being the age, he's a younger guy. Um, right. And I think you're going to see more out of them from a media standpoint. And look, I think it's, what is it? Cigar journal. I think it's cigar journal. Uh, it's journal or snob. One of the two. I mean, they have every year they have two of their cigars in their top 25 every year. I mean, yeah. it, so they get, they get some of the kudos from, you know, the reviewers and the, and some of the publications, but yeah. I think they don't fill in the gaps, right? They, they've got the publication, they'll get some buzz and then they disappear for a little bit. There's no, the kind of that middleware of, of press release or whatever the case may be of getting them out front and center. And I, I don't think, um, I don't think Hochi speaks great English. Um, so from an interview standpoint, I don't know how he is on a, on a say a podcast or something you might do but his son does and and so i think you could probably get the two of them on again and i think that would be a great interview yeah, uh, yeah and, and, well I, oh, I think that's a great idea i think i think it's also like uh for i mean i i think when i was tell, when i was talking to hochi before we started rolling the camera i was telling him how much i really i really enjoyed his his interviews uh in the hand rolled doc the hand rolled documentary um, I thought I thought some of his his the the snippets that they did with Hoji was were some of the best parts of that documentary because I mean lo, like you know again like we said like La Galera you know it's not one of those those really like you know se- ultra sexy brands that a lot of a lot of the people in the media really cover um, but make no mistake like Hoji Blanco is a uh, a power broker Absolutely. in this industry. He is, he is an incredibly powerful figure in this industry. Um, and he, and a lot of people, he has relationships with a lot of folks. He gets, a, he has a lot of say in you know, what gets done and helping people. And he does some tremendous work um, in this industry. Uh, and to your point about his son, Jose Manuel, what I really enjoyed about that dynamic of that interview was, um, was the fact that uh, what Aaron was commenting on the 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 moment with that but equally so what i noticed um what i noticed was how much i mean again father and son right but how much respect not only that hochi commands but that he command that that his son still has you could tell it's 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 admiration it's not just it's not it's not just respect it's admiration for his father. And I think that's why the La Galera is in great hands with this next generation, because he's going to take the foundation that his father built and he is going to, I, I have no doubt that he's going to take it to new heights and it's all because of the way his father got everything started. Yeah. Yeah. I can't agree more with that. That's, that's a great point. 
you know. And I just thought of it. We had Jose, two Jose Blancos in the same booth at one time. Yeah, no, we did. We did. Was, <laughs> actually, we had three when the other Jose went over. So we had the, the father, son, and Jose, Jose, you know, the Jose we know. Yep. Yeah. So but uh, just the last comment. I'm moving to, on. To go back to the. Uh, to the original point that you were making coop i i really think uh this this there was like a five booth stint right there on that day where the entire team was firing on all cylinders man we were booking and moving day, and we that were was, moves that was day two right yeah yeah um, day two. Day two. yeah yeah we really hit i mean we'll get the placencia which was we did another, quesada they, oscar Valladeras, placencia and then La Galera. Yeah. Yeah. We had uh we had some big moments uh during the, that time. Um and I know Placentia, I want to talk about that story when we get to that. Because that that was an example of uh you know, we it was we always try to be respectful of business and uh, I think in all these cases we were. Um let's let's go to La Polina. Uh then we'll do one must go. Um so La Polina. A little bit of a challenge, okay? Uh, we had La Polina this year, but but this is a, this is again just opportunity, uh, right moment type of thing. So Clay, I have the relationship with La Polina uh, through Clay Roberts, great guy, um, and I've worked with him over the years to get to the La Polina booths. I do know Bill Paley. It's not like I don't know Bill Paley, but I'm usually like Bear will tell you I'm a chain of command guy, and I always work with my main contact who I'm interfacing with. But they had a little bit of a weird setup this year in that they had a second booth uh, for Cigar Lockdown, which is their their video broadcast they're doing. And Clay and Sammy Phillips, who were Bill's main operations guys, were over at that show this year. So it was very hard for me to get time with Clay. In fact, he already he had to postpone us and then we couldn't make it back. So we're on day two. We're at Matt Booth. Um, we're at the Matt Booth booth. And Matt's going through some antics, and um, <laughs> and I just kind of poke over into the uh, the La Polina booth, and, and I get to Bill. Uh, I just happen to get the Bill uh, at the right time. Bill walked me through the products. They got the those La Polina 125th anniversary jars, which I love. He's got the Kill Bill stuff, which I don't like the packaging on. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a, I'm a traditionalist. The, the Quentin Tarantino <laughs> thing didn't do it for me. Um, and then. I kind of gave the the wave, guys. I could get Bill right now. So, and you guys were about done with Booth. So we so we went over and uh, we did get. I think again, we were one of the few media brands that got Bill on camera. Uh, and uh, you know, like I said, Bill Bill's always good to us as far as that goes. I may not like the Quentin Tarantino packaging, but we've bear. We've always had good experience at the La Polina booths. We've never been blown off at the La Polina booths uh, ever. Oh. Well, I mean, Bill gave us a sit down four years ago, uh, or three years ago, rather. Yeah, three years ago. <laughs> it and, told Cigar uh, Dave. It told Cigar Dave to go go away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were sitting down with them, and and uh, Cigar Dave comes in. Wanting samples. Wanting samples. <laughs> hey, and, uh, no, this is the ultimate. This is the ultimate respect uh, uh, for Aaron. Aaron would have the ultimate respect for Cigar Dave. So Cigar Dave doesn't ask for the samples, man. He went behind a counter and just went underneath and grabbed some La Polina. Mm. straight up man wow wow <laughs> straight up power move <laughs> wow yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, but, but when he came in i said okay bear i think we're gonna get we're done like, we're, we're done. done yeah we're, we're done right it didn't happen so yeah because we've always had good access with bill um and like i said it's not that bill's a stranger to us he knows us um and i was just able to kind of make that happen with us uh so that that video should be up also by tomorrow so you're gonna see a bunch of stuff coming out the next uh couple of days and you'll see that one coming out pretty soon too gave me a hat any man that gives me a hat he's yeah you got the hat you, you i didn't even get the hat did you get the t-shirt no okay i didn't want the, the t-shirt i didn't want the t-shirt though i wanted that so uh he's like but, he's like if you're worried i'm like i'm a hat guy i'll but, absolutely wear it. you kidding yeah me? i now i'll say this and ben you could kind of comment on this la polina was much better with the media like six or seven years ago it, it, they haven't yeah. been as great with the media um, in recent years. I'm, but again, I'm not faulting that. I've had the relationship with Clay, so it's never been a problem. But I don't know. It's media just hasn't like they, they used to be all over social media is what I'm saying. They aren't as much anymore. 
Right. That was that was run by his daughter Courtney. Well, that wasn't his daughter, but it, but it was like it was uh, his daughter. I thought no. it was his daughter. No, it's not his daughter. No. Oh, well, anyway, she she was was always helped us out in Stuck Review. I've I've always been able to get Bill Paley, and she co- coordinated most of that. And I've known Clay from back in the you know AJ days, AJ Fernandez days. So I, I know him pretty well too. So I, yeah, they they did kind of take a little bit of a. Um, they kind of went away for a few years there. And I'm not really sure why. I think there was like a transition between all that. Well, I think it's but kind I, of an. Oh, I'm sorry, Ben. Finish your thought. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, that, I was kind of leading into that. What, what was your thoughts about? Well, I was I was thinking. You know, it, it's it kind of almost like the uh, uh, the Dion Illusione take. Like, I mean, let's be let's be honest about La Polina's like releases five six years ago. They were doing the black label, which was fucking amazing. The red label. You know, the Goldie series was really taking off. The Kill Bill comes into the market. They were doing a lot of cool, innovative stuff that were really great cigars, and it was really captivating the media media attention, uh, notoriety from, you know, from way up top, you know, the, the, the publications to, to online media as well. And in recent years, they've really kind of slowed that roll a little bit. And, you know, it's uh, – it, look, as much as, as, as much as that's the most hated question – that manufacturers and brand owners get what's new what's new and look we unfortunately with cover and with us being a a cigar news site that's what we're in the business of is reporting that too so we kind of by de facto by de facto kind of fall into that that groove as well uh even though we're we, we still love talking about the old stuff and we still love smoking the old stuff too but I think that's what that's what La Polina's kind of I won't say fall has been, but that's why they've plateaued in a lot of ways. It's just that they don't they don't have that anything like they're they're continuing to do little things here and there, but like they're playing chess now. They're not playing checkers. Yeah, that's kind of my metaphor. I'll, I'll say this again, like when I've had a call Clay or, or message Clay. Now, sometimes he's he's not the fastest to get back. This guy's on the road all the time. He's busy. This is not a fault on Clay, but he does get back to me at one point or another. Um, and actually, this year with the new releases, we broke the news on it this year. Uh, we were the first – Cigar Coop was the first media outlet to report on those new releases, the, the Kill Bill and the 125. So um, it was uh, – it was. I thought it was pretty cool. The other thing I'll just mention on this booth uh, before we kind of get into the next segment, uh, there were two Goldies released this year. One was a mm-hmm. uh, uh, Guido number one. And then one with the Prominente, and the Prominente was a trade show exclusive that they did have displayed. And the other one was Goldie available <laughs> to everybody, which I thought that was a pretty cool idea to do that, I thought. Um, they, I thought they could have maybe promoted that release a little earlier that they were doing that, but but it is what it was. I, I, you know, I thought that was pretty cool they did it. Yeah, that's always been my favorite line is the, is the Goldie line. I, I've Gold. always thought those those were amazing. I'm not I'm not a Kill Bill person. I, that's that cigar is not blended for me, for what I like. I appreciate it for what it is. It's it's an amazing cigar. Mister Sam was kind of in between for me as well. See, I'm but a Mister Sam those, guy. Yeah, it's, and that's common. That's what that's that's is. I just to me, I can take it or leave it kind of a thing. But the Goldie line to me was always something I look forward to when it came out every year. All the different sizes. I, that was to me. Usually, I would buy a box, right? And I have to say, the past you know few years, I I just have it. I, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, talk about Seth. Um, I mean, Seth and I kind of discovered the Goldie at the same time. It was kind of weird. Uh, we were both really into La Polina with the stuff they were doing at a Gray Cliff, and I just remember I think we both bought our Goldies like the same day. And I and Seth, that's I remember just messaging Seth. This is 2012. I'm like, this cigar is at another level? And he's like, yeah, he goes, this is the best thing I've smoked in a long time. And um, I think that original Goldie is, was that petite, that petite Lancero was the best. I mean, I think that was the best. It, it was hard to top that, but you know, they've, they've had some good ones. I mean, the Lancero they released was really good. The, the, the original Toro, I think the last few have been not as memorable, but uh, you know, like I said, this is a limited edition line that's 10 years old now. So it's been around a while. It's yeah, I think I still have I, I think I still have a box of the Petit Lanceros in my cabinet. Also, the other one that I really enjoyed actually, I I don't know if I can ever get the name right. It was the Laguita number five, which is like the Rebuto Extra. Yeah, I I, 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 that was yeah, I remember that one. 
Yeah, that was fantastic. I think I might have a box of those still in there too. I, I, I stockpile Goldie, so I, I I guarantee I probably got some in there. Yeah, they I have a fantastic. couple. I have a couple number twos. Uh, I had three. One wrapper cracked really bad because um, it is a fragile wrapper and a small cigar. It's not solo yes. at all. But I have two right. still left. Yeah. So yeah, and those boxes. I like how they did the boxes too, where they would have you know, it's not a not not really it's not a coffin, right? But it's it's sectioned off for each little cigar. But even even when they did that, I still would have damaged cigars in there because that th those were very that wrapper was very fragile. Kind of like and they had the the fan, fan tail caps on them too. Yeah, and a lot of times those fan tail caps would fall. Not like the not like the Cohiba M, which does come out of that same factory and does have a fragile wrapper. Just burning um, great, which is burning great, Coop. So, uh, you know, like I wrote in the review, I don't know what to make of it other than the cigars I had. I showed the cracks. Um, so in the review, but hey, look, that's that's what I said. It's a cigar I would definitely revisit. There's no doubt I'll go back and revisit that Cohiba, and it deserves to be revisited based on what I'm seeing. Um, but I only can review based on what I had. So, I understand, and I'll I'll, I'll just say I'll preference it with this. The Cigar Coop and the Smoky Syndicate reviews will be vastly different. And, and here's the thing. That's what we want. Um, like there is no, like, Ben, I think I told you right at the beginning, you have carte blanche. There's no holding back. You know, there's no, I'm not going to go in there and say, well, I really don't think that. It is what it is. That is what we're doing. And but that's what makes it fun. That's, that's what's making fun it fun. Part. That's what we want. Yeah. So, all right. Let's get into uh, – we're actually making progress on this list. We're not – as we're actually further down than you guys may think. So let's kind of get into um, the – of course, I, I blew the here. So we're going to get into our One Must Go segment, and it's sponsored by our friends at United Cigars. Um, of course, this computer just froze on me. That's United we smoke, but money must One must go. go. Brought to you by United Cigars, featuring La Gian Havana, distributors Jose Dominguez, Bandolero, Garofalo, and the highly acclaimed Atabay and Byron. And don't forget Abuelo. Buy United, Smoke United, Live United. Okay, guys, this is a different type of one must go tonight. Um, and uh, what I'm going to say is normally this is one that we say someone has to go like off the list forever. Um, this one is a little different that we're going to do, okay? Because this one is, um, I'm going to give four choices this week. You guys probably already saw it if you looked at the notes. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list four companies. And I want to say of the four companies, because these four companies, people talk, they weren't at the trade show this year. And people are talking about maybe someone comes back next year. But of these four companies, I want to know which do you think is the least likely to return to the trade show in 2022? And I think everyone could guess what the four companies are. Altidus, Davidoff, General, Slash Forged, and Drew Estate. You want to know which one's least likely to come? Least likely. Least that likely. You said least likely to come back. Okay. Least likely to come back. I, my answer may surprise everybody on this one. I, 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 it's changed in the last few weeks. I don't even want to say least. I won't even put the least likely line. They, I'm, I'm like they won't come back in 2022. My pick won't. Okay. okay. So I'm going to go first again because and and I've gone first on all of these and and after I've heard you guys. So for instance, <laughs> yeah. I said you know where you guys asked about uh, maybe where the trade show if it wasn't in Vegas where would it go and I was the dumbass that said new orleans and i got shut down because <laughs> but anyway. no that's okay there's no wrong answers all right okay. so the one that i'm i'm gonna stick to this one I, I feel pretty good about this pick the one that will not be there next year in my opinion hands down is davidoff i don't think that there's any shot that they come back to the show next year i think if if general comes back i think Altus will fall in line, and I think probably Drew Estate will, will as well. If I, had, I mean, just in theory, I don't think Davidoff will be there next year. Interesting. Okay, so I'm a little bit different. I think the the, the no way that's coming back is our good friends in Drew Estate. I don't see them coming back anytime soon, for many reasons. One is one we've kind of talked about. And this is just my personal beliefs and what I've I've seen, not not any kind of inside knowledge or whatever. 
But we did the show. We had Glenn Lou and Josh on there from CRA. And they were kind of talked about, you know, fighting for premium cigars. They were kind of like, well, we kind of had to give up on the flavor of cigars so we could make sure to protect the premium stuff, the premium, you know, natural cigars. They kind of said, well, we, you know, we had to kind of, they were the sacrificial lamb. How do you come back from that? You know what I'm saying? Like, that had to, if, if you're going to set off one company over that, it's going to be Drew Estate, right? So, I, I think that that's that's going to be a long term fix, and it's not going to be fixed anytime soon. Obviously, that's my thoughts. Good thought. So, I I think Aaron has an interesting take. You had an interesting take on something real quick when you said that you think General will potentially come back. It's maybe next year or some point, and Altidus will follow in line. I'm going to flip that. I think I think Altidus has the clearest direct line to return to the trade show. I don't know if that's in 2022 or beyond, but I think Altidus comes back first. I think General follows suit. I think it's the opposite, Aaron. Um, and, and and as far as that's concerned, um, and uh, and I I think I but I, I think the and I think the most likely to come back the the soonest is Altidus. I think Davidoff is kind of up in the air for me personally. Um, but yes, uh, Ben, you took the words right out of my mouth. Hands down, Drew Estate will not return to the trade show in 2022. That is a stone cold lead pipe lock. They will not be at the 2022 trade show. And um, and I, I predict that it'll be many years if they ever return at all. And I'll tell you why, uh, Ben, you had a great point, and I've made that point several times. I've made it on this show. I've made it on my own show. There is, after the sacrificial lamb that was offered up, um, there's, there's, there's just no way. I mean, that, there, there are other business differences that the big four have with the PCA. Um, that, by far, is the most polarizing and probably the most justified um, in my opinion, okay, that, you know, and I've said that before, they have the most justified reason for not supporting and be and, and not attending the PCA trade show. Um, but guys, here's the, here's the underlying factor with true estate. They don't need it. The engagement that they did with COVID, this freestyle lives, the work that Joe and Jack and on and all those guys are doing with branding and marketing and everything, they don't need it. They don't need the trade show at all, at all. Um, I mean, it is it is insane. Now, of course, we all want we, we we want all four of them back. We want we want us to be one big, happy, cohesive family. I want them back just as much as anybody else, uh, and I believe in supporting the PCA. So, you know, I mean, I'm I'm in disagreement with all four not attending um, because I think that we should all support the industry, but. Um, if any of them are justified, it's it's Drew Estate. So let uh, me ask you this, Bear, on that note about not needing to come, couldn't you make the argument the same with Davidoff? Yes. Um I, I think that's a fair point. Um y- yes. Uh, but I will say that if you look at I, I if you look at all four of them contextually. Um, the one that wins the engagement and marketing uh, battle, if you will, um, there is no, there is no, they're all battling for second place because Drew Estate wins that every yeah. single time. Yeah. Um, we've got, there's, we've got some great people over at Davidoff, um, you know, Lana and Eddie, and they do tremendous work at building that, building the brands. Uh, George, to be, I don't want to sell George short over at yeah. Camacho. He does a fantastic job as well. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah, if 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 you wanted to if you wanted to pit like an individual against the the monster that is the Drew Estate marketing machine, uh, man, I, give George Ramey a, a run for his money, man. George George is a George is a is a is a master of of marketing and hype, man. That dude is awesome. Um, but I think I, th- I still think they fall second to Drew Estate and. Drew Davidoff is a is a corporation. They have other things going on other than tobacco too. So I mean, they're they're a uh, they're still a family owned business, yes, but they have they have other luxury products and everything that 
um, you know, that's a part of their portfolio, if you will. Um, so I think that I, I think you have a good point, Aaron, but um, I, I, I still think that Drew Estate wins that battle every time. Let me let me kind of give my spin on this. Um, I think everyone's in the same. We're all thinking the same here. Like, I've got to put the two that are more likely. It's Altidus a general, right? And I remember Jay Davis, he said over under of one of these companies will be back next year. And I'm going to hold to that. I think that's a perfect over under we look at. But, okay, if you asked me back in November, when we had Dylan Austin on, Aaron Loomis and I had Dylan Austin on primetime 165. Um, I'll even go back further than that. Barry, remember the press conference after the press conference, uh, the Davidoff press conference two years ago? Talking oh, the Dylan. one where I had no feelings in my arms because I was yeah. holding up the iPad the whole time? Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> but remember the conversation with Dylan, right? And then if you heard the conversation on um, – you could tell there was storm waves two years ago, right? You heard him on 165. You say there's no way this company is coming back, okay? But I think there's a couple of things that can bring him back, okay? I think the first thing is uh, there's a little bit of a relationship with Michael Herklotz right now who is very supportive of the trade show. And I think there could be some influence there. I also think Avon Camacho could benefit from a trade show. Maybe, maybe the Davidoff uh, line doesn't as much because it's appointed merchants, but I think Davidoff, I mean, Avon Camacho, I think have always benefited from having a trade show. So I think there's a little bit of that. So mm -hmm. I've kind of leaned away and I've gone to the Drew state route, but Aaron, I'm not disagreeing with you on that. I think Davidoff's not very likely either to come back, but why I'm saying Drew state's probably the one is all the reasons you guys said there's the, there's the separation in terms of the direction with the flavored, which I think is a, or in the infused, I would say infused to be non-traditional cigars, non-traditional, non-traditional, I think it's better. And look, what they've done is they've taken their, their budget and they say, you know what, we're going to, our trade show, we're putting a lot into TPA and we're putting a lot into this consumer engagement model, which is the freestyle lives, um, and now DE 25. And I think that, and, and the barn smokers and, and bear, we saw a little bit of this at the barn smokers last year, the activation stations kind of now the barn smokers were starting to become mini trade shows. D 25, we know is going to be a mini trade show. We know mm -hmm. there's going to be media. Uh, the media is going to be doing work at this thing. It's not, we're not going to be just partying there. I can tell you that straight out. So I'm thinking at Drew Estate, if DE25 does what it wants, they're the least likely to come back. And right now, I'm going to put – I don't think they come back. I think they're the least likely. Maybe at some point down the road. Davidoff a close second, though. But I think there's some breaks with Davidoff, which we may start – I wouldn't have said Davidoff back in November. I would have said Davidoff hands down. Now, So, I'm, so I was going to say one of the things that I – agree with you on well i still think i don't think davidoff comes back well look i don't know if, i don't think any of the four i think one will come back i do okay well yeah i, I hope do. they I do. do i hope they do I, too but i i do think i i am agreeing with you that avo and camacho would would benefit greatly from a trade show yeah they got they they got people who weren't like eddie the eddie guerra is the georges who they really know how to kind of pop like they know how to move product you know they hadn't had a market product um you know so i think they 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 would know hey eddie hasn't done a trade show with davidoff yet however i wonder if davidoff's gonna do a guru state i still think davidoff's gonna go to drew estate route i think they're gonna try to do something at the golden bands if they bring the golden bands back to the u.s they're doing the golden bands in europe i think you're gonna start to see something with davidoff and i don't know that this, this is me speculating here so this is just what i think so I think it's very I, – I don't think we – if anyone if anyone comes back, it's going to be general all to this. And I think whoever comes back, the other one follows. I agree with you on that. I, I, I don't have a feeling one way or another who comes back first. All right. I'm moving on cigar-wise. I'm now smoking a Tatawai TAA 54th. Bad boy. <laughs> yep. And, and I've smoked – I've lit up my J.C. Newman double Robusto. This is definitely a bolder expression of the American. I'm sorry, J.C. Newman, American Double Robusto. This is definitely a bolder expression of, of the American. Uh, it's got a lot more kick to it. Um, I like the size. I like the size. I like the flavor. This is show sample. It's smoking. But actually, it really wasn't a show sample because they actually released this right before the show. They had it in time for the 4th of July. So this is a cigar I look forward to reviewing. Um, I don't know if it will be a number one again. Um, I, I still think I like the original blend a little better, but I'm only about an inch into this thing. So... But it's very good. I really do like it. I'll have to check that one out. 
uh, the American line wasn't something that wowed me like it did you. It's a polarizing. But, it's a polarizing line. Yeah. It. Yeah. It, I didn't hate it. I. I thought it was like it's okay. But that one I kind of intrigued about. I'll kind of want to check that out now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you, Ben. Um, I liked it. It didn't wow me. Um, smoke, I mean, smoke, smoke the, the double different double. sizes. I will. Smoke the, the sizes do smoke different. Um, and I'll say the one size I didn't care for in that line was the Robusto. I well, that's the only one I had. That's the one I had was the Robusto. Uh, well, yeah. what did I miss? What did I miss? What? These, these Which guys line don't care are we talking the, about? The American. Oh, okay. And I'd say the one size that I thought didn't do it for me was the Robusto size. And that's the only one I've had. I've that's only the had the Robusto. Yeah, I think the, the Torpedo, the, the Toro, and the Churchill are – much, much better than the Robusto I did not like. Okay, well, uh, Jay Davis, uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Yep. <laughs> we'll check that out. Yep, absolutely. He's got him. I would mm-hmm. assume he's got everything. Yeah, I have to give him a call and get some of these. I, I'm going to get them. Yeah, the uh, – no, the, I think – the no, I'm with you, Coop. The Robusto was probably my least favorite of the Americans. I yeah. did – I smoked a double Robusto the last show, and I thought that was – I thought it's that very, was terrific. It's very good. Like I said, I don't know if it's as good as the Toro or the Churchill in the regular line, but but this is a – this is a – this is a cigar – wow, I would, I would, I'd buy this again, and I'll see if it continues to smoke like this. It's something I consider a box of. So it's that good. Is it Cigar of the Year? I don't think it's going to be Cigar of the Year. But that's I'm only an inch into this thing, and I got this from the show. Keep that in mind. So um, this is not a, uh, a technical review by any means tonight. Okay, so let's get into back to the companies here. Um, and that was our one must-go segment sponsored by United Cigars. Um, okay, so this is – I'm going to lump all these together. Lost and Found, Caldwell, La Barba. We did not get to the booth because they packed up and went home. Yeah, um, I don't know if I wanted to go by there anyway. Well, we did because, and, and here's the thing, and this is, I felt bad for Bear. Bear had an award to give to Tony Bellotto, and we did not get a chance to give him that award, and I feel horrible we didn't because, you know, Bear has been looking forward to this, but had we known they were leaving, we would have, I know we would have adjusted the schedule to get over there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, La, we expected La to Barba's, see him. The La Barba line, they're, they're fantastic stars. Yeah. Tony Bellotto is a great guy. I, I love I him. I think he's doing the best stuff out of that Ventura factory next to maybe Adventura. I agree. I agree with that. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I think, yeah, a lot of the onus is on them, obviously, for packing up and leaving. But I mean, at the same time, like I, I still feel put, I still put a lot of blame on myself. You know, he, uh, Tony had my number one cigar of the year. I had an award to give him. I, you know, what in, in hindsight being 2020, I should have made him a higher priority, but you know, we had planned to go that day, um, you know, and, you know, you know, that's, that you know, that's I, I put that a little bit on me, but um, you know, I also put it on them for for packing up and leaving. If you're no, it's not on you. It was a team thing. We all, you know, we all screwed that up. You know, we should have got over there. We should have did the, all the awards the first day and to make sure that we got that. Yeah, so hindsight we'll know next year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we won't all have right, as many the... to give out too, so Coop won't Coop, Coop won't have to lug around Fort Knox, you know. In this yeah. Week. So uh, here's the thing, I, and I like Tony's stuff. Um, the Ricochet, at Barry, you were kind enough to send me a couple of your cigars of the year. Really enjoyed that one. That had a unique flavor to it. But what I'm going to say is, I, from a Caldwell standpoint, he was. Uh, he, he was almost like laughing about his presence there. I mean, if you went over to his booth, which you, it wasn't even a booth, it was a table with a sheet over it. And there was so much garbage and crap around it. Most of the time that it looked like an underpass in, in, in LA. I mean, it was absolutely like, almost like it was, he was mocking the, the establishment, if you will, or the, the, the code of what you're supposed to do at the booth. I mean, to me, it, it, it's like, why even do that? I mean, because it was just to kind of describe for the, for the audience a little bit. So they were in the, all the way in the back, basically towards the food court, which, which was in the very back of the exhibit hall. He was in the middle of nobody. So it was like this big area and there was just one single tabletop with the sheet over it. And basically, I think the second day he may have received some some product but day one he had no product there 
and it was just nothing. Like why, why even bother? You don't have signage. You don't have anything. You don't have product. And you just have a, a, a tabletop in which you're talking to some, probably some retailers and some people that, you know, so to me, it was like a non-factor. It wasn't even something that, that I crossed my mind of like, um, you can't even rate it as a poor booth. It was like non-existent. And to me, it was disappointing because I just think you can put a better foot forward than, than he did. To me, it's a little bit worse. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, to me, it was embarrassing. Ah, it was, yep. you know, I, it's, I don't know if it was, a, if it was a gag thing, like, uh, you know, I don't know. It, I don't know if it was, you know, it was just a show that he was trying to do or what. I mean, look, it's, it's not a sticker. I'm not a fan of Caldwell cigars, but that was just embarrassing. And, you and, know, and, and, you know, he posted later about, you know, thanks for like the, what, how, what, three retailers that showed up to the show or something like that. Or it was just all around. It was just he, a terrible showing. He, he didn't have enough staff to, to cover a lot of retailers. It's important to know. It was a minimal staff there, too. So you're not going to get like if there were 500 something retail outlets there, you're not going to get a lot of them because you didn't have enough staff to begin with. So it was understaffed. Here's the thing. I. I I know Robert Caldwell is, is capable of doing better, right? And I know he was trying to make a statement, and I know he was trying to get some publicity at work. But the Caldwell booths over the past few years has been it, – it was always one of the more beautiful booths that he had. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just the, it, you, you talk about – remember I talked about Fuente attention to detail? Caldwell's booths had a very good attention to detail, and there were different stations for the different products there. Um, and, you know, I remember how the Anastasia's with the Long of the Kings, it was, you know, he had, it, it was very artistic. So, it, and Tony's always, Tony's had a, Tony eventually he went into his own booth. He used to be part of them. His booth was a little more simplistic. I get it. Um, but this was just like, I, I was disappointed because I know what Robert's been capable of doing. Um, and then the other thing is the whole focus seems to be going to lost and found now. And not a not to these Bennett. You could say what you want about the Caldwell lines; that's subjective. But they look like premium cigar lines mostly, right? And, and look, um, Lost and Found. I think he's. I'll say this: I always give Robert credit for Lost and Found because he's been transparent on what it is. He's not master blending these things, right? He's. he's I mean, he, donates all proceeds to his charity too. With he, a lot so. of charity, you got to remember that piece too. Um, but it is. It, it'll tell. It's very gimmicky. It's 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 look, I think Robert started this whole craze with the with the with, with everyone started doing this after Ro Robert. He wasn't the first, but he made it popular. Um, but so I understand Lost and Found has probably become more of a bread and butter for them. Um, I don't know if these new releases were charity releases, though. I think these were offered to retailers, the ones that like the ones they brought back and they put them in boxes at least this time. But I was disappointed is what I'm just saying. But um you know, that's just me. I, I would have liked, I know Robert's capable of doing so much more. Well, knowing, knowing Robert, like I do, and I have a very, uh, I have a very funny story um, about how well I don't know him. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll share it at a different time, but yeah. <laughs> what I do know about what I do know about Robert, your uh, Ben is you're a hundred percent, right? This, this wasn't, this was intentional. This, this was a gag. This was, this was Robert being Robert, you know, he does it. It's, it, it's a bit, and he does, he always does things to make a statement. He's never, he's never been status quo. He's never been, a, he's never apologized for it. I'm not being an, and I'm not being an apologist for him now. I, I, I agree with Coop. Uh, he's capable of so much more. Um, I really loved his booth last uh, two years ago. Uh, it kind of had this, this look of a, almost kind of like a, a safari, if you will, like these crates and yeah. very like this very kind of detail, attention to yeah, detail was put in that booth. The pr presentation of product was excellent. And, um, and, you know, he, he, he look, he's done uh, with the, this is 2.0 of Caldwell. What he's done with 2.0, um, you know, has been a, you know, has been a, pr you know, pretty good run with it and the partnerships that he's cultivated and created with like Tony and at first with Matt and he works with AJ as well as uh, Henderson Ventura. And, you know, he's, he's, he's working with really good people, really good people. Yeah. Um, and um, 
but yeah, I, I agree. Like this was a, this was a disappointment for sure. Um, just because like Coop said, I know he's capable of so much more. And when you, when you see, when you see what people are capable of and they, when they, when they falter or take a step back and they kind of let you down, it, it, it becomes a little bit more disappointing, but. Um, right. You know, and the funny thing is, Ben, I know you said you didn't like Caldwell cigars. The funny thing is Robert will tell you he doesn't like half the blends he comes out with, right? He's come out with too. He's actually been pretty transparent on that. Uh, again, I think he's trying to create things for the market and stuff. But like I said, um, he has had some good cigars. I mean, it's not like he hasn't, he's had some uh, very good cigars. So, and, and just, so artistic. I mean, with some of the stuff, I mean, you know, I just love the, remember the Anastasia, I mean, the Anastasia release to me, that was an Ernesto. He did that with Ernesto. Yeah. That was um, a great, that's that a great was, cigar. Yeah. And just, you know, the artwork and stuff. So it's this, a, you know, look, I don't like, I look, I, I really, I didn't like what he did with the booths. I didn't, I liked less that they packed up and went home because, and, and look, Robert and I had, had a conversation offline on this. And, and when I said to him, was uh hey you know we had an award to give tony his words were like back to me it was oh shit like you know like he you know um you know i said you know we would have we would have worked that schedule to make sure we had that but we assumed everyone was going to be there at least for four days the four days um, so well, i'll ask i'll ask you this so i mean i said my piece counted to three about right. this but well i want to know if y'all think it was this was a gag or a show what was the point that's what Thank I was you. Gonna, exactly. Uh, Everyone was talking about Caldwell after the show. Yeah, but in a negative light. No, no such thing as bad press, Ben. I, yeah, but I, I, okay. I agree. I, I know there's retailers that said to me, I ain't going back to bring it in after that. So I agree with Ben on that point. I, I agree no. with Bear. No press is, is bad press is still press, but in this case, still people who say, I'm not bringing it. I, I think we also know that this is a very forgiving industry and no one ever holds to that. Right. Maybe well, one or two retailers. I know. And but. The, I mean, the people, I mean, yeah, like <laughs> maybe one or two, I think we'll do it, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, so uh, let's, let's ask, let's answer the question that Sean miles has posted in the chat. I think, I think it's, I think we've kind of sort of answered it already in, in various points, but let's go ahead and answer it directly. So Sean miles asked us, would you say that what he did was borderline disrespectful? Yes. Yes. There's yes. no doubt. There's no doubt. You didn't have to go to the trade show. There's other uh, things you could have did to make us uh, get attention. This that's, was, well, that, that's what I, 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 I don't probably didn't convey that to you. So Sean, it's a great question. And I would say absolutely. And, and what I, maybe I used the term mocking or, to, but it, it was absolutely disrespectful because to me, you know, people are taking time uh, away from either their shop or from their second job, whatever it may be, they're there to, uh, get benefit from the self and you owe respect to the industry. You owe respect to the people that are attending. And to me, the whole thing was disrespectful. So it's not the first time there's been Caldwell's had controversy at the show. Uh, ben and Barry, do you remember the, the Mombacho uh, college prank wars that were going on? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then that went over the top a little when, when he completely, what did he silly string the uh, Mombacho? Oh, toilet, you toilet paper did. Toilet man. paper, yeah, that was a little, that crossed the line, I thought. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, and so I'll, I'll answer it too. So I, I the, the 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 disrespect. Listen, if if you want to show up with a minimalist booth, could it have looked a lot more attractive? I agree with you, Aaron. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Do I think that was disrespectful? No. I what I think was disrespectful was the manner in which they left they packed up early and they they left a they left trash yeah they, i mean it was trash and it was, if they it left was trash, very, you know what if, you, if it was an accident say hey look we're sorry that shouldn't have happened like, but it was very much intentional like it, they, but there they, was no they, apology for that exactly yeah and um because i mean listen it, it's no secret uh well i don't know if it's a secret or not but it shouldn't be like i'm not the tidiest person in the world no um, but no. um but um that being said like the night before we left the, the Airbnb, like I packed up my room and I went over it three or four times, making sure that I didn't leave anything. Cause um, you know, that was out of respect to not only my roommates, but to Aaron Loomis, especially because it was his name on the, on the, on the rental. So yeah. <laughs> I and, wasn't going to do anything and, and, like and that. And he got a good, re he got a good review from the owner. So that was good. Good. So, yeah. Fantastic. He did, yeah. He did. So uh, I saw the review. So, so yeah, I mean, that's what we normally do. I mean, that makes, like I said, if, if he had just left and then that garbage left behind, first thing I say, you know what? I'm sorry. That shouldn't have happened. 
my bad, and that won't happen again. This wouldn't even been talked about. This would be okay. You know, you made good on it. You know, you, but I don't leaving early parts of second another piece entirely. But but I think, but it was there was not an apology done for that. That's what I'm kind of getting at. All right, we beat this one to death. Let's go to Oliva. Um, gr- best experience I have had at the Oliva booth. Uh, there was a lot of new Oliva product this year. You know, some millennial line extensions, the advent calendar, the 135th anniversary Limitada. Um, very, it was, I don't remember that much Oliva product ever. Um, and no. another one where Bear, you used your connection with Paul. Yeah. And we got to Ian. And uh, they were great to us at the booth. Again, another booth. This has been a tougher booth that they don't really, they haven't communicated with online media very well. Uh, we kind of had to use our resources here. And uh, again, we found a very, I didn't feel like we were rushed or anything. And they were, they were very yeah. engaging with us. And I thought it was a great experience. It was a smaller Oliva booth. By the way, that was a much smaller Oliva booth than I ever remember too. I mean, Ben, you remember some of those huge Oliva booths they had. Yeah, that, that's what struck me when I walked in there was, um, oh, so Oliva to me was one of the, the cigar companies that I smoked way back in the day. Yeah. So I have a soft spot for Oliva, really yeah. do. And I've always been able to go in there and I've gotten, you know, I've gotten my videos and stuff. And usually what I would do is like what we did this time, I'd go to my rep, the Southeast rep, you know, Jonathan Nelson. I would ask him like, hey, I need to do this, you know, booth review, booth interview. You know, can you hook me up with somebody that's going to do it? And I, it always happens. And you know, this year, you know, we had Paul Costo that did it. He's an amazing rep. He's awesome. Yep, yep absolutely. You know, they, they, have, they have great people. That yeah. whole, that company from top to bottom. They do. has got great people. I love, I love Oliva. And they, they did, they had, they took, you know, great care with us. And, you know, it was a great interview. That's coming up soon. I finished that video today. Yep, I saw that. Um, so I, that one I'm always look forward to. Like I said, I have a soft spot for Oliva stuff. Yeah, I, 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 I just love I just product. love their lines. Yeah, I do too. Consistent, so, yeah. So what I will say too is, and I, I mentioned this, I think, in passing on the last show, what I thought Oliva did very well was it, it goes back to the idea that just because you don't have a bunch of new cigars out doesn't mean you can't have facings and you can't put on a good display of yep. your product. Yep. And Oliva was top notch. I mean, from, you know, look, is the, is the Melanio something new? Is the V? No, but guess what? They had it on display and it, if I'm a retailer, I like that. I like to be able to see the product. And even if, if, if I'm bringing it in on a, on a reoccurring basis, great and they did a good job of putting their best foot forward with what they have t- uh, available so i thought from uh just the reception we got to their presentation was top rate yeah it was a little smaller because i got my you know my uh rep back well my rep now was paul Casso, but you know back home in in the southeast a lot of the a lot of the people that were there, the reps were mostly for the West Coast. Yeah. So they only had like half their sales force there, which I thought was unique. Um, kind of kind of different, but it worked. And their booth was just as beautiful as it always is, even though it was a little bit smaller. You know, it was great. It was a it was a fine booth, I thought, you know. And like I said, like I literally have a large desktop humidor in my office that literally the only thing in that thing is Siri B's. That's Siri B and Melania, that, that's the whole thing is just full of that. Yeah, you know. So, and, and Aaron's got a good point about you. If you you don't you don't have to have something new every time. That's fine. Your your stuff selling great now. It's one of the yep. top selling cigars in the world, and they had a beautiful a, a beautiful display of all their stuff. You know that was available to everybody to see, and it's not like people don't already know pretty much everything about their lines already because they've yep. been around forever. But it was beautiful. They still had it set up great. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I'm excited about trying, you know, that getting that advent calendar. I'm really excited. Cause I love the, I know the cigars that are in there are great. It's going to be a fun thing to do. And the 135th, I'm, I'm really excited about. So I've been, you know, it was exciting. Like, you know, you have all these tried and, and they don't leave it in general as a company that doesn't come out with new releases every year. They, 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 they're like every three or four years normally. 
So this was, but this was, like I said, this was, I thought it was pretty exciting. The other thing I'll say is, you know, they were bought out by Jay Cortez in Europe. And I, they really haven't missed a beat, in my opinion. I think they still have the consistency of their products. I, I haven't heard anyone say, you know what? Those Siri Vs suck right now. When it was Millennial suck, you don't hear that. Um, they turn at the retailers. When you get them, they're, they're quality smokes. Maybe, they, maybe you don't like that smoke. But I'll say this, they're as consistent as they were four or five years ago. Well, I'll, I have a little story about that. I'll say, so, before Ben goes, I'll say I agree with all of that, except for the Oliva V uh, Maduro. Okay, I, I understand that, yeah. Like I said, not every cigar is with your cup. You think the Maduro, yeah, but the Maduro is because of the sizes. I think they released was the problem. Mm, okay. okay, sorry, Ben. Well, uh, yeah, the, the, but see, the Maduro to me, it used to be a special cigar. It would only come out like during Christmas. Came out in like a what a ten count box or something. Yeah. It was like it was special. Now it's it's not special. Now well, they made it. Re- they made it regular. They finally just moved it in. I right. think it was. I think the series had kind of expired. They had some the early releases of those were using different blends too, and then they went to this one blend, which is a good blend. But those old broadleaf ones were great. These are the San Andreas ones, right? Yeah, now. They're, they're, they're not I agree. Good. Yeah, the broad the broadleafs were better. I we, we had some great shows on Stogie Geeks with those broadleafs, epic broadleafs. Yeah. yeah. So my story about is about Jay Cortez. Now, whenever Drew Estate and Royal Agio had their partnership, they they brought us over to Europe to basically tour their their headquarters and show us how they how they made the cigars there, the machine made stuff and the premium tobacco they use and all that. Anyway, the the back end of that trip, we, they all took we all went to Inner Tobacco, which is the European version of the PCA show, but it's like much more it's just huge it's much bigger much much bigger it's totally different vibe and atmosphere like there everybody's dressed in suits the women are dressed in almost like ball gowns and it's like if there's music there it's like a concert pianist that's sitting there playing it's it's totally different right so we're actually we're there walking around doing some different interviews and stuff and we actually go back to the drew estate booth and we're doing the uh the pairing videos that they would do with the beer, they would pair a beer with um, with a, one of the Drew Estate cigars. And while we were sitting down to do that, because they had Brian Hewitt now, because Brian Hewitt, and people don't know, it was with the Stucker Review. He he's a big time beer guy. He actually is a host on uh, Beer Guys uh, Radio. Yeah, that's syndicated throughout on on FM radio all over. Um, so they they were sitting. They got us to sit down and do the beer. And I'm a I'm not a beer guy. So I'm just your ordinary, I don't know beers. I, I'm not a big beer guy at all. I don't, so I was kind of the guy that was sitting there like your everyday dude. And anyway, we didn't have glasses, right? So I look over across from us and there was this huge, massive booth. One of the biggest cigar booths I've ever seen was Jay Cortez. I've never heard of them in my life, right? So, but they had a huge bar, like a legit, like big, massive bar there with a bartender and everything. So, so let me go over there. I'll ask you if I can borrow some glasses and, you know, so we could do our do the video. So I walk over there, and the bar as I'm walking, the bartender leaves. I'm like, oh, crap. So I just got to stand by the bar, wait for him to come back. And this guy walks up, and it happened to be the owner of Jay Cortez. Fred? Yes. Yeah. And I didn't know at the time. I didn't know I didn't know who he was or nothing. He was like, oh, can I help you? And I'm like, yeah, I was wanting to know, can I borrow a couple of glasses and all this? So, yeah, here, no problem. Let's do some. Do you need any beers? Do you need anything to do it? I'm like, no, we got the beer over there. You know, I appreciate it. I'll bring them right back. You know, we'll go back, do that. I bring the glasses back. And he starts talking to me about, you know, what we're doing, who we are, you know, stuff like that. And he starts going on and talking. We're start talking about, you know, what the CRA does. And, and uh, you know, at the time, IPCPR was doing with, uh, with all the legislative stuff. He was talking about he was trying to do the same thing in Europe. He says in Europe, it's all, it's all, you know, piecemeal work, right? So you have people fighting for the, the cigars in France and in Germany and Belgium and Holland and in England and all that. They're all, they're, but they're not together. They said one of his things was he wanted to come together and create like a European Union version of the CRA, you know, and, and fight for cigar rights in all of Europe. But I, he just oppressed the hell out of me, you know? And I didn't know until I actually got back home that that, that was the head guy, that was the man. You know, he handed me these little tubos, little, little J. Cortez Coronas, and they were fantastic. Yeah, so, I had some of those cigars, actually. Yeah, they're really good. Fast forward, they I, I saw the news where they actually bought Oliva, and I, I'd 
dude, I was that was the one time I was like, cool. Yeah. Hey, I don't I don't think they're gonna skip a beat. Actually, I don't think this will help them. This is gonna be awesome. This will be a great, you know, not really a partnership because they bought them out, but I think this would be a, a great, you know, merger or whatever you want to call it. Like I thought this is this is great news. This is not something like, oh my god, what's gonna happen now with right. all the blends? We're gonna lose the, the series V or whatever, the O or whatever. I thought, no, this is this is outstanding. This is great news. So yeah, that's a that's a great I kind of wish we would see Jake Ortiz up here now. Yeah. I, was, I, I was hoping. Yeah, I mean they pretty much got a turnkey operation with Oliva and they didn't they kind of just didn't mess with it too much. They they did some oh. factory expansion, so they infused some capital in there, obviously. Uh, and they were able to, you know, expand the Oliva factories. And I think it was uh, a win win. They brought uh, Corey Bapperts now their CEO, and he's a really good guy um, leading the company. So I think, you know, I think it's it's been a very good people. I think that's one transition. People don't give enough credit for what they've done. Um, I think that was one of the, you know, and I know you mentioned Bear, the, the Serie V uh, Maduro's before the acquisition that had already started to change is what i'm saying so oh i'm not blaming that on jay cortez at all but i agree with you they weren't what they were in 2008 to 2010 no listen like if that's their only deviation off their level of that's not bad that's not not that's not a bad thing so um no i'll i'll say this um i i I agree with everyone's sentiments on it like that like you said i think i i think they're you know, with with maybe a, an exception to Drew Estate, but I think Drew Estate actually caught a little bit more negative press on the Swisher acquisition. Uh, the Jay Cortez really wasn't as really wasn't there wasn't negative there wasn't negative feedback on it. It didn't really it really didn't hit as hard. And the cigars have uh, maintained their level of excellence. They're perennial top ten in cigar aficionado, there because of their consistency. And you know that Milano, you know everyone kind of argues like every year is how come a Milano in the top ten every year? Well, it's because it's the Milano is. It's consistent. Melania. Look, the year it came out, it made my list. So it's not like it was a bad cigar. Um, it kind of just maybe it got number one a little later than it should have. You know, that's kind of the, the, the but it, you're right. It's consistent. Um, and if you like that blend, you know, it's going to be the same cigar that you got each and every time. Yeah. And I will say this, too, um, kind of anecdotal. It's um, everybody knows I don't like I don't like the big ring gauge cigars. Right. But there's one line in Oliva that I don't really care for, and that's a reserve Connecticut. I, I, I just it's just not my solid Connecticut that I like, right? But our old Oliva rep, Alan Bolivis, he's now as a rep in Florida near the Tampa area. He, I remember one day we were having an Oliva event. It was actually the humidor that I have all the Serie V in. I actually won it at this event. This is before I d- was doing any kind of media stuff. So because now I, I take myself out of any raffles when I got at cigar shops. But um, he was always like, yeah, you got to try the double Toro. Try the double Toro. I'm like, dude, I hate six by six. He's like, I'm telling you, I try the double Toro. It was on me the whole event. So I'm like, okay, damn it. Shut up. I'll go get one. That double Toro is fantastic. That six by six is unbelievably good. It's so, it's, you you know, we always talk about there's a sweet spot usually in the line, right? One size is always better. That double Toro man smokes the rest of them. No pun intended. It is, it is such a. It has more flavor. It's a lot creamier. It just has a better, a longer finish to me. I, I don't know. It's fantastic. So I was gonna say, if anybody is not a fan of the Reserve Connecticut, try the double Toro. Even if you don't like six by sixties, it's fantastic. I haven't smoked it. I gotta be honest with you, because I'm kind of the same way as you. Not a bad Connecticut, but there's other ones I'll reach for, and there's other Olivas I'll reach for. So yeah, exactly. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. So I got to give that a try. If you're telling me that, yeah, it's it's totally totally different. It's almost like it's not even the same blend. I don't know. Yeah. There's something about it. Yeah. It's fantastic. All right, let's go on to Oscar Valadares. Uh, new release he had was the McFly. Um, I uh, I actually smoked my McFly. It's, it's a it was a bolder cigar than I expected. Um. Packaging wasn't finalized on it. I think it's going to be more holographic, he was telling me. But really cool release. Um, and, uh, yeah, I know we know the Oscar folks. I know Aaron and I at least know the Oscar. I think we, we all know someone in there. Uh, great to us in the booth. Uh, they always have a good – that's about the size booth they've always worked with. They've never had a massive booth. Uh, maybe it was a little smaller this year. But, but uh, 
you know, I think they, they, they always do a solid job at the trade show. They always go in and have a nice presentation. Yep. So I've known Oscar now for about four years. He does an annual event at one of the shops I go to for the shop owner's birthday every year. So I've gotten to know Oscar over the years. Um, I, the only way I know how to talk to him is via Instagram, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Um, he was one of the first guys I saw for the, at the uh, pre-show event on that uh, Friday night. Um, such a good guy. Um, you know, very generous. Um, he, uh, he, th- their booth was jammed uh, it, for the first couple of days, first three, yeah. four, every time I went by there, that's that, that, uh, booth was super crowded. Now, what I will say, um, I don't know if people are fans of the super fly. I wasn't a huge fan of it. I think the, the McFly is decent. Um, to me, I think he, I don't know. He did something so unique with, with the leaf piece um, as part of what he was putting out that I like the Oscar stuff and I'm a huge, still a big fan of, of some of the older stuff that he put out. And the reason I like it so much is because it's unique. Like now it might not be for everybody. I get that. And a lot of people don't like some of the stuff maybe, but it was unique. It was unique packaging. Um, to me, I, I, it's a little bit unfortunate he's deviated from that a little bit um, because I think that separated himself in the industry, both on, on flavor profile and packaging. But uh, as far as how we were treated, the booth set up, um, how he, um, you know, one of his reps, Armando's actually going to one of my dad's shows this week. So Armando, I, I sent you guys the picture of the, the box that he designed or he put on um that has the cheap trick logo on it so had a connection there and um no i think overall i thought oscar had a a a good show and and kind of what i expected coming out of that booth and he's got and of of what i'll say is it kind of goes back to that leaf line he has got at least in in my in our area in my area in chicago he's got a devout following as far as repeat purchases and people that love his stuff Charlotte too. Charlotte is uh, he's very pop. He's got two stores that do a lot of business with him in Charlotte. The one thing about the leaf thing, Aaron, that, you, that is kind of a little confusing. That's actually Jim Robinson's yep. brand yep. made by Oscar. So yep. think of it as like uh, Oscar being my father and Jim being Tatawahe. It's kind right. of that type of relationship, but Oscar distributes it, which kind of gets a little tricky. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I do the relate, but I, I think, um, it, more so than the, the relationship, I, I think from that cigar flavor profile is far different than anything that he's put out since. It's, yeah. it's, it's not it, he, it's not even the same. But he's wildly popular in Charlotte. I mean, and look, there's some releases I like better than others. And in some of those releases, uh, the Ciceron is, is wildly popular here. The Alta Q's, um, wildly popular. The Superflies. I mean, I know that Tailored Smoke, my local shop, they actually got for their locker members, they had an early release of the McFly's made available for them because they have a lounge. The Oscar Valadares lounge is a tailored smoke in Concord. So, I mean, Oscar's got an enormous, I think I sent you guys those custom scissorons. Yeah. Which is, mm-hmm. the, that's the owner of tailored smoke. Preston Gray was on that. So the, he, they did, they did that for him. Um, so it's a, uh, it's a, they are incredible, like, incredibly popular in Charlotte as well as what I'll say. So, so we were talking about Gurkha earlier, right? And we were talking about how they the, those the flashy packaging with the cigars that didn't necessarily back it up, right? Mm-hmm. Oscar's the opposite of that. So Oscar, think- Oscar, Oscar's packaging is incredible, incredibly unique. It's it's flashy at times. Sometimes it's simplistic, but it's always it's all he always puts his signature on it in a in a no, and it's. It's all, and then the cigars back it up. I mean, look. I mean, look at the Wild Hunter, man. That that camo dressed box that has that camo material yeah. on it. The the cigar itself is rustic and camo esque, but the cigars the cigars solid. Um, the Superfly. Um, I know Aaron, you weren't a fan of it. I know it was sho- it shocked Coop that it wasn't on my top ten list, and the only reason why it wasn't. Um, you know, part of my major criteria is uh, availability. Got to repeat smoke it, and I couldn't get it because it's that popular. 
So, I mean, that's the reason why, I mean, candidly, yeah. that's the reason why it wasn't in my top 10. It's not because it wasn't a great cigar and I didn't think highly of it. It just, I couldn't get it. I can't get, I still can't get a hold of it, uh, in, in, in great quantity. Um, and, but, uh, uh, no, listen, Oscar, uh, Oscar's always had my respect. He, and I love his products. Um, and I mean, like you said, his take on the leaf by Oscar, even that's different than everyone else's. I mean, the leaf by Esteban, the leaf by Omar, the leaf by James, they all look the same. It's just their name is on it. Well, Oscar, that's not good enough. He wraps them in tobacco leaves, you know, like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. do my Oscar Valladares thing. And he did it. You know, it's, I, have that, I think I sent, I think it's on the, uh, the, la the iPad, um, a very cool photo where I, I snapped, uh, where Rocky was in the Oscar booth and those two were talking, which is kind of, a, I'll have to look for that one. I, I think it, I do remember that cool look, moment. Oscar, Oscar's becoming a power broker in, in Honduras. You talk about a power. He is a, you know, he's got a factory. Um, I think his factory is at capacity for his stuff right now. I wouldn't be surprised if it, it expands at some point, but he's bought a lot of farms and now he's brokering tobacco to a lot of companies. Um, well, he, he told me in an interview a couple years ago, like he had, it was crazy that people were going for tobacco. He said like he, an entire crop, an entire crop was sold before it was even harvested. Yeah. I, I remember that. I remember that was, I think, uh, yeah, I remember that very well. I think I was at the first trade show we did. Um, so yeah, he's doing a lot of stuff right now. Um, he's got good marketing too. I mean, he's got connections, uh, in the sports industry. If you remember when the Astros won the world series, um, the Oscar folks were there. Um, I mean, they're mm -hmm. based in Houston in the U S um, that helps, but they have, uh, Oscar's got connections with like one of the bigger, uh, I want to say sports agent guys. And he got the Oscar cigars to them and they were in the parade as well. Um, Oscar showed me pictures from the parade. I thought it was really cool. So he's got some big time marketing he's doing as well. Um, so I think this is a guy Then I'm looking in the 2020 decade. This is a guy to really watch. Yeah, I agree. Uh, when you have all these ingredients going, um, and like I said, I think his blends are going to even get better. So, see this. So this one's a little unique for me because I have never, like, I love the leaf by Oscar, I, and I like the you know the uh, the Oscar. That, yeah, the that Oscar Abano is money. That fucking yeah, is incredible. And, and yeah, I 100 percent agree. And but the 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 2012, I did not like any of those. Those were not good. To you didn't like the barber pool. I didn't like the Lancero, but I liked the Toro. Oh, uh, I, thought the, I thought the Lancero was was not as good as the Toro. But the Toro, look, that was an exclusive to uh, the cigar shop in in Charlotte for a year. I think it broke records how many barber poles they sold. Well, I mean, I've never had that barber pole. The barber pole's money, dude. Yeah, the barber pole's money. It's it's really a a good candela barber pole. It really, I, I guess that you guys well, might like the Lancero, but I would recommend the Toro in that one. No, I like the what Toro. I was gonna, what I was going to say about it was that after our interview, and like I didn't, I didn't try the Superfly because it looked kind of weird. Like, okay, the Superfly, it, it just, I don't know, it, I, I didn't care for the, care for it, the way it looked and the name and all that. So I kind of, I kind of didn't want to try. Like, so in Florida, we had, the best broker of the business, Jeff Gruber, he, he's, he's, he has Oscar Valadares. So every time he would come visit, of course, I would go and, you know, go through his car stock and liberate a couple of things that I could. And, you know, he always had the super fly, but I would never grab it because it's kind of weird, right? I, I just didn't care for it. But we went did that interview. I was like, wow, man, I need, I need to go back. And I got to check out some of these lines. And what really did it was, I guess, because maybe I was an 80s kid, the McFly, with the fact that the future, that was just cool as hell to me. And I was like, this is going to be cool. Like, I, I wanted to try it just because of because of that. So it was like the opposite of Superfly, right? So I want I, I have a sample that I haven't tried it yet. I actually brought it with me to New Mexico, but I didn't get up, end up smoking it. So I still have it. But that, he impressed the hell out of me. I have to say, that was pretty freaking. I was a, and I, I interviewed him before. I, we haven't ever got gotten able to go and talk to them at the booth at Sugar Review. So this is the first time dealing with them and talking to him. And I have to say, I was pretty impressed. It's uh, kind of got, you know, want me to want to go try more stuff, Yeah, to be honest. And, he gave Jeff, us a lot of time in a busy booth. He gave us some, you know, he didn't blow us off by any means. Does no. Jeff Gruber sell magic too? Yes, he does. 
Jeff Jeff Gruber is a he is he's a magician. He, he, but, he might be the best. I, ben, he's the best in the business of the brokers right now. One hundred percent. I hope he's not. Wa- I hope he's not watching it because I don't want this to go to his head. Yeah, he, but um, he is well, the best. I I I agree. Um, I agree on him on that. Jeff right, Gruber, magic yeah, man. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he, but him and the Terrence Raleigh thing is a little bit creepy. It is so. But ter- yeah, I, that was a little creepy. I agree. <laughs> but uh, inside inside joke with the cigar people, I guess. Yep. All right, let's go to Oveja Negra Brands. Uh, that's Black Label Trading Company, Black Orc Studio, Emilio, and Dissident. Um, they had a lot of product this year. Um, they showed off. Um, all those. Uh, the only one who didn't have new product was Dissident, uh, which I thought was interesting because Ben took the approach that he released the rant, rave, and tirade last year, but this was his first trade show to kind of really put it out there. And kind of share it with people. And I thought that was a great strategy. Um, busy boost for the first couple of days. I think it did tail off a bit the second couple of days, I've noticed. Um, but it was fun. We gave James three awards that day. which He, was clean, cool. he cleaned house. He cleaned yeah. house. Uh, he always gives us a lot of time, at least from the Coop standpoint, over the years. Um, so uh, I thought, you know, I saw the Hive, that Hive sampler. I'm like... Uh, you know, I got to get that was like first. Yeah, I got to buy one of those. I want to have one of those. Um, I smoked the uh, porcelain Robusto that I managed to snag that they gave me. Excellent. Excellent cigar. Um, you know, they have uh, they have that Papa Joe from Emilio in the new size. That's kind of a cult cigar. They really haven't promoted it a lot. I thought it was great. I thought it's a great boost. Same boost as 2019. So they just... Uh, so it's not a small booth by any means. And I love the layout, how they had each of the stations, the four brands in each of the corners of the booth. So I think yep. it was just well done. I thought great booth. I 100% agree on the traffic comment, Coop. I mean, the first couple of days it was slammed. And then I remember you and I looked over at one point. It was like all the reps were on their phones and everything because there was nobody in there. But uh, James they, brought what they, a, what a, they'd got to everybody. <laughs> yeah. What a yeah. what a. Uh, a cool persona, right? I mean, just when you look at James, I mean, he's just a cool looking dude. Um, I think, you know, I, I love what he does in the concept of, of black works and, and how he lays out that brand. Um, we've talked about, I think what, what he puts out is, is right up my, my flavor, flavor profile and the new Bishop's blend. Um, I, I purchased some of those a couple months ago. I think that cigar is outstanding. So, that's the best um, work he's done, yeah. That Bishop's yeah. Blend is, is – uh, that's the best work. And I like it's once a year, too. So it's not, I do, too. Yep. Yeah, I do, too. And I like the Vitola that came out. I mean, so I, I can't really elaborate too much more other than um, big fan of, of, of their work. And, and just I love the way that he goes about his business and, and what he puts out. I think it's very thoughtful and – you know, he, he sticks to who he is and what he's about. And I think that uh, goes a long way. True artesian stuff he does. I mean, yeah. he's really art. I mean, he just, you can see he loves doing this stuff. He will tell you he's very hands on with the blending, too. Um, so he yeah, really spends I've a seen, lot of time I've, in the factory. I've seen some interviews with him, and you, you can tell he's super hands on. I mean, yeah. he's, I think, does he live in Nicaragua? Yes. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. So yeah. he's very uh, hands on. N- never a problem. I, I, when I've called him saying, hey, can you do this, sh- like the, the virtual trade shows will come on the show. We, we always get them. Uh, the day we were at the booth, it was very busy, and he gave us a lot of time as well there. So he did. Uh, we could he could have easily said come back on day three. He didn't. Um, they made time for us, and uh, it was a great interview you guys did as well. I know uh, it's a, I know it's a uh, Emilio cigar, but that the Cavatana. I know you love that cigar. Yeah. Uh, if you guys, if for the people who are listening, if you haven't tried that cigar. Please try it. Um, I, I, I think that cigar is outstanding. Yeah. He did a good job with it. I mean, Emilio was a brand, if you go back about eight or nine years ago, it was kind of in the online media. They were a darling brand to the online media. Then it kind of, kind of, you know, after Gary Griffith kind of fell in love and left, it was uh, kind of stagnant for a while. So now James is trying to re- reinvigorate life into that Uh He's got some good. The LJZs are good. Um, uh, I have to smoke that Papa Joe. I've heard a lot of good things about that cigar. So um, I think, you know, I like the. I, he fixed the packaging on. Like the Emilio packaging used to be the worst. 
Like <laughs> it was the worst packaging out there. And, and he's kind of, he personally does all the artwork is what people don't realize. That's all his artwork. He doesn't mm-hmm. have a band designer. Uh, he doesn't have a box designer. So he does all that. Yeah. That's always been a, a fun interview too. Like he's all like every year he's always taking time to, to make sure that, you know, he gives us a, a good interview and, I, I've, I love cigars for a long time. Way back when they first came out, you know, my shop in New Orleans, uh, Crescent City Cigar Shop, the, the home shop, um, he brought them in early on, and I fell in love with them then. That's where I had my first Bishop Splin, the very first one that came out. And ever since then, I've been hooked. Now, I, I, I truly believe that their limited edition stuff is a lot better than actually the core line. I agree. Uh, I, I, I think that's the, that's the one. The porcelain's really good. That's core now, but I agree. I think that's a company that, that's been the problem is their limited editions are so good, and they're not like – they're not stuff he's just like taking out of the factory and rebanding. But he's never going to apologize right. for that either. Like that's the thing. Like he's – like it is what it is. Like these right. things they're, are special. These are, these are true limited editions that – are being crafted and, and there's a marketing plan and he comes out with them almost on an annual basis at a certain time of the year. So, you know, when you can get them, sometimes they'll skip a year, but, but, you know, you can always know Bishop's blend is going to be a mid-year release. Uh, Deliverance is earlier in the year. So he's got, he's, I think he's got a good rhythm going with it. Um, I would like to see a couple more core lines really start to surface. I think that would be once he gets a couple more of those, I think he's going to be, uh, good and i've noticed you know he he's also a guy who's doing blends for other people too obviously dissident is the one yeah. that um is probably the big brand it, it's part of a Nega brands but it ben holt owns that company is yeah. the difference yeah so, and that's it, actually been the one that's impressed me the most really because whenever um i, I finally started going out here in dallas post covid and i went to michael's and Yulis bear shop and the guys there, Tracy and Brandon, were the ones like, oh, yeah, you need to try the rent, the tirade. And, and, you know, I think it was Brandon said the tirade was the one he has every morning with a cup of coffee the first day in the morning. Yep. I was like, cool. Okay, well, I'm going to grab a couple of those. And I do it. Ben, mm-hmm. I was blown away. Ben is doing great stuff with that distance. Like, I'm yeah. really impressed yeah. with those. I, I am too. I am too. He's put a lot of, uh, Again, he's putting a lot of attention into those. Um, you know, it was interesting. Mm-hmm. I spoke to Home last year, and I thought it was okay. But this year's Home was fantastic. Same blend, but I don't know. Maybe they just had a better crop of tobacco they used this year. I thought it was very good. I agree. I, I think the Home is really good. The the, uh, it's yeah. gotten stronger each year. Like, the, the Home 2019 was good. The Home 2020 was stronger. And then this year's was even stronger than yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's – yeah, I love I love Ben stuff. I don't think that's that's any secret. I gave him an award as well uh, for the Block Lonsdale. Um, I think I think I think Ben's stuff is out of the park. Every single one of them is an absolute hit. What a um, job he's done! Uh, yeah, really. I mean, he and he got such a hot brand, and people were excited when he when he got the because that brand had a cult following when Gordon had it. Um, you know, at the guys out in Kansas, and he saw something with that brand, and he saw a vision. He had a like. We've we've interviewed him several times, like Bear and I, and he had a vision for what he wanted to do from like day one. Um, here's the other thing that's really cool: people don't realize Rant Raid and Tirade were actually Vitola names under the uh, soapbox um, mm-hmm. when Gordon had it, and he got rid of. I noticed he got rid of those names when he transitioned over, and he put like traditional names. But I think he had a plan to kind of make those each a line and. Uh, I think those are great releases. He's got now five solid core core releases. So he, okay. I think he's, in a way, you could argue dissidents' core lines are stronger than the black label ones. I mean, you can make that argument. Yeah, he, I agree with that. Very, yeah, he's very hands on with the blending too. Like yeah. him and James work really closely hand in hand. Like yeah, ben, his Ben's, stuff doesn't taste like James's stuff. Yeah, no. it doesn't. No, particularly the particularly the the the, the rave, uh, the Connecticut. Connecticut. I, I, that, that's a yeah. That cigar's fucking stellar. Yeah. Um, no, the um, but yeah, I thought that. I think I think J, like overall, I think you know, even though we're we're not so high on necessarily some of Black Label's core stuff, I think I think the I, I think as a as a as a movement, you could call it the Oveja Negra brands movement, is is actually you could argue is probably if not the strongest, one of the strongest. Uh, ones out there coming out of Nicaragua, and that's saying something because when you put them up against, you know, Roma Craft, Espinosa, Lazona, 
I mean, these are really hot boutique brands that have insane followings um, and they make stellar cigars, all three of those companies. Uh, and there's more, of course, out of Esteli, you know, there's some great, co- I mean, everyone's out of Esteli, but like, I'm talking about that, that, that niche kind of medium, mo- you know, small to medium size uh, companies. Um, I mean, J- James, da- James, Angela, and their entire team do an incredible job. And Oveja Negra Brands is, is they're really setting themselves up for a, a really great, prominent future of success. It's evident. Yeah. yeah. One thing that Coop mentioned uh, earlier that we kind of just w- went past it too quick was the uh, artwork. It's all done by James. Yeah. I think it's awesome looking. I love it. I think I it's love it so too. Cool. I love it too. I love it too. And it's getting better and better. Yeah. That's what's really cool. Yeah. Like at first it was the gothic stuff he had, right? But yeah. now you look at where he's gone um, and you see some of the stuff that he's put on the, uh, the black works and the Emilio in particular. Um, I mean, I think he's doing a, you know, like this is a guy. He won our company, of the, small company of the year last year. Two years in a row, they won factory of the year. Um, I mean, there's a reason, you know, and that's, you know, they, he, it's everything's paying off for him right now. Um, and the other thing I'll say, last thing I'll say is again with the limited, he's done it right. He's found a way to make limited, like I'm really sour on a lot of limited editions lately. I was going to say for you but, to say that something, but not, not James. Because again, I feel like every one of those limiteds are special. They're, 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 there's conception to release. Uh, there's a whole strategy with them. And they're, most of them are not one and done. They're annuals. And I think he's done, some of them have done better than others. I get that. But uh, they've all been really good. I mean, there's not like a turd he's had. I can't think of a turd James Brown cigar he's had. Maybe again, some of the limited, I mean, some of the regulars I'm not as high on, but there's no dog rockets in that line. So, yeah. And, um- James will tell you that the black work studio specifically is his playground. Yeah. Yeah. That's where he, that's where he, uh, and you that can hive, you, that hive was beautiful. That's black works. Yeah. You can tell, you can tell how much fun he, you can tell how much fun he has. That, that was, yeah. Um, and he's got more stuff. I mean, he was talking about, he's got something called intergalactic that wasn't at the show. That's come. He talked about that. And we did the virtual show that's coming out. Uh, there's one other line. I'm sorry. I can't remember the name. Um, that's all. There's two releases. He's got a black label and a black works that wasn't at the show that's coming out later this year. So he got. A- I think the concept that he's got with black works and black label, I think, is brilliant. Yeah. I mean, I really do. I mean, the ability for him to, to, to Bear's point of like the playground, to see you know be able to tweak, and then I think with that, sometimes the expectations are not as high, only because you know what what the concept behind black works is, and he still puts out great stuff. But I mean, if you're putting out a core line that those expectations are going to be higher than if you're doing a limited and it's coming out of black works. So I, I just think the concept that he has with that is brilliant. Yep. I agree. All right. Let's get to the peas Cause we have some three big peas coming up in a row. Well, speaking of that, I'm moving on to my next cigar. It's a Pichardo. Hey. But Charlie yeah. Classic. Ben, yeah, I, I smoked the oh, Mother Church. Oh, look at that. Not even, I, not even planned. What? Again. We both smoking the same cigar. fired up the same cigar. Wow, you guys, great minds think alike. Yeah. I I'm smoked so the Mother Church now. already, so I got my my, my Pichardo in already, and then I'm, I moved I on to the, the Maximus. Mother, I love the Mother Church. Um, J, I told the JR Cigar folks, you need to bring that one back. Uh, that's a great cigar. Um, by the way, this American double Robusto, I really like it. I really like this cigar a lot. Um, I want to give it a full review, but, uh, I like, it's really well balanced. It's it, an art. I can make some argument. It's, it's not as heavy FSG in some cases because of the bigger ring gauge. It's not, but it's really That's... good. It's a great expression that they have with this. I'll definitely check that out. That sounds interesting. I really like I'll this. Check that out. Yeah. I think you'll like, I mean, if you spoke to, I think you guys will like this one. I'm not saying you'll say it's cigar of the year, but but I think you'll like it. This is very good. This is box worthy. Um, I could tell you that from this experience. So the Mother Church is gone. It was a limited release. I don't, I don't know much about it. Was it. The, it was a fit. Yeah, it was the yeah, 50th I, ben, anniversary. I I, did I send you some, Ben? No, I've never I, had it. I, I thought I sent you some. All right, I, I got to see if I have any more. I, I'm I gonna do, get ben, more. Ben, I can I can send you some, Ben. If you if not, I, I've got uh, two boxes. Yeah, you gotta buy them directly from JR.com. JRCigars.com. 
Um, I, I think that is a I, – I even said that to Nick Obretti, who's the brand manager. I said, this is a home run. Um, it's just that Churchill size, which is – you don't see that at uh, Crown Heads a lot either. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the pink ba- the pinkish bands, but but it doesn't matter. That doesn't really matter to me. The cigar is great. Well, I love a good Churchill, that's for sure. That's, that's one of my favorite sizes. Yeah, Crown Heads could do it. If you think Crown Heads can't do a Churchill, they do an excellent Churchill. And that's out of Pachardo as well. Yeah, I wonder why they don't do Churchill. I, I, did, I didn't dawn on me until you said that. They don't same, do, same I don't, reason they don't I, do the sixties. He just doesn't like them, man. Yeah. John, John doesn't want to do them. Yeah, I mean, John talked about right. the show. He doesn't like sixties. The one he did didn't sell, is what he said. So, uh, well, I'm gonna uh, Hubert. You're getting a text tomorrow. I'm gonna. I want some answers. <laughs> right. Let's go. To, let's go to Padron. Uh, we got an interview with Padron. Uh, we saw the new Padron uh, 95th, mm-hmm. uh, Family Reserve 95. I could, it's, I, from what George said, that's a one and done, at least for now. Um, and uh, I know a lot of retailers went and got that cigar. The booth was busy. That was a day two booth. We had to go back there, but we got to George. Um, and uh, great interview, guys. Um, I'm, I'm really, I thought it was a great job. So uh, we got George was great with his time. I thought too. He was very busy when, when he did that interview. It wasn't like he was had time. So uh, he gave us about 15 minutes, which I think was great. Talked a little with us afterwards, and it was great. Yeah, I was I was really impressed with that because that's one that I was never able to get a hold of. Like I was able to go into the Padron booth to get anybody to even look at me, unless that that one time I went in there with a checkbook for the cigar shop, but. Uh, other than that, they've <laughs> never gave me the time of day. So when we went in there and was able to interview them, oh man, I was I was giddy as hell. I was I was thoroughly excited for that interview. Yeah, and he did. He he actually held up because he had a, a, another group of customers come in. Great cast. Special, thanks to, Special Craig, thanks to Craig. Special thanks to Craig for yeah. letting us do that. Yeah, appreciate that. That was awesome on b- both of their parts. You know, the, yeah. the wait and give us a little bit of time. Yeah, they were. Craig was awesome. Um, now, Craig also has helped me get to George Padron. The two interviews I did for Stogie Geeks, um, which were which were interesting. One I did with Seth and one I did with Stace Berkland, and they were interesting interviews, uh, to say the least. So I think George, I don't have a tight relationship with George, but I think he knew who I was. So it made it a little easier. But still, it could have been very easy. Like He did tell us to come back. We came back and we had to wait a few minutes, but then he came right over to us and did that. And gave us, uh, didn't give us the rush act by any means. I mean, we oh, were sensitive yeah. to his time as well. We didn't want to interrupt business, but, but he came over. Yeah, I was very disappointed. No, no samples because it's freaking Padron. I mean, come on, what else can you say? I mean, it's great. I mean, it's just so cool. Some right? people I mean, got that sense, got the ninety fives. I think. Don't tell not, me that. That's, that's but no, it wasn't media, so it wasn't but media. It. Uh, uh, I had, a, I had a brief conversation with with him too. We talked about the 80th. He's got one roller that does the 80th, and yeah, um, yeah. I mean, he's a. My, I tell you what, I don't know if you said it, Bear, or if you said it, Ben, or it was you, Coop. One of you guys mentioned it to me, and when you talk to George Padron, you feel like he's like staring through your skull. Like, oh I, yeah, that like, was that was Matt Ty <laughs> said that. He's like, he's but he's not wrong. Like, I I've interviewed him. I can tell you, God Almighty, I'm like sitting there. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm done. I, I can't. I don't want to talk. I'm 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 done. <laughs> yeah, it's no, nice. it's uh, he's he's he is a he can be a little intense. We made each other laugh, man. George yeah. George yeah. Padron and I made each other laugh. Yeah. That was that was really great. And yeah, Coop Coop caught a picture of us laughing together. That was really that was a really great shot. That yeah, was it was good. Uh, and Bo- Bear, you got to check a major. Uh, checkbox. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I think it was a good job. And I was, I mean, that booth, by the way, for, he's had the same booth for as long as I've been going to the trade show. Never, they have never changed that booth. Same size, same layout. They maybe move some things around, but that's the same. Yeah, it was a big checkbox for me too because I'm, I'm a big Padron fanboy. Uh, it is what it is. And so to be able to go in there and do the interview was pretty special. You guys, but too. you guys have interviewed him on Stogie Review, haven't you? Once. Okay. Once. Okay. That's it. So, so I, I think I've told this story before about Padron and like their sample stuff. Aaron, um, so there, um, you guys know who Colin Cowherd is, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so he he did this bit a long time ago because he was con- talking about the Patriots doing the Patriot, you know, the Patriot way, blah blah blah, and he was comparing it to Kia and Mercedes. So you remember, you guys remember the Kia campaign a few years ago with the fucking hamsters? Yeah. 
Yeah. He's like, yeah. So, you know, he's like, everybody else is like Kia, right? Kia does this, this cute little thing with hamsters. They're like, hey, buy our car. We have cute little hamsters. And then these, these fun commercials and blah, blah, blah. And then Mercedes comes along with the commercial right after Kia and says, here's our fucking car. It's 80 grand. You know, you want one. <laughs> that's padrone man that's padrone. Hey, we're, we're fucking padrone we're not kia with hamsters man like oh. it's we're padrone you know yep. you want one yep absolutely why do you need and a sample why do you need a sample of, why do you need a sample of padrone because uh, they're is, damn good and i want one for free <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but it's it's 100 percent true though 100 <clears throat> percent. yep all right let's go to perdomo um again uh they there was a little bit of a surprise they had the the new uh connoisseur collections which was something that weren't announced before the trade show so they did bring something new in they had some great samplers uh they had released the immenso uh 70s earlier in the year um we got right to nick um i think we have good relationships with perdomo Uh, another company anything we've asked from from them um they've always been responsive um i think their online media has gotten a lot better in the last three or four years for sure. Um, but we got to Nick. Not everyone got to Nick to interview him, by the way, just so you know that. Some people didn't get Nick for the interview. Um, and, uh, you know, he uh, a great supporter. And I thought uh, it was – Aaron, I wish you could have gotten to see the old booth, though. How I, That was just like uh, he had the drums in there, the, the big TV, the big LED thing. Um, the booths were laid out kind of like almost in a – Fuente style with the cabinets. So it was a much smaller booth, uh, but it seemed to work well. They had steady traffic the whole week for sure because uh, we, we were around that area a lot. So uh, good, great job, I thought, by that. Yeah, that was a good booth too. I mean, I, I was I was really impressed that he gave us the time and, you know, he took all – you know, he, he didn't rush us either, he, you know. <laughs> One of the guys told us to interrupt him, like, like basically, hey, I'll interrupt him for you, like, because he, he wanted us to get there. Um, that was Arthur, I think. Arthur, yeah, it was Arthur. Up. Arthur did that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for folks that don't know Arthur Kemper, he's like Nick's right hand man. Uh, amazing, amazing guy. I'll just tell you, the guy knows the industry. I spent some time with him down in Miami last time I was there. Heir to the company. A lot of people don't realize that. Heir to the company. He's the heir to the company. Yeah. I didn't know. I, I figured Nick Jr. would be the uh, Nick, Nick. I Jr. mean, as it stands right now. Yeah. I mean, that, that's from what I understood. Yeah. I, I think Nicholas is doing an, a really good job. Yeah. Um, Nicholas is incredible, too. Uh, yeah, chip, sure off, T- chip off the old block, man. Yeah. When he was at TP last year and I was there, he was the head guy there um, because Arthur and Nick were not there. Uh, and he was uh, a chip off the old block in terms of making sure that was a well-oiled machine at TPE. Uh, I kind of messaged Nick. I said, Nick, you got to be real proud of him, man. He said, yeah, thank you for saying that. Yeah, he, yeah. that was his first time doing that. So, um, yeah, I mean, and Barry, you know, he's been great with us on the two shows. Oh, incredible. On, on all the shows. So, uh, yeah. Uh, they gave us samples, whatever we wanted. I, I got a 10th anniversary Maduro, which I dropped, but I still smoked it. It was good. So, sorry, Nick, but uh, it still smoked great. <laughs> I felt bad. I dropped it. I'm like, oh, man. All right, let's move on. And I think this was one of the more interesting stories we have from the show, the Placencia booth. Um, if, there was a, if there was an award for most packed booths, it would be between them and Alec Bradley. Um, we got to the Placencia booth. We went there after we went to La Galera for the first time. And we went there in between. Um, I didn't think there was any chance we were going to get an interview with anyone, right? Um, Javi was slammed, who's normally our contact there. Javi, Javi, who's their national sales manager, he was slammed. Um, somehow Bear and Ben got to Nestor. Um, and you guys, like I said, Nestor gave us some time, which was great. That's well, we kind of ambushed right. him. <laughs> we ambushed him outside the booth. He was talking it was a, it, to, uh... it, was a, it was a power move, man. But it, it wasn't. Was, you guys yeah. didn't interrupt business. You guys, you guys were. I want to make that clear. That was the one interview I haven't seen because it was so crowded. I couldn't get near the interview. I was so bumping in everybody's yeah. back. I mean, that I, I don't even. I, okay, so you can say that Alec Bradley was. I think Placencia's booth by far was the most crowded I, on a consistent basis. That place, that thing was packed. I thought the booth looked very cool. I thought the coloring was great. And talk about 
I mean, it kind of goes without saying, but I mean, talk about a cigar line that just continues to knock it out of the park with their releases. I mean, they just, you know, they got access to the best tobacco, obviously, and that whole lineage. But I, I just think they, most everything they put out, uh, the, the Chia, I think if you're pronouncing it right, was, is okay. I mean, it's good. But as far as, you know, the Alma Forte and, and the other lines that they have put out, I just think are outstanding. And I think they just continued to to grow, which is probably a, a comment that's like a duh and yeah, no shit. But it, I was just really impressed with, with what they put together. I yeah, got to give it. I agree with that. Yeah. I was, so, was going to say that I've, I've become a fanboy of their cigars too. They, they've been knocking out of the park. Every release is just yeah. outstanding. And I will say that was a re- that was a hard one to shoot for me. Mm-hmm. Thank God that the camera has super wide because it was so packed. Now, we were interviewing Nestor. We was in that little corner of the yeah. booth, and it was tight, and I could not move. I couldn't go anywhere. So it was it was good, and Barry did a great job handling that one. That, one, that, was, that was a yeah. tough one to do. That was. Um, it was weird because we got to the booth, and then I started talking to my local rep, Wayne Clark. Shout out to Wayne Clark, who's the hardest working rep out there right at this trade show, among a lot of hardworking reps. So um, – you know, he would, I put him in that top tier, and you know, and the next thing after I talked to Wayne, he had to get back to business. I see you guys with the camera rolling. I'm like, wow, how did this happen, right? So it was, uh, it was. I, I didn't think we were gonna at all get anywhere with Placencia. I think figured we would have to come back day four and hope we can get someone like Javi at that point. But uh, so so, I, so special thanks to to, to actually it was Jeff Forswitz who who actually played a part in this. So yes, you know. We went to, so we went to, I went to Javi. Uh, he was, he was really busy. I was catching him in between, literally in between people. I felt, I felt a little rude. Uh, I apologized. And he's like, no, 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 it's fine. He's no, like, he, was, yeah, just, he was slammed. He was, yeah, slammed. He, was, he was so busy. I felt yeah. so bad. And he's like, Hey, go, go talk to, uh, go talk to uh, Nestor's son over at the, uh, I guess the, the main table and we'll, we'll see what we can do for you. And um, so we're, we're, we're kind of in limbo there and Nestor Andres Placencia is talking to Jeff Forswitz on the side. And I, I, uh, I, I grabbed Ben and we, we head over there and um, I don't, I don't say anything. I just kind of tap, you know, I tap Ben on the, sh- the Jeff on the shoulder. I'm just like, Hey, you know, good to see you. Um, and, uh, and we're just kind of loitering a little bit, but not too like, like we're not in the conversation. Right. And Jeff's like, "Hey, you wanna you wanna interview?" I was like, "Hey, yeah, we absolutely do." If if Nestor's got the time, and Nestor's like, "Absolutely," he's like, "Yeah." And so we we grabbed that little corner. He's like, yep. "Where do you want to do it?" And we're like, "Wherever wherever you can." So we grabbed this corner, and uh, I'm pretty sure Ben's leg was on a coffee table. It was and his uh, other was on a couch, and you know he had the he had the camera mounted, and oh man, it was it was good stuff. Great job, guys. Yeah, that's the one I haven't seen yet, just because again, it was the logistics. Like most of the other movies, I caught most of them when they were being filmed, but that one I'm really looking forward to hearing. Yeah, it was pretty. Jeff just kind of slid us right into the conversation. It's like, oh, y'all here to do the interview? You slid us right on in. Yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. It was great. It was a fun time. I, I love Nestor. He's a great guy. So I was glad we was able to pull that off. Yeah, good job. Um, Next one. This was a booth that I think we all wanted to get to. Um, Platinum Nova. Um, we I had not met uh Leo before, the owner or the CEO, I should say. She's not the owner. Um, we went to her booth probably five minutes or ten minutes before the trade show closed. Um, felt bad, but we just at least popped over there just to introduce ourselves. Uh, and she gave us time past the five o'clock deadline. Um, and uh, what a fun interview that was. Uh, she's she's an awesome person. Uh, you know, I like what I like what she's doing with that brand. Um, that's a brand that's been around for a while, but she's kind of really taken the, the bull by the horns there. Um, I Make love that little. Four, I like that little 484. That was an, a highlight. Um, not a new cigar, but it was one they were kind of featuring because they really hadn't promoted it much. Um, but it came out recently. It's a little uh, 48 by four petite uh, robusto, or you want to call it. Um, I and like I said, fun, fun booth, fun interview for sure. Yeah, she was great. Yeah, she, yeah, she is very charismatic. 
um that was that was another really fun interview she that the it was almost like watching a conversation just a normal conversation with bear and her it was just it was great great she's funny yeah she she's awesome she was that was that was a uh one of our favorite uh booth interviews that we did it really was and she, she was, was so really nice. cool and she was so nice because like they're exhausted at the end of the day to go past five she didn't have to do that um and well and, we just, two, and, and and her her husband was there right so that's the the, the guy that was with yep. her was her husband he and i you know had an opportunity to talk and i think coop at one point i had told you when we were walking through i had actually picked up um a five pack of one of their their cigars and i really liked it and i said you know I, I think this line is 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 gonna take off and she she was jay i i saw her writing orders and i think Ben, you had recommended one of your shops that uh, go check them out and and gave them kind of a referral. What I will say um, is that I think their cigars are very good. They are not cheap. Um, so I, I don't know where that's going to fall into how well she does and how well that line uh, takes off, but very good cigars, but not cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're ones I think... Uh... Like I said, I wanted to build a connect. My goal was to build a connection with them. Uh, I think we did that. Uh, she was, like I said, very great. The whole booth was gracious there. Um, I, I'm a fan of their uh, packaging. I yes. love the bands. Yep. I love their boxes. So um, I think I've had I have had some Nova stuff beforehand. Some of it I like better than others. Uh, I had the Leo Ten. Uh, Matt Tobacco gave me that cigar and Nicole. I was yeah, really Nicole impressed. Gave me one too. Mm -hmm. Really impressed with that cigar. Um, so uh, I haven't spoke to Leo. They, they they were apologizing for not giving us Leo 11s. I'm like, don't worry about it, you know. Yeah. Uh, we're do, you know, but she 484s we got, which were really good. That Maduro. It's the was, first time I'd met her, man. She's cracking jokes with me. Like she's cracking like jokes. Yeah. Like old pals. Awesome. It was great. Yeah. I think she's a breath of fresh air in the well, industry too. And she she I was talking to her husband, and she she worked for some of the big brands out there before she kind of went on her own. So she's yeah. got, she's got, I guess we'll call pedigree, if you will, yeah. of working with other large uh, brands out there. So I, I think that, uh, I think it's going to do well. She's got a lot of retail experience too, which I think always helps. Um, and, uh, you know, she's moved into this role and I could see why they picked her. Um, you know, I think she's passionate about what she's doing as well. Sorry, Aaron Loomis, but uh, I think that's a great <laughs> example as well. The packaging on that cigar is amazing. I, I think it looks gorgeous. Yeah. The bands, the boxes, the colors, everything. It just every it just pops and it yep. looks really good. Yeah. Agreed. Yep. All right. Let's go to protocol. Uh, Juan and Kevin. Um, never a problem getting their time. Uh, they were in the Espinosa booth. Um, they had you know a lot of the new products they have out. The um. Obviously, the the best, best Reeves, the best Reeves, best Reeves. Yeah. Uh, I smoked the Protocol sixty ring gauge. I think you guys saw. I love that cigar. Uh, if you're not a sixty ring gauge cigar smoker, give that Protocol, uh, Blue Label sixty ring gauge a try. Um, they had like Cyber Crimes there, which they hadn't really shown up at the trade show, as well as Elliot Ness. Um, so I mean, those guys are great. Um, and you know, what? here's what we say. I'll say this. We all kidded with Juan, okay? And Juan is Juan, right? And he's going to stick his foot in his mouth like a hundred times, right? He's going to do goofy things. He was all business at that trade show. Um, and, and, you know, I, he did a good – they did a good job. Even the, even the Espinosa guys complimented them as well. Well, they, anybody, they that, anybody that wears sunglasses 24-7, I mean, you got to be nothing but business. When you have circles <laughs> under your eyes, like for not sleeping, <laughs> I can understand that. <laughs> Uh, Look, I do think Juan yeah. needs a haircut. I told Juan he does need a haircut. I like the I, I like the old Juan when he used to walk around with the Panama hat and the short hair and the mustache. Uh, sorry, Juan, but no, Juan is still Juan. Um, unbelievable support that Cigar Coop has gotten from uh, Protocol from day one. From day one, um, it's never I I can't say and you know I, I haven't thanked them enough on the air for that, but they they really have been. Kevin's come in there. We've gotten. I hung out with Kevin. We we hung out with Kevin a little at Casa Fuente beforehand, without Juan. So uh, it's interesting. You know, I I really hadn't sat down with Kevin one on one much, so I got to know him a little more at Casa Fuente as well. 
So I, I thought it was yeah. a, I thought they had a great show. Yeah, that was that was actually the first time I had met Kevin as well. I was I was thoroughly impressed. Like he was a great guy to talk to. Yeah. And come to find out, like outside of cigars, we're kind of in a little bit in the same type of IT field yeah. as well. Yeah. So we talked a while about that. You know, he, I had a it was a great conversation with him. Yeah. It, it was yeah. and the the interview with both with him, you know, and Juan was great. I thought it was great. Yeah, I think it was too. Um, you know, and they uh they've always done well at the trade show. I mean, for a while they had their own booths. And in the last few years, they've been back in the Espinosa booth. Uh, and I think, I think it's a benefit for them to be in that. These, but they always were adjacent to the Espinosa booth. Um, so, but I think they're at a point right now where people come to see them um, as well as Espinosa. It's not like, Hey, you know, let's check out these other guys. A lot of people now, look, there's no one better. Look, maybe what I like about what they do and Roma craft does, Every day they're on social media, they're pumping their brands. Um, and that's why they've been successful. They know how to promote. Juan is a master. Look, Juan can promote these small batch releases as good as anyone in the industry. Well, Juan, Juan takes it to another gear at the trade show. Like we've seen that the last two times. Yep. Like he just he takes it to another level. Um, so the one thing that I noted too um, is that you know, you know, when Kevin kind of came in um, as uh, as a co-owner for this brand, it was, uh, I would say a little, you know, it was done a little, a little quieter and everything, but there was nothing quiet about Kevin's presence this time out. Like you can, you can tell from our conversation, yes, our conversation across the Fuente off the trade show, but even in the, in booth, the trade, yeah, like this is, this is just as much Kevin's brand. It's not a hobby for Kevin. It's not a hobby for Kevin. Yeah, it's no, this is yeah. this is Kevin. This is Kevin's brand, and yeah. you know, and, and and as much as it is Juan's brand too, and they they have a great partnership, and they've always been they've been first rate with us, uh, always giving us time, always coming on shows, always being there for us. Yep. You know, press information, yeah, press you know, press information, everything, and uh, and I, I can't say enough. I think uh, I, I think the the the, the sky is bright for. Uh, for them so i yeah. think they're gonna they're gonna be they're gonna be doing some great things P here pca exclusive next year guys do it do it you'll be you'll have the hit of the pc because they'll promote it yeah then yeah, pca if they're gonna do a piece if they're gonna do pca exclusive take it guys they could do they could do it and they'll bring something good to the table i guarantee you that all right um we're getting we're making progress here guys only a few more to go rocky patel Um, I think we got to give a shout out, Ben, to Heath Hill. Of course. Definitely. Um, he got us to Rocky. And Ben, you had the relationship there. And Heath couldn't have been better. Um, that boost, another slam boost. You want to talk about big boost? That was that was one of the bigger boosts as well. Because they didn't cut the size of their boost. Um, and and they, Rocky was slammed. And it was it took a little work for Heath to get Rocky over. Uh, but Rocky was great. And he, he was in rare form on in that interview. It was a short interview, but it was, it was, it was quintessential Rocky Patel in that interview. He poured us a beer. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. He poured us a beer. He, yeah. he, the interesting thing he talked about with, with me and I have to follow up with him. Um, he said, look guys, I'm the marketing department right now. I don't have a marketing department anymore. Yeah. And he really encouraged us to work with him. So I was very, uh, I get, you know, I was very, very taken with that. And, um, you know, he, and, you know, at first, I think he wanted me to do the interview, Bear. And then I said, the Bear's going to do the interview. And, but I think he quickly got the confidence with you doing that interview. It was, it was, it was, it was instant. And you could see he, you got his respect very quickly. That was another box you got to check off as well. So uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. R R Listen, he, he, uh, he brings the energy, he kind of brings like, the energy. He knows I bring energy to the trade show. Yeah, similar to similar to like what we were just talking about with Juan on a smaller scale, right? That energy, um, you know, Rocky definitely had it. It was, he was, you know, he was excited about the, you know, he was excited about his new products. He was excited great. about all being three there. of those are great. By the way, I smoked yes. all three of those cigars. Yeah, the '60s, fantastic. The white label, fantastic. The white label is incredible. I smoked that one. That's really good. Look, Rocky is right now firing at a level I've never seen him do in terms of the quality of his release. So he's got another level. Yeah. I was the, the 60, so of, of the cigars I smoked, which is many, the 60 really stood out to me. I thought he did a great job with that. And I'll, I'll say this, 
you know, for all those people that always will, you know, I don't want to say Rocky necessarily. Get, I, I think he does get a bad rap sometimes. Like, you know, Scar stays the same or, you know, it's the same old Rocky. I, I'll tell you what, when I went around the booth and I, and I took pictures of, of everything he had displays of, which was a lot. I mean, yeah. he had every, every, everything that basically in his line he had out for display. As I was taking, I'm like, wow, I like that. Wow, I like that. I, I mean, it's not something that I will um, – it's not like that cigar for special occasion necessarily. It's not those like, Hey, I'm going to go super high end. And, and it, because of his price point allows to, to smoke it more, you know, on a, on a relaxed basis, if you will, but he puts out damn good cigars. And I think the cigars that he has put out for coming out of this trade show to your point, Coop, I think he took it to another level. I, I think that those people are going to really enjoy those cigars and, I was very impressed with Rocky. I, I, I thought his booth was great. Traffic was great. He was great to us. Really pleased with what he put out. Cause I mean, he can put out, you know, from a, uh, from a uh, backlog, if you will, or, or what, what's the term that you guys use um, from a um, uh, grandfathered in or whatever that. You yeah. Predicate. He, predicate. He's got a lot of predicate. Yep. He got a ton of predicate stuff where he, I mean, he's, he'd be set for years. He did a really good job. Really good job. He did. Um, I talked to Rocky a bit, um, at the, at the, uh, opening reception and I was talking to him because I said, look, quarter century and the winter collection 2020 were among my highest rated cigars of the year. Uh, you know, Rocky, and he was very appreciative and he said, well, wait till you try the 60. Right. And I tried the 60 and I'm like, that's another winner. I'm like, it yep. really, it really. Uh, I just think the last 18 months I've seen out of Rocky Patel is the best work he's done. You know, he had, a, he used to throw a lot of these releases out at the trade show. And I think they competed with each other. And I think some of them weren't as good as maybe they could be. But in the last couple of years, he scaled back what he's displaying at the trade show or launching at the trade show. And I think he's, that's been a, a huge difference. Yeah, oh, he's been his own worst enemies. Sometimes yeah. he cannibalizes yeah. himself. Yep. Uh, yeah. That's, that's been, yeah, and I was going to say kudos. We'll give a shout to Aaron Loomis, too, because didn't he come up and kind of grab us and say, hey, Rocky's got something new that wasn't on part of your press release, I yeah, think. Was it the yeah, White? the White and the Disciple. Yep. The Disciple, yeah. Yep. That was a very good – by the way, I like the Disciple as well. I was so, so which we, we also discovered was a trademark issue while we were there, too. I think White Label and Disciple may have some issues. Because... Well, that's a, not, the, not for Rocky. Well, the White Label, maybe. But he remember – he owns the trademark for the for Disciple. Yeah, and then uh, Diesel came out with the Disciple earlier in the year. Yes. So I don't know. I, we didn't ask him about that. So, was... Aaron. Yeah. No, I was going to say, Aaron, would you say that Rocky is going to be relevant for years to come? <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, I think people need to be paying attention so, to what's coming out of Rocky's factories. I really do. It's good stuff, really good stuff coming out. And I'm not, by the way, I think Brooks from Half Wheel really made a good. similar comment. I think I heard him say that some way. It was, I think he may have said that on one of his podcasts they did on Half Wheel. Brooks made the same comment that he's really got good stuff. And, and so I don't think we're the only ones saying this. Um, I think he's got this. I mean, I think he's going to have a cigar of the year on aficionado in the next couple of years. I agree. I would. I think, I, so, I think some of these due. cigars. Yeah, he's due. And I, I they're going to give it I 100% agree. Yeah. You know, what's funny. I wasn't a fan of the number six. Um, I'll say this. I was. That, I wasn't. Um, it's one of the most read reviews on Coop in the last 12 months. And I know a lot of people like that cigar. So, I mean, well, it just didn't hit me to number six, so I'll say here, that. Here's what I'll say about the six. I like it, but it's a, what I'll call typical Rocky. It was, that, more, yeah. It, I mean, it didn't, it, it, it's fine. I mean, it's, it's a, I, I liked it. I mean, did it wow me? No. But that's where I think Rocky gets the knock, right? It's like, okay, here's another typical Rocky where, you know, we go back to the, Ro the Royale. That's not a typical Rocky. Somebody, I swear somebody else blended that damn thing. But, you know, I think what he's to, I think what we're getting at Coop, I think you and I are talking about the same thing. He's kind of stepped it up or gone out of the quote unquote typical Rocky stuff. And I think it's going to benefit him. Yeah. 
I think so too. I think he. I think the one move I could say that I didn't like at the trade show. We're gonna take the picture thing aside. Um, is I kind of felt he originally had the sixty as a PCA exclusive. Then he changed it to re-release the ALR second edition. I think he would have knocked it out of park if maybe he made one of those other two cigars, the PCA. Maybe make the Disciple the PCA exclusive. Um, because it was just that good. I mean, the Disciple's really good as well. Uh. And I, I love the presentation. The white label is going to be a little more pricey from what I saw. Um, I think they're going to be trying. I think that there's a that that's going to be a premium Connecticut. He's going to try to compete with the big boys on. And you know those premium Connecticut's that are out there. So, all right, let's go to room one hundred and one. <laughs> this is this is going to be interesting. So. Uh, I, I look. I think Matt was always great with us. Matt is one of my favorite guys. Um, I didn't like the presentation at Matt's booth. I think I said it. It was just too. It was a little. I don't know his stuff. I think he could have benefited from having a few cabinets at that booth. Um, especially with that Namakubi release, which is going to be beautiful. The re-release of Namakubi, which I think is going to be beautiful. Um, he's got the twelve-year anniversary coming out. He's got a couple of line extensions uh, as well. So, uh, but, uh, you know, Matt's always, I love that, I love that Matt Booth was wearing a suit. Um, Matt seemed a little bit like the old Matt Booth. <laughs> Not like the last couple of years I've said Matt was a lot more, I guess for lack of a better word, serious. I don't want to say he wasn't serious, but he was more goofy at this trade show. Oh. And I talked to Bear about that. So he was kind of like the old Matt Booth was at surface. I, I um, think he is. I think, so I've got this, I think Matt is one of the, funniest people that i've ever met I, I, his humor i was probably some people are like this guy what what is this guy on or what is this yeah. guy about but his humor is out i just love it now what going back to the booth i think the way the way i would explain i would describe it would be understated and when yeah. i say understated especially for his personality right so it does that booth does not fit him i mean it was just too and you know, he jokes about don't open the box because they're not. I ready. felt bad. I touched the box, by the way. I'm, I apologize, Matt. But, but he had a, he had an issue with that. I didn't realize that. He was very nice when he told me not to touch. The yeah, box. but I think I just think I think the booth doesn't represent Ramona One or Matt Booth. From that's kind of that's kind of where I'm going with. Two years ago, it did. He had a great booth the way. You know, I think of how he presents the jewelry and stuff like that. That's that's kind of why it was a little disappointing. The booth. I'm not saying the experience of the booth was bad. But but Bear got to pee on his face, so that's always good. Yeah, look, Matt, 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 you weren't the only one that he got on about opening the box, Coop, so don't feel bad about no, it. No, but I should not have done that, and, and that was wrong of me, And but but that was just like a force. It was bad habit. I'm glad. I, I apologize. That's no, I normally never do that, so. Well, my, my interview with him was a total flex move because, you know, Coop likes to rag on me that I, I always get this side of Matt that nobody else gets when I interview him. But, and so I, I, I let him roll with his antics and I, 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 you know, rolled right with him in the, you know, the fun that we had and uh, just for kicks, because I knew I could, I still brought it around and got him, got him to get serious for a few minutes there too, in the interview. So that's what you have um, to do with Matt. You have to kind of do that with him. Um, but I was glad you got some of the antics cause you've been, you've gotten off easier than anyone in the in media, but I, I, but I, I love the antics though. And that, yeah. I think that's why, I think that's why I get a different side of Matt, uh, because yeah. I think we kind of, we kind of almost, uh, we kind of almost bond over that. Um, we have a, I, I, you know, Matt and I have a, Matt and I have a connection. Um, I, I, I consider him a friend. He's a, he's a, he's one of my favorite people too. I love his humor. Um, I think it's, you know, I think he's outlandish in a lot of ways and I love it. And I, I, and, uh, but he's also, he's also very generous with a lot of things. He's very generous with his time. He's very generous with his, with his cigars. And, uh, you know, he also is, you know, he's, he's given me advice when I've asked for it. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a first rate human being. And, and, uh, this, this industry is better. This industry is better with him. Uh, no question. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It was so a when I go in there, it's like a 30 minute. We, we take 30 minutes to do the interview for me to get 10 minutes of good footage. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's fun. It, it's always fun. We've known each other for more than a decade or longer now. No longer than that because we have a running circle game going for 11 years now between the two of us. <laughs> we, it's just nonstop. 
yeah. it is it is fun it, you know he he's always a lot of fun to talk to and, and to deal with and yeah. all his stories and stuff and it's always it's always a good show it's just i have to do a lot of heavy editing in the in the videos i can, <laughs> I can, yeah, imagine. I I can imagine i can imagine why would you edit that man stop that don't open that don't open that <laughs> Well, I've had I've had people walk in front of the camera on Matt Booth's interviews, interrupt for free samples on Matt and Booth, and and then the last couple of years, Matt's gotten a lot better controlling that as well. Say, um, at least 2018 and 19 were much different. He's got a he's got a nipple fetish. He, I I think it's it's the most hysterical thing. He like he like he just, it's just oh coop though. It's just coop. Right. He just keeps pinching coop. It's it's the best. Oh, oh it's yeah. funny. Oh, Matt. That's why I ran over to the Pelly, <laughs> to Bill Pelly. <laughs> I said, I'll leave you guys to deal with this. Uh, okay. Uh, three more to go, at least that I have on the list. Um, so this is. A I booth. added one. You forgot one. So check it. Where did you add it? It's the last one. I added oh. the last one. Why? Yeah, it wasn't okay. on there. Oh, wow. Okay, good. Okay. So we have three more. Um, the Sutliff booth. We had a lot of different brands in it, right? Uh, Sutliff is a pipe tobacco company that um, over the past year, they've, they've started adding in um, a lot of cigar brands of smaller brands that they're distributing. Um, the brands they've had in there, they had Adventura Cigars, Terrazona, Regis, Emperor's Cut, Matilde and MLB Cigars, and Patina. Mm-hmm. Um what I and we could talk a lot about specifics here, but what I'll say is this was one of the most brilliant strategies. Anyone who any of those companies got in there, they've got to be absolutely thrilled, right? Because here's what happened pipe to a lot of those big retailers come in there for the pipe tobacco, and what they discovered is they started going to some of these other booths. And I know Craig Cass was in there, and he went to me, he pulled me aside, he wanted to know more about He goes, I spoke to Saventura, he goes, This thing's fantastic. He goes, I'm bringing it in. He goes, have you smoked it? I said, I said, Craig, that Connecticut, the Queens Pearl, is contender for Cigar of the Year right now. Um, I, I 100% agree with that. Stupendous. Yep. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, we think we all agree. Half of it, I think, gave it number two or three on their list last year. It was very highly rated on theirs. Um, so a guy like Craig Cass, who may not interface with a lot of these brands, um, it was a great opportunity for these brands to kind of get in front of some retailers that maybe if they had their own standalone booth, they didn't do it. Um, it was kind of like a, it, it, you know what this reminded me of Ben, the old house of Emilio booth. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's how your house of Emilio had a similar. So you had these different stations and you kind of, I know we went in there two or three times because we were shuffling in and out between Padron, I think during then. Um, I thought it was the only thing that I, I thought that the only bad thing I thought the PCA didn't do is they didn't promote that these, these brands were there. That was the bad thing. I think PCA should have put these companies on the list like Protocol was on the list. Because Protocol yep. was in the Espinosa booth. So these other companies, I think they could have benefited from that. But if you were a retailer buying pipe tobacco, you, you, was, you were talking to these guys. Yeah, I don't know why PCA didn't do that. That's kind of odd because it's a really good brand. Yeah. You know, cigar companies that were in this booth. Well, yeah. I can, and I can tell you this. I mean, I've, I've, I was texting with Mo from patina over the weekend um i can tell you that like to your point coop like patina where he is in his you know ascent to grow the the brand and get bigger i think he would have struggled to have his own booth i and think so too i the think ability so too. To, to be in the suck cliff and bring in those together to where they get cross pollination if you will from a traffic standpoint aventure is great you know, I love the patina stuff. If anybody hasn't tried it, I highly recommend it. Um, Maduro is fantastic. I, I, I think the way that that was set up benefited everybody that was in there. Yeah. And patina is now being made at Noxa, yep. which is where Dapper, um, which is where Sokka is making stuff. Yep. And even some of uh, the um, Asylum stuff's made there. So he's got a, and I think the blends he's gotten, I'm not disrespecting Mambacho. He got better blends out of Knox. I can tell you that straight out. Um, and that Maduro is, is a home run for him. Um, I remember when he was in, he used to be in the Mombacho booth. I don't think he had nearly the traffic as he had with Sutliff. I mean, he was pretty busy there. Um, and he had a, he was like in the center of the booth, which was, he had a, he had the prime location in that booth. 
He was like right in the middle of the action there. I I, w- I, I hope Mo has success. He's, uh, I mean, he's passionate, but he's what a really really good guy. Yeah. yeah. He is, uh, and like I said, he's put a lot into core lines and, and working those core lines. And like I said, I think what he's done, the, move, the factory move, and now this Sutliff move, he made two really good moves um, for sure. Um, he, did, he did great there. Um, the one surprise is I didn't know MLB was in there. That was a surprise. Um, I think Mike should – I mean, I wish Mike was at the show. I think it would have been a great show for Mike if Mike was there. I think it really would have uh, reinvigorated a lot of the MLB stuff. So, um, but, but there was a presence there. It wasn't like MLB wasn't there, but uh, Barry McDonald, uh, who's now a broker, was, was running that booth. So Barry knows the line very well. But Mike, I think, would have really benefited from being there this year. All right. Tatawahe? Uh, well, that's that's always a really fun interview. Yeah. Like guy, you know? um, yeah, we, we usually do Tatawahe on day three at the end of the day. Uh, we actually caught Pete in the aisle, and we kind of dragged him back to the booth. <laughs> um, but, you know, Pete was great with his – Tatawahe had a lot of stuff to show off at the trade show this year. If you're a Tatawahe fan, you've got to be more excited this year. And it wasn't just monster stuff, like – it was there was a lot of you know I was excited about the new Lara Casa. I think that's going to come out early next year. Pete said, um, "I'm I'm excited about the advent calendar. Uh, the Monster Mesh is another thing. Um, the Cajonio, the new Cajonio to 2021. Uh, I think, like I said, I didn't love Pete's booth in terms of a layout. I'll be honest with you, yeah. but um, look, he." Uh, he seemed to be steady. I mean, we went to him at the end of the day, so it was kind of on day three, which the traffic had tailed down. But I know people had uh, – I know he had traffic in those booths uh, from talking to the other media guys who went there earlier than us. Look, I know, I know you, know, you Ben, and Bear and Coop have a lot, lot longer relationship with, with Pete than I do. You know, I did your show with, with Pete for that anniversary show, got to know him there. Uh, actually ran into him at the airport on my way out at like midnight. We both on were in the red eye. He was going to, to Miami. I was going to Chicago. We were our gate half, for next half the so. industry was on that Miami flight, by the way. Yeah, I, I think so. But uh, what I can say is, look, I'm a I'm a fanboy when it comes to Tatawahi stuff and and taking all that out of it. I can't tell you, and I I, I won't be able to describe it, it, it to give it justice. But the passion that that Pete brings to the cigar industry and how he's trying to get people to, you know, pony up money or to renew their booze or to, to do the next right thing to, to continue to get the communication better, to get everybody in lockstep to, <laughs> to do the picture to whatever the case may be. Uh, I mean, it, he is like the, the the grand puba of the the mark the, of the circus that is yep. the, the 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 cigar industry and he just is so passionate about making sure that the cigar industry continues to flourish and goes down the right path i can't tell you how impressed i was with what he was doing outside of just the tatawahe brand yeah uh i i cannot agree with that more um and uh you know, I know we, we've kind of – I use the word elder statesman of the industry, but I'll say this. You know, again, on the whole relevant, not relevant picture, Pete basically diffused what could have been a, an absolute bomb for the cigar industry if he didn't do what he did the day after um, and basically, you know, say what he said. He really – he stepped up as a leader in the industry. Uh, he was transparent on that. Um, I think he did it. He was doing a great job at the show. We saw him recruiting people to come over to a, a CRA meeting on day two. Right. So we, we saw that in action. Uh, and he diffuses that bomb. Uh, one other thing I'll just say is if you look, we took a piece of Pete's booth back with him. <laughs> so if you look at the Tatawahi Studios, we actually just lifted that from Ben literally took that home with him. <laughs> so yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, this, this whole backdrop here was actually from the, it, it's actually been, a, he's had this for, I, I forgot how many years. 
this 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 banner behind me has been in the booth for years and years and years yep. at the trade show, and it actually worked out well. I mean, it's it's obvious. I'm a I'm a fanboy. I I love that. I love it for years. So this relationship here is working out really well. Yeah. But um, what I you know, it's tradition with Sucker Review. We'd always try to get him on you know the last day or the second to last day, literally as as it's closing. And the reason yeah. it's multi multi uh, fast the reason why it was mainly it's because he's he's always so packed there's so many people not yeah. only they're buying but just hanging out because they're they're just fans of him and Tat White that it's easier if we go later on when people have are made to leave the trade show floor that we can actually get him to sit out and do an interview and the interview traditionally with us has always been you know we just let him go yeah. Right. We have we have we have a script that we set, you know, we gotta get this information out. And then it's almost like just a conversation yeah. of whatever he wants to talk about and it goes on, which is why like a sugar review was always like, you know, whatever minutes with Pete Johnson, you know, 37 minutes of Pete Johnson, 41 minutes of Pete Johnson, 26 minutes, whatever it was, we just let him go. And it's always interesting topics, like it's always something cool. And we had a really cool incident. In this video, the the, the interview. Oh, this got, is great! Yeah. Out, so that uh, I guess that would be a teaser that we don't do. But anyway, it's a, it's one of my favorite interviews that I've ever done. You know, with me and him and Bear sitting down and talking, it was probably the best one I've ever recorded. I, I can't wait for people to see it. It was it was the but, second longest that we did behind the soccer. It was longer. It was almost a half hour, I think. Yeah, it was. It, it was a long interview. But like one of the things we didn't mention, though, that um, we went there a little bit before before the interview, kind of just, you know, chit chat with him and kind of hang out for a minute, too. But he was running. He was leaving the booth and he was leaving the booth because he was going to individual people, all the different manufacturers yeah. and retailers to get them to donate to PCA. Yep. Like he was he was working his booth, but he was working the whole show for absolutely too. absolutely and and that really like i said this is again pete is becoming this leader he is a leader in the industry now you know he always was a respect but you've seen pete take it to another level right now i mean and and, and guess what a lot of these established brands are paying attention i mean i'll give you a good example you know Husto row is a great example you know he went and recruited Husto. it was the same thing because Husto was off the, we were trying to get Husto at the end of the day he was off to that meeting with pete so right. that day so so yeah, it was um, it's it's really his evolution in the last few years. Um, you know, I I I think he'll be a candidate for our person of the year for sure. I think there's a couple of front runners right now, but I think Pete's name's got to be in the equation right now. Um, Definitely. Yeah, I, I absolutely think he's got to be in there. I think there's two names. I mean, Abe, I think would be the other name I'm looking at right now too. Um, what he did with the Great Smoke earlier this year. So I think, but Pete Pete's. Pete's work is not unnoticed. And I think a lot of the other media guys noticed it too this year. Um, so. Yeah, it's it's always it, – another thing too, and I've always felt this, his love for this industry and cigars and the history of it is just unrivaled. And, yeah. and his passion, it's infectious. Like when you when you talk to Pete and you t he's talking about the cigars and just – not even his stuff. He could be talking about – historical cuban brands or yeah. whatever it's it's just fascinating it, it's it, it, it when i i get fired up about this stuff yeah. right yeah. I mean, it's just you can't help but to be like that you know yeah um i agree and i think this year like i've heard some people say well he's kind of re you know he's kind of building up monsters he's releasing the t110 he's got but you look at what he did um we didn't even talk about the t110s I, I just, like I said, I think if you're a Tatawahe fan, there's a lot of, not, these, are, these are some of Pete's strongest work. La Riqueza, you know, the most underrated brand he's ever done. I'm so glad he's going to try another go at it. Because oh, to me, me too. That to it me. fantastic. It, it's, we all, you know, that brand, in my opinion, should be like, you know, always just, it's one of the great broadly releases ever done. You know, we didn't even talk about, this wasn't at the trade show. But I know we all talked about yeah. this is Old Man in the Sea, the Fausto Old Man in the Sea. Yes, which I got you one. I got to mail it to you tomorrow. Yeah, I, I have some stuff I got to mail to you as well, you guys. So uh, um, especially so I have that's just been me 
exhausted not doing stuff at the end of the day. So free samples, yeah. free samples, yeah. free samples. Yeah. yeah, but I actually had that when I as soon as PCA was over, I went on a family vacation and I went to another one I call my home shop at Harbor yep. Cigars in Dessa, Florida, and they had a few boxes. And I had one there, and I was blown away. It was Seth was a Seth great was blown cigar. away too. And Seth ca- yeah. called me up, and he's like, "You got to smoke the Calabra." He's like, "It's a wet pack," which I didn't realize it was a wet pack. Yep, uh, sure is. He shows me, I'm like, "Holy cow, it's a wet pack!" Um, and Fa- I love Fa- Fausto's. When it came out, I made my my top top list of the year. It was one of the best cigars. Um, I love Fausto. Um, so I know, I think even the developing palates guys like that cigar from what they told me. Wow, that's impressive. I don't want to but say also the, other, the other thing we didn't talk about is his advent calendar. Yes. He's coming advent, out with one. Yeah, I'm going to have the article coming up on Coop this week on that. Um, but yes, uh, and I, he didn't show the advent calendar. Like he didn't show it. But I understand you really don't want to show that other than really the packaging because I think you want to have an element of surprise with that. Uh, otherwise, if you kind of, pop it open it's gonna ruin the surprise um so i'm i'm pretty ex- i mean i'm excited about that and the oliva one i mean i'm gonna get both of them yeah. i am too i'm gonna i'm oh, gonna because that yeah. to me is fun i i'm i'm a big christmas yeah. guy i freaking love christmas christmas time and i always I always buy my son i buy him a lego advent calendar every year he loves yeah. legos yeah. now nice. i have my own advent calendar i got yeah. two advent calendars oh not to mention Abe's coming out with one. Yes. So there's three advent calendars coming out. I, <laughs> yeah. I plan to have all three of them. I'm not going to be smoking reviews during that month a lot. Maybe I'll be reviewing old stuff because I'll be smoking three of these a day. Um, yeah, me too. And here's what I'll say about Pete. This is – Pete showed a lot of class with Oliva, and he talked about that because Oliva was coming out with it, and they didn't know he was com- – each of them didn't know they were coming out with it. And Pete was so supportive of Oliva doing that. Um, and he made a point of saying that a couple of times to me. Um, what, again, that's just really, it's really good to see that in the industry, in a divided industry, um, to see both of them just kind of support each other. I know it was, you know, I think it was great. I think it's great that that's coming out and I'm sure Abe didn't know either one of those guys. Pete's talked about the advent calendar for a decade though. He's been like, I remember he had on the BOTL, I remember the BOTL post. And then Bear, I think it was in your interview, he said something about it, and I knew yeah, right away. He said, away someone go do it. Yeah, when he first, because he... But he didn't say it was an advent calendar, and I knew right away what, what it was. I knew, but he probably already knew Oliva was doing it at that point, I guess. Yeah. No, the, the, the thing, uh, I'll t- my takeaway from my interview with Pete, so if you guys remember our post-show tradition, we go out and we have ramen uh, for lunch after the trade show concludes. And so... Aaron, Aaron Loomis, our good friend of Developing Palettes, asked me the question. You guys were there. Bear, what was your favorite interview and why was it Pete Johnson? <laughs> and I, I thought it was a great question. Um, and I didn't dispute it at all. But what I said about my interview with Pete was what Pete did for, uh, for us as a team is he gave us not one, but he gave us two great interviews because that led to the great Sokka interview. Um, there were really, I was proud of a lot of the interviews that we did and we've talked about a lot of them and I know we've got one company left to cover, but, I, yep. um, but, um, the probably, I mean, I'm again, and I'm immensely proud of all the work that we did. Um, but the three interviews that I really, um, just got the most out of, and I just thought they were incredible conversations. They weren't really necessarily the, the interview interview. They were more like, again, more conversations, uh, was Pete, Steve, and then the combination of John Huber and Luciano Mireles. And I thought those were those were just incredible conversations with all four of those folks. Um, and uh, really, really, really enjoyed um, our time with Pete. That was that was that was tremendous. So um, any other guys, any other takeaways from the Tatuaje booth? Let me cover that one for you. So um, I think we've got, uh, so we've got just one last booth that we need to cover here. Um, and uh, so the last booth that we actually, it was actually one of the last booths we actually did uh, too, uh, which was our, our interview um, with, um, with uh, Michael Capellini at T- Toscano Cigars. And uh, Michael couldn't have been more, uh, more gracious and what a wonderful host. Uh, he, uh, 
poured us all an espresso and Ben, you and I had some uh, Di Sarona in our, in our coffee, which was really, really great, especially on, on the throat after talking all day continuously. Um, but we, uh, uh, we talked about the Nobile, uh, which is their latest release. Now it's not new. They actually took it from, uh, it used to be a exclusive for uh, uh, what's it called um, in airports, the, uh, uh, duty, free. duty free, duty free. Yeah, it used to do a, be a duty free exclusive, and now it's a it's a limited release that they're they're allowing okay. that they're releasing to uh, to all retailers uh, until it's until it's gone. It's a limited release. So, but I really enjoyed uh, my our conversation with Michael. Uh, he gave us the Toscano uh, book, which was really cool. Yep, there it is. And uh, you know what a what a great treat that was. Listen, if you are a cigar geek, right? Um, this book, I don't think it's for sale. Um, it is one of the best tobacco handbooks. I know, Aaron, Aaron yours is coming. I have yours. Yep. I took yours home. But I know I, this was one we asked for everyone on the team to get. Uh, it's just a fantastic book, not just on Toscano cigars, but uh, not just on Italian tobacco, but tobacco in general. Um, I love this book. If you're if you are, you got to talk to your Toscano rep or whatever to try to get one of these. Um, it's fantastic. Yeah, I actually started reading that because he handed me one. And I started, I was just going to flip through it, kind of just check it out. But then I started reading it. I got kind of engrossed in it. Yeah, <laughs> I it, forgot it, we were there to do an interview. Yeah, I I, like, and I was like, I got to quit reading. Yeah, so I know I got a, I got one of the, someone to give me one more of them. And then Ben actually said, hey, can we get a couple, the Michael, can we get a couple more of these for everyone? So we were able to get one for everybody on the team. Yeah. Um, I had had our, this book. Before our free Craig. samples aren't just cigars. No, they're right. books. They're educated. But guys, I just can't tell you. I've picked up this book um, yeah. so many times. There's, there's, there's stuff in there going into indigenous tobaccos. It, it, it is, they should sell this book. I, I, it says not for sale on the back, but they, they should sell it uh, at stores. I mean, this is something that they should. every retailer should have these books in there. Um, because it, it is a fantastic book. <laughs> History... Just a lot of I learned so much from that book, and I love what Toscano has been doing the last few years. <coughs> they um, they've kind of been now they're, they're going to more box models, so their stuff's coming in, in more traditional boxes lately. Uh, the Noble was fantastic. Uh, might be one of the best Toscanos I've had. Yeah, it's a good scar. Yeah, I agree um, with that. It was it was my favorite Toscano I've had today. Yeah. Um, I have the review coming up on the the the, the Sento, uh, which is which is gonna do. Their cigars don't score as high because they tend to fall down with complexity just because of the nature of those cigars. But they're good cigars. Um, and they're great cigars. Like you said, if you're on a trip, take some Toscano cigars with you. Um, <coughs> you can cut them in half and have two cigars, and they, you don't have to worry about humidification. Yeah, I learned – actually, I learned a lot during that time in the booth. Like, I didn't – I did not know how much of a cultural thing they are in, in – Italian life, basically. Like, there's, I mean, it's like a whole world yep. that revolves around those cigars. And it, I was a blown away. Yep. And like, Italians it, it, don't call them cigars. They call them Toscanos. Yeah, that's, that's oh. it's amazing. And I did, I did not realize, like, there's a whole lot of accessories, like, like high-end accessories that they, they have for these cigars in Italy. Yeah. Like it's, it's not just like a I'm going to throw this in my pocket and I'll cut it in half and have a little quick smoke here and there, like rustic smoke. It's like a whole cultural thing over there. It, it was fascinating. I yeah. learned a lot at that, during, at that booth. Yeah. Um, and Michael is great. We had to go to Michael. I think we had to go to him like three times, right? He was very, that booth was very busy. Well, we got him finally towards the end of the day. Um, I think it was the end of day three. Um, or day four, I forget. We, but we it was got to day four. It was like the last. It was the last interview yeah. we had, I think. Okay. Uh, I thought it was Fratello was the last, but that's true. No, that's yeah. true. It it was, but it was a late. We got to him late, right? But it was because we just couldn't get it. he. And and look, Michael is like the he's like the as a brand ambassador. Um, he's maybe one of the best in the business. He is. He yeah. Is. He, he represents is. that brand very well. He really does. Uh, he's a great. We've had him on a few times. Uh, I want to get him back on a show. Um, just because uh, I just the guy loves talking tobacco. Um, and this is a different brand than anything else, you know, that we see in the U.S. market. So 
it really requires someone with a unique skill and personality to do that. Um, and, and look, give these, these cigars, I think are really worse. Uh, you know, he's got the one, they got the one with the grappa in it. I love that cigar. Grappa is not for everybody. Right. But it, it, that's got some grappa flavoring in it. Fantastic cigar. Um, I'm not a fan of grappa, but I, I do want to try. It. I, I've yeah, been a big fan. I'm not of a big grappa since... fan either, but I like it. Yeah. Cause it's not overpowering. Right. I, I've been a big fan of this kind of cigar since Miami cigar where they, where they have the, the uh, partnership with them. That's when I was first introduced to them. I fell in love with them at that at that first trade show. They were there yeah. with them. Yeah, and I've been smoking them ever since. I love the things. Yeah, I do too. Um, and like I said, I love what they've been doing, getting a little more premium with the packaging. I really like that. Um, not that I never dislike the soft packs, but I think they have something that could be marketed as premium. Um, that's not going to break the bank either, you know. So, um, you know, I. Uh, the Noble is pretty limited from what I understand, too. So I hope it's not a one and done. Uh, I hope we see more of it. pricey, too. It's, I guess it's up there. It's up there, but I tell you what, there's a reason why it's up there. Because uh, I think it's the best cigar they've done, uh, for sure. At least from smoke. I smoked two of them because I broke one in half. Uh, and then I smoked the other half later on. So, uh, so I yeah. got to smoke it twice. And I'm like, yeah, this is really good. I think I smoked one back at the compound. Yeah, that's what I did. I cut it in half. I spoke one during the interview, which is a yep. rare occurrence. Yeah. And I have one. I had it again late that night. Yep. Spoke the other half. That's fantastic. That's what I like about them, man. They're, yep. they're rustic cigars, rustic looking, but they're tasty. You know, you can cut them in half for a nice little quick smoke. Uh, they're just fantastic. Yeah, they really are. They really are. All right, guys. I think we're at the end of our. I mean, the only one I have maybe is Warp, but I think we talked about Warp. Oh, uh, okay. I, there are two things that we bring up. So I want to talk quickly about Warped. Okay. But also, if we have a chance, I think it's worth mentioning who I thought had a great show. They're not cigars, but the Zycar booth. So that line. Of, we missed that. Uh, yeah, we, we should have mentioned quality imports. And so I thought quality and, imports. I and thought, Coles of London. Coles of London, too. Yeah. yeah. I think quality imports. So before I go back to Warped, yeah. um, quality imports. The stuff there. I mean, look, it, they... they they have their core stuff, right? But I think what they're doing from the, the color scheming to just some of the nuances that they're putting out from a product standpoint, I think people are going to be very pleased with just some of the the, the new stuff they're putting out. I thought yeah. they had a really good booth. I thought it was a, a well put together. And the guy that, that I don't know his the, name. Danilo? He was yes. uh, he was really knowledgeable, and I thought he did a, a really good job of, of – Kind of giving us the tour of of the the booth. So. I I agree. I think uh, with Jimmy Muto coming over, he used to be with Calibri. Um, he's done an amazing job. Um, they gave us a lot of time at a busy booth as well. I mean, yeah. that was probably about forty five minutes we were in there. Yeah, uh, Danilo took us there. around, and yeah, uh, they, there was a lot of humidor focus they had. Some of those humidors were really nice. Um. That cat, you know, that one, that's that upright one. Oh, geez, I'm sorry, I'm not remembering the name of it. The Baltazar. The Baltazar. Thank you, Bear. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they would just, I would buy that. I mean, it's just. Uh, I think we all are going to buy it. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Um, I could put that in the parlor at home, so uh, that would actually go very well. And uh, I'm serious, but yeah, even some of the desktop humidors were really nice. But yeah, I mean, it was something for everybody. The Palio stuff. Uh, the, uh, the the Zycar stuff, um, you know, you can see. Uh, I, I think they've done a good job with Zycar. I think they have. It took, you know, it took a little while to assimilate everything in there, but I think they've done it. Uh, I, you know, so yeah, they did a great job. Yeah, some great. It was a fun booth, very well laid out. It was. We, yeah. So going yeah. back to war. Okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Ben. I was gonna go more about that. You know, like we went there. Coles of London, you know, they, they, they're in tribute to S.C. DuPont now, um, which I'm a big fan of S.C. DuPont. Most of my lighters are all S.C. DuPont. I, they're just reliable. I've got one that's 21 years old, and it's just now I'm needing a little bit of TLC, and I'm going to um, arrange to send it back. But I, I love covering the accessory booths, too, because I'm just a nerd for that kind of stuff. Yeah. I love my accessories. I just love them. So and it, they don't get a lot of coverage. I'm no. kind of glad we was able to stop by there and, and, and interview you know, all the different people, the booths, and, and see what they got out there too. 
So that was, that was, a, that was another highlight. Of yeah, we had one big miss with accessories, and we should have yes. hit it. Is it Ellie Blue? Yes. Because they had the Opus 25th there. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, that wasn't something that was publicized before the show. Uh, and it was a little too late, unfortunately, but I would have liked to have gotten the Ellie Blue for sure. Uh, All right. So warped. real quick, warped. <clears throat> All right. So here's my tip. I have this was you probably have probably heard before that when I first started smoking, I was doing all the variety packs, blah blah blah. Went to Burns in Chattanooga, got turned on to warp, and I was hooked. I absolutely love some of the warp stuff that that Kyle has put out or or you know, I guess continues to put out as far as the 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 old the older stuff. Now Kyle's booth, to let everybody know, he had a booth, but basically it was a couch in which he entertained probably retailers that would come by and look to place orders or look to order uh, product from him. He had no displays. He had no nothing. It was simply a couch that you thought that, like, look, it was a place for people to, to rest because they were on their feet all day. He had a sign. He had a neon oh. sign. Oh, I missed that. I missed the neon sign. So what I was going to say is – so. If you guys know the brand Dunhill, Dunhill's got a, a variety of product and, and they are a lifestyle, if you will, of, uh, of what they try to be, right? They're a lifestyle of what they try to portray and, and they come across in their, in their products. Some could argue that when we talked about crown heads, that's a little bit of like what, what John is doing for them and doing a very good job. Warped is like a wannabe crown heads is what I equate them to. They, they, I don't know what direction he's trying to go with the company. Uh, I don't understand what he's trying to put out. He hasn't put out, I think a core. I think the last one was maybe that black honey that he put out. Not really a core Um, though. Yeah. But I, I just think I don't understand. Like he is, he's got an opportunity and I, I'm not going to name the, uh, the company, but the guy that said that he sat for about four or five hours and really kind of gave some tutelage to Kyle and gave him some direction. And he clearly did not take it under advisement and just said, you know what, I'm going to do this on my own and I'm going to go do it my own way. And the way that he's going about this right now is so disappointing because I do think that they've got some quality cigars, but very similar to what Caldwell did. Basically to me, it was, I, embarrassing. I, I, I don't understand why a brand like that who's trying to build a, a, a cigar line and come across as this premium cigar brand and a brand and a lifestyle would, would show up at a booth or show up at the trade show and put that as as what he wants to be displayed um, at the show. So very disappointed and I just don't really understand where that company's going. And he left the day early so we couldn't get to him. Right. So, yeah. Well, we could have talked to Aaron Loomis, I guess, but uh, <laughs> I agree. I think there's just something that's gotten lost the last, I mean, from 2014 to 17, he was red hot. I mean, he was just, and, and by the way, he's had some very nice booze at the trade show. He's had some very nice booze. It's not like he hasn't had, a, I mean, the first year he was there was probably his nicest booze. He probably spent a fortune on it, though. <laughs> but, uh, but he's always had a nice booth. This one was, unfortunately, it was a minimalist booth. But I know the only thing I'll defend Kyle on, he was one of the last people to commit to the trade show, from what I understand. I think him and 1502 were the, were the latest ones to commit. But why yeah. commit, to, commit to have a couch? I, I get it. I, I get it. It's like I said, I don't think it's hard to bring to get one cabinet and have your product in there. You know? That's essentially oh, what his yeah. booth was two years ago, was just some was some ca- couple cabinets – and he had those QR codes that he released on his stuff because he was saying that a bunch of his stuff was getting counterfeited. Yeah, so but a way to uh, ensure it. But the first year he was at the trade show, he had like a, a booth that was kind of that Rocky Patel style with the with the long, like, cabinets, the glass cat, you know, kind of ones where you can go around the glass cabinet and shoot it from all all sides. Um, so he's had some, you know, he's done. He always would create some really good stuff for the trade show. Um, he had the one release that you know. The one he's doing out of the DR right now with Hostos Casada, the chinchilla, you didn't get to see it. 
Yeah, it's it's what I I've, I've been I was a, I was a big fan of his stuff for the longest time, but it seems like he Kyle's almost lost his way. Yep. I don't yep. know what's going on nowadays. I, yeah. I haven't liked the, his last few releases. I, I thought they were not as good. And I, I guarantee there's probably not a person on the planet that's put more Lyria Rojo than I have. And the, but the last batches weren't very good. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I really don't. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, all right, guys. Um, Here's what I need to do. And, and I know we kept you guys late. Do you, can you guys hang for like, well, Bear and I just do the uh, great things that happen in this segment. We'll go through it quick. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and then, I, then I just want to do a wrap up. Okay, I appreciate it. I know we went late. And to our audience. So, um, you know, I want to mention, of course, this is our Great Things Are Happening Here segment, uh, sponsored by Tobacco Area USA, makers of iconic brands such as Monte Cristo, Romeo Julia, H. Upman, and Aging Room Cigars. Tobacco Area USA, great things are happening here. Uh, we didn't have a contest tonight. Uh, we have some changes at the Altidus team we're working with right now. So there's a new person we're doing, but we'll have the contest uh, back at the next show. Um, so, Bear, I'm going to go first on this one, if, if you don't mind. Go for it. Because this is a story you would not expect me to ever, ever have. Aaron, I know you're a golfer, but I'll admit I don't like watching golf on TV. Okay? So it's like it has been a big joke about me hating golf, right? But because I, I don't – I can't watch the Masters. I just can't get into it, right? But there was a golf story that happened this past weekend that to me was great, a great feel-good story. Uh, it was at the U.S. Uh, the U.S. Uh, Senior Women's Open, um, and it was a woman by the name of Joanne Carner, who is one of the legendary uh, LPGA golfers uh, in history, uh, nicknamed Big Mama. Right? She is 82 years old, and she played two rounds of the U.S. Uh, Senior Women's Open, and she shot an 82 and a 79. Um, she didn't make the cut, right? But she's the first, uh, she's like, it was, sorry, because she's the fifth golfer to ever shoot their age uh, better. Um, so she's 82, and she shot 82 and 79. So it's like she shot better than her age. Um, and she's the oldest golfer to ever play in any USGA championship. I thought this was a, a great story. I love when, when the senior, you see someone kind of go out and do that. She didn't have to win the tournament to me. Um, I, I saw it got some some press which was really good um and i was it was such a feel-good story for me because i love when when some of our senior citizens can get another shot at any type of 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 tournament or competition so i know i could not even shoot like i don't think i could shoot 164 okay (laughs) as a golfer so 82 years god bless her great job uh hall of famer uh, inspiration to anyone out there. I, it felt it made me feel really good, and that was my good news story of the week. Great pick, loved it. Yeah. So, you know this this uh, this my story uh, my story coop kind of flirts a little bit with the uh, with the with politics, but uh, I think the the story itself transcends politics, which is really which is really what's beautiful yeah. about it. So um, I chose um, a story that, um, like I said, it, 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 kind of, it kind of flirts with that line a little bit. I'm having a little hard time bringing it up. I apologize. Um, but, um, you know, as everyone kind of knows, there's, there's, there's it, I mean, it's nothing new. There's been huge uh, conflict in the Gaza Strip between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And so in true nature of good things are happening here. This story transcends politics because we have an an Israeli woman uh, who donated her kidney to a three-year-old Palestinian boy in the Gaza Strip. So, um, and she did it uh, while celebrating her 50th birthday. Wow. So in memory of her late grandfather, uh, she decided to donate the kidney and, and this, and it was a life-saving operation for a young boy. And it's, uh, kind of goes along with the theme and when there's, when there's, when there's tragedy, that's when you see the best of human nature. And this is truly an example of it. So, um, really have to hand it off to her and, uh, for giving life to a child. 
uh, and giving the child a second chance at life uh, as he's just starting out his life and she's uh, she donated her kidney uh, so that he could get a second lease on life. So uh, so happy birthday to uh, Edith Segal. She's an Israeli kindergarten teacher and a mother of three. And uh, and she uh, she gave a new lease on life to a three year old Palestinian boy. Great job there. All right, guys. So we are finally at the end of we're going to put peace, except for, you know, as far as the podcast go, this is going to put a bow on our coverage. We, get, we still have a lot of videos and articles coming out uh, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, you can see a lot more of those ramping up. Um, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts, but again, I want to thank you guys uh, all. Um, this was, without a doubt, I've said this is the best coverage we've had. Uh, this team is just, I, I can't say, Aaron, we kind of recruited you into the Army, I kind of think, and you've done a, you, a great job, Ben. What can I say? You, 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 having you with your credentials, Bear, I mean, all you guys worked your, Bear, I mean, your interviews, you don't killed your voice. Um, so, um, all for the greater good. True professionals. Uh, I couldn't be honored to work with, with you guys. Not forgetting Aaron Loomis and Dave Burke as well. Um, but, you know, thank you guys. Uh, I don't know if you have any final thoughts as we put a bow on this thing right now before we sign off. I just want to say, you know, we did a pretty really good job this year. I thought it went spectacularly well, but just wait till next year. Yeah, we, we are, up again. we're going to – like there's things we know we can improve on. And uh, we will. Uh, this was new. This was new territory uh, for this team. Um, you know, so um, I, I I realized having a strong team is is really really important. Um, you know, so again, you guys have relationships. You guys know the industry, and and like I said the work effort. I just I I, I think we're, it paid dividends um, for us. And uh, I'm excited that we're going to be sharing a lot more with folks over the next uh, couple weeks. And I'll just say, finally, video is hard. I, I learned that uh, for sure in the past, and I've learned it even more so uh, now. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard, but I think it's, it's rewarding. And, uh, you know, I can't wait for 2022. We'll do yeah. it again. We'll, and, we'll I would it. Just say, and I would just say to you guys, you know, thank you for letting me be part of your team. Um, any way that I can – you know, contribute, help, be part of the great things that you guys are doing is a true honor. And, uh, you know, for me, I'm just some schmucks guy, schmuck that just likes to smoke cigars and has a passion for the industry. And to let me into your kind of little world, so to speak, is a true honor and a pleasure. So thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, thank you as well. You, you've earned it. The, the pleasure's ours, man. Yeah. This is a great team and I can't wait for next year. We're going to, yeah, if you thought this year was good, um, next year is going to be great. I've already set a new goal for the number of booths I want to hit. Yeah. Um, and I know the interviews are going to be even better. And much to Ben's delight, I will remember to ask all the right questions. Um, look, this is very hard to, to, to bear what you did in interviews on the spot there. I think I told you, I don't think I'm, that's not my setting. I've done, I think I could do well on a podcast in this setting um when i'm in the sit but that doing that stuff a lot of it you have to do in a very agile mode you have to react quickly you have a short amount of time um what i really liked what i really liked it wasn't wrapper binder filler and it wasn't fluff how the trade show is going uh there was there was stories and themes and and just great content um and i think that's what i was really pleased with i i Again, I think a lot of the other media brands did great work, so I'm not just knocking it by any means, but it's not what I was looking to do, and I think we, we hit the goals there pretty well. So, and like I said, we all improve next year. We can all improve next year. So that's, that's always uh, what's great about having a great team is we all find ways to do things better. So I think that's always a good, good way to do things. Well, I think we had occasionally the occasional person who slipped in that it was the best trade show ever, um, but I am proud to say that I never asked the question, How's the trade show going? You didn't. I, I hate I that question. Did, I, did that for, I did that for you, Coop. I know. I said, please don't ask that question because honestly, it, all it does is eat up a minute, right? Of, of something that everyone's going to answer the same question. I, and I can, I can get into that topic on another show. Um, I do think people did have a great trade show, though, company wise. So um, I'll just leave it at that. 
you know, that that would be a topic for another day. Uh, or you can read the Coop article, which Mickey Pegg actually read, by the way. So, uh, of all Saints cigars. So, um, so guys, anything else before we put a bow on it? Can't wait till next just year. Appreci- yeah, I can't. I appreciate everybody uh, watching this and watching our uh, interviews and you know, the hard work that we put into this. Yeah, it really was. Um, and Ben, I, again, you worked through your vacation. I, I can't thank you enough. I mean, I, you kind of came on the last minute. You knew you had vacation schedule. Um, and that is not forgotten. Uh, it's very much appreciated because you didn't have to do that. So um, you, you made a lot of time on your vacation. So thank you on that as well. Um, well, yeah, yeah. It won't happen again next year with the vacation, but uh, well, you kind of we, you, know. we, you kind of came on. You were like Ben was really uh, like a month in advance. We kind of booked him for the show, so uh, that happened very fast. So I couldn't be happier. Uh, smoking Syndicate, guys. Uh, I think we got a lot of exciting stuff coming. The first video was out already. Um, I'm really, really Ben did a masterful job. Aaron, I know we're going to talk about the project. You and I will we'll talk more on that, that we'll be doing as well. Uh, and Bear, you know, great job. Uh, let me just mention a couple of programming notes before we kind of uh, close this out. Um, jukebox, we're going to have a primetime jukebox on Monday. We're going to be going through Anthony Bourdain's playlist. That is a Dave Burke uh, project, right? Uh, but he's recruited a couple of people for that show who know a lot more about Anthony Bourdain than I do, right? I don't know much about him. Uh, Skip Martin is going to be on that show along with uh, John McTavish. So, uh, and it was Skip who brought the idea for us for doing that show. And then we just said, well, you're doing the show. So, uh, I can't wait for that. I'm a huge Anthony Bourdain fan. I'm learning about it. So, yeah, I'm learning. um, But I always am open to ideas to learn for that show. But I know the music. So, I'm going to talk more about that. And I'll leave those guys to be the Bourdain experts. Uh, On Thursday, we have Abe Flores from PDR Cigars on primetime episode 197. Um, and then, Bear, we have to talk. We have another show we'll, we'll be doing this month, I'm sure. And uh, we have to finalize the date on that. But I, could, I guess you hmm. want to say what the topic – should we say what the topic is or we want to wait? That's, that's your call. You want to okay. wait or uh, – No, I'll, I'll say it. We're going to do another Mount Rushmore. So yeah. we, do, we do one or two of those a year where we pick a brand and we do Mount Rushmore. So we'll announce what that brand is when we announce the show. I'll just say that. Yeah. I think we got to finalize, but I want to make sure we, we're on sync with that. Big fan of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, Bear, you have on um, someone we talked to at the trade show on Sunday. Yes. So, um, um, you know, I had on for 178th take uh, this past Sunday, I had Mickey Pegg of All Saints Cigars. And uh, this upcoming Sunday for take 179, I've got Mr. Ram Rodriguez of El Artista Cigars. So. Yeah couple of first timers right you've had mm-hmm. three first timers uh will coming up so we had uh mickey peg ram rodriguez and then the following week will be eddie guerra of davidoff good that's good and then ben will have some more smoking syndicate stuff coming soon so uh we'll stay tuned for that as well yeah we're uh, finalizing a, a, a good um schedule for that one but right now we're doing every friday um that will might change in the future, but we'll probably go at least two a day or two a week. Minimum. Oh, that's great. That's great. And I know we have some of the special ones we're going to be talking about as well. Like, right. uh, you know, the multiple smokes, the syndicate smokes and smokes. I think smokes of the month we're talking about doing uh, chip wars, yes. stuff like that. So, yeah, we got we got that's going to be fun. And uh, so stay tuned on that. All right. I'm going to close it out. So thank you to you guys. Thanks to our audience as well. Thanks to everyone at the PCA. Uh, we talked to, uh, if you didn't, if we didn't talk to you, uh, I'm trying to reach out to some folks, but don't be shy. Give me a buzz. We'll, we'll make sure we get your stuff covered as well. Uh, for, the, for the companies that didn't go to trade show, let me just mention one thing before we close out. Uh, there will be coverage like I did last year uh, when there was no trade show. I called it summer of 20. This is going to be summer of 21. So we'll recap like Altidus, Drew Estate, Davidoff, summer releases, and a few of the other companies. So uh, I guess there was, a lot of, there was a lot of action this summer, so. Stay tuned for that as well. But that's going to wrap up Primetime Special Edition 104 into the annals of history for Tuesday, April 3rd, now Wednesday, April 4th in the Eastern and Central Time Zones. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time.